Partisan. Partisan. Partisan means one-sided, biased, or prejudiced. For example, the manager was far from partisan as she listened to both parties. The article detailed a partisan view of the situation. The partisan customers refused to purchase anything other than one specific product. So next time something or someone is one-sided or biased, why not use the word partisan instead? Hit the like. Callow. Callow. Callow means immature, inexperienced, or naive. For example, even though James joined the company as a callow teenager, he matured into a responsible manager. The callow undergraduates skipped classes, unaware of the consequences on their reduced understanding of the concepts and their lower grades. The book included a character called Lionel, who was a callow, carefree tween. So next time someone is immature, inexperienced, or naive, why not use the word callow instead? Sanctimonious. Sanctimonious. Sanctimonious means holier than thou, self-righteous, or hypocritically holy. For example, the sanctimonious speech emphasized the need for transparency. We received a letter with a tone of sanctimonious disapproval. The sanctimonious assistant made it challenging to discuss some issues. So next time someone is holier than thou or self-righteous, why not use the word sanctimonious instead? Antagonism. Antagonism. Antagonism means hostility or opposition. For example, the new policy created much antagonism among senior citizens. There is much antagonism between fans of different football teams. Management hoped to reduce the antagonism between the two departments. So next time you refer to the hostility or opposition of something, why not use the word antagonism instead? Patronize. Patronize. To patronize means to treat in a kind, helpful way, but with a feeling of superiority. Or treat condescendingly. For example, he felt as if they were patronizing him. So he respectfully walked away. The group helped the gentleman, but did not patronize him. My grandmother was resolute that even though she depended on a walking stick to move around, she would not let anyone patronize her. So next time someone treats someone else condescendingly, why not use the word patronize instead? Maya. Maya. Maya means swamp, muddy ground, or marsh, wetland, peatland. For example, we looked at a documentary on the Mayas of Europe. Dragonflies and common frogs are common animals found in Mayas. Shrek lived in a mire. So next time you refer to a swamp or marsh, why not use the word mire instead? Fickle. Fickle. Fickle means changeable, usually in one's loyalties. Or capricious, volatile. 
For example, they found that the weather was fickle. They found it difficult to fly the kite because of the fickle winds. The fickle teenagers often switch their loyalties among various brands of clothes. So, next time someone or something is changeable or capricious, why not use the word fickle instead? Antiquated. Antiquated. Antiquated means old fashioned or outdated. For example, the texture of the antiquated furniture and the scent of the old books on the shelf brought back memories. Her antiquated idea would have resolved this matter if we were living a decade ago, but it won't work today. The business replaced the antiquated equipment with the newest technology on the market. So, next time something is old fashioned or outdated, why not use the word antiquated instead? Hit the like. Perjury. Perjury. Perjury means willfully telling lies under oath or willful falsehood, mendacity. For example, Jacob was found guilty of theft and perjury. Kelsey was determined not to commit perjury no matter how hard they tried to convince her to do so. They wondered what the penalty of perjury would be. So, next time someone willfully lie under oath, why not use the word perjury instead? Trite. Trite. Trite means overused and lacking originality or dull, hackneyed. For example, the manager's remarks were trite and left no effect on her employees. Even though the saying is trite, it proved to be true. The script was trite and unstimulating. So next time something is overused and lacking originality, why not use the word trite instead? Pejorative. Pejorative. Pejorative means derogatory, disapproving, or disparaging. For example, she made pejorative comments about him and no one listened to her. The manager called him into the office after the pejorative remark he made in the building. That is a pejorative term and we must avoid using it. So next time something is derogatory, disapproving or disparaging, why not use the word pejorative instead? Effigy. Effigy. An effigy is a statue of a person or model, sculpture, figurine. For example, we saw the effigy of the queen at the museum. They built an effigy of the leader. The wooden effigy weighs over 100 pounds. So next time you refer to a statue of a person, why not use the word effigy instead? Semantic. Semantic. Semantic means relating to meaning in language or lingual. For example, she knew that the semantic debate would last for hours. There was no semantic component in the discussion. They proposed a semantic theory. 
So next time something relates to meaning in language, why not use the word semantic instead? Panoply. Panoply. Panoply means a splendid collection or a range. For example, there was a panoply of camera lenses at the store. We were surprised to see the panoply of dinosaur fossils at the museum. The river was surrounded by a panoply of trees. So next time you refer to a splendid collection of something, why not use the word panoply instead? Sequester. Sequester. To sequester means to hide or shut oneself away, or to isolate. For example, the author sequestered himself from his family and friends to write the rest of his book. The animals searched for a place to sequester themselves during the snowstorm. Tom Hanks was sequestered on an island in the movie Castaway. So next time someone is isolated or shuts themselves away, why not use the word sequester instead? Discrepancy. Discrepancy. Discrepancy means inconsistency, disparity, or variance difference. For example, the analyst tried to find the reason for the discrepancy between the two numbers. There was a discrepancy between his account of the event and her account. The protest outside the building focused on reducing wage discrepancy. So next time there is an inconsistency or variance between two things, why not use the word discrepancy instead? Precept. Precept. A precept is a guiding rule or principle or doctrine. For example, the parents were an example of the moral precepts they taught. The precepts of the religion was known at every home. The precept emphasized honesty, integrity, and fairness. So next time you refer to a guiding rule or principle, why not use the word precept instead? Soporific. Soporific. Soporific means inducing sleep or drowsiness, or tranquilizing. For example, we took a soporific drug and fell asleep within a minute. The cool wind below the shade of the tree gave a soporific effect and I slept away. He lectured in a monotone and I often found it soporific. So next time you refer to something that is inducing sleep or drowsiness, why not use the word soporific instead? Interminable. Interminable. Interminable means seemingly endless or unceasing, everlasting. For example, there was an interminable increase in prices when the government printed money daily. We closed the window to reduce the interminable honking and noise from the street. We hoped that the country's harmony would be interminable. So next time something is seemingly unending or unceasing, why not use the word interminable instead? Solace. Solace. Solace means comfort during a time of grief or distress, or consolation. For example, mom found a kind of solace in chocolate brownies. 
Music provided solace to the seniors at the old age home. After his mother passed away, he found solace in volunteering as a sports coach. So next time someone receives comfort during a time of grief or distress, why not use the word solace instead? Precocious. Precocious. Precocious means developing early or smart or intelligent for one's age. For example, the precocious child was called by the CEO to discuss some solutions to the problems. He wrote his first book at the precocious age of 13. The precocious girl simplified the complicated concept to the class. So next time someone is smart or intelligent for one's age, why not use the word precocious instead? Anthology. Anthology. Anthology is a compilation of poems and stories in the form of a book or published work. Or compendium. For example, the library was known to have the rare anthology of 17th century French poetry. The anthology included 20 stories and 20 poems. You must get your hands on this anthology because it contains a collection of his best work. So next time you refer to a compilation of poems and stories in the form of a book or published work, why not use the word anthology instead? Pragmatic. Pragmatic. Pragmatic means practical, rational, or matter of fact. For example, she took a pragmatic approach to her solving the problem. His response was indeed a pragmatic one. The manager provided three pragmatic reasons for the changes ahead. So next time something is practical or rational, why not use the word pragmatic instead? Commandeer. Commandeer. To commandeer means to seize or to take possession of something. For example, the government commandeered the stolen properties. The group used coercion to commandeer the airline. The officers successfully commandeered the building and rescued the inhabitants. So next time someone seizes or takes possession of something, why not use the word commandeer instead? Epithet. Epithet. Epithet means a phrase used as a label to express the quality or characteristic of something or a name or a term of abuse or smear. For example, after her win, she earned the epithet, the queen of gymnastics. We pondered about an epithet for him. The crowd shouted hurtful epithets. So next time you refer to a phrase used as a label to express the quality or characteristic of something, why not use the word epithet instead? Concatenate. Concatenate. To concatenate means to join or link together. For example, the data analyst concatenated the words in one cell. 
The expected outcome required us to concatenate the files. The teacher demonstrated how to concatenate the strings to create a sentence. So next time you want to join or link things together, why not use the word concatenate instead? Hit the like. Evacuate. Evacuate. To evacuate means to empty, abandon, or vacate. For example, the fire alarm rang and we evacuated the building immediately. Cars and buses were used to evacuate people from the building. The residents were ordered to evacuate the area because of the pending tornado. So next time when something is emptied, why not use the word evacuate instead? Diligent. Diligent. Diligent means careful and conscientious when working or hardworking, industrious. For example, the diligent student aced the test. The author thanked all diligent readers and their contribution to the discussion of her book. They wrote a paper after they completed their diligent research. So next time you know someone who is hardworking, industrious, careful, and conscientious when working, why not use the word diligent instead? Ogle. Ogle. To ogle means to stare at or to gaze at in an obvious manner. For example, I felt my aunt's eyes on me as she ogled at me as I walked across the room. We took a different route because they usually ogled us whenever we walked past by. He felt uncomfortable as he noticed the panel members ogled at him. So next time someone stares or gazes at someone else in an obvious manner, why not use the word ogle instead? Euphony. Euphony. Euphony means pleasant sounds or melodiousness. For example, we woke up to memorable euphonies. The musicians and songwriter came together to create a euphony we could not resist. My jolly uncle danced to the euphony playing on the speakers. So next time you hear pleasant sounds, why not use the word euphony instead? Sanguinary. Sanguinary. Sanguinary means bloody or characterized with bloodshed. For example, the sanguinary fight between the swordsmen left both of them with serious injuries. The movie included too many sanguinary scenes, so I turned it off. The butcher performs the sanguinary task of slaughtering the pigs on a daily basis. So next time something is bloody, why not use the word sanguinary instead? Hit the like. Disapprobation. Disapprobation. Disapprobation means disapproval or dislike, usually based on moral grounds or displeasure, objection. For example, she expressed her disapprobation of the new process. He fared his father's disapprobation of his desire to pursue that field of study. 
The article included reasons for the group's disapprobation about the matter. So next time someone disapproves or dislikes something based on moral grounds, why not use the word disapprobation instead? Carping. Carping. Carping means constantly complaining, grumbling, or difficult to please or whining. For example, the reporter questioned the carping critics about their opinions. He was a carping old man whose children lived in a different country and never visited him. We wondered if the carping individuals were ever grateful for a single thing they possessed. So next time someone is constantly complaining, grumbling, or difficult to please, why not use the word carping instead? Denounce. Denounce. To denounce means to speak out against, or condemn or criticize. For example, the author denounced slavery in her article. The minister denounced violence in his speech at the conference today. The man was denounced as an imposter. So next time someone speaks out against someone else, why not use the word denounce instead? Repost. Repost. Repost means a meal or a feast. For example, the king's repast consisted of veal, wine, and grains. She rushed to finish her repast before attending her meeting. The grand repast took place in the luxurious banquet hall. So next time you refer to a meal or feast, why not use the word repast instead? Discordant. Discordant. Discordant means disagreeing, incongruous, or clashing or divergent. For example, the recommendation is discordant with the newly defined vision of the company. The conclusions of the two experiments were discordant. The workers were confused because the messages from the head office were discordant. So next time something is clashing or incongruous, why not use the word discordant instead? Opine. Opine. To opine means to hold and state as one's opinion, or suggest, declare, say. For example, he opined that the storm may come tomorrow morning. Frank opined that the movie was creative, imaginative, and full of adventure. I opined that this will make the cookies softer. So next time you hold or state your opinion, why not use the word opine instead? Dyke. Dyke. A dyke is a wall built to prevent flooding from the ocean or embankment. For example, the government made plans to build a dyke. The dyke protected the region from flooding. They calculated the cost of constructing a dike in the village. So next time you refer to a wall built to prevent flooding from the ocean, why not use the word dike instead? Prosaic. Prosaic. Prosaic means unimaginative or dull or boring. For example, 
There are some prosaic reasons for taking this decision. He was ready to move on after many years on the job, because he observed his prosaic performance was not meeting the company's standards anymore. The prosaic plot caused the movie to flop at the box office. So next time something is unimaginative, dull, or boring, why not use the word prosaic instead? Hit the light. Sobriquet. Sobriquet. A sobriquet is a nickname. For example, at home we called her by her sobriquet D. His performance earned him the sobriquet Flying Tiger. We wondered from where her sobriquet originated. So next time you refer to a nickname, why not use the word sobriquet instead? Appease. Appease. To appease means to relieve, pacify, or placate. For example, the father tried to appease his crying toddler. The government appeased the public with financial support during the pandemic. The speech was an attempt to appease his critics. So next time someone wants to relieve or pacify something or someone else, why not use the word appease instead? Incoherent. Incoherent. Incoherent means unclear, muddled, or unintelligible. For example, as the symptoms worsen, my grandfather's speech became incoherent. The script was incoherent to a diversified audience. She muttered some incoherent words and walked out the room. So next time something is unclear or muddled, why not use the word incoherent instead? Hit the light. Panacea. Panacea. Panacea means a remedy of all diseases. Elixir. Or nostrum. Cure all. For example, my grandmother said that ginger tea was a panacea I should drink regularly. The residents desired a panacea for all societal problems. The Health Channel advertises a new panacea that has now become a craze among fitness enthusiasts. So next time you talk about a cure-all or remedy of all diseases, why not use the word panacea instead? Epitomize. Epitomize. To epitomize means to be a perfect example of something, or to exemplify or represent. For example, the books seem to epitomize the 1930s. Her news columns epitomizes objective and unbiased journalism. The movie epitomized the feelings of the families of fallen soldiers during the Second World War. So next time something is a perfect example of something else, why not use the word epitomize instead? Polemic. Polemic. A polemic is a verbal attack on something, or rant, harangue, diatribe. For example, they rolled their eyes as they listened to the man's polemic about the matter. The disobedient students were subjected to a five-minute polemic from the principal. 
The parents were in a good mood, so decided not to deliver a polemic to the children. So next time you refer to a verbal attack on something or rant, why not use the word polemic instead? Dilettante. Dilettante. A dilettante is a person who takes part in a subject without serious study. Or a dabbler, tinkler, potterer. For example, I'm a dilettante as far as photography is concerned. The hiring manager interviewed the applicants and removed the dilettantes. It was clear from his work that he was not a dilettante, but deeply interested and passionate about the subject. So next time you refer to a person who takes part in a subject without serious study or a dabbler, why not use the word dilettante instead? Efface. Efface. To efface means to wipe out, erase, or to eradicate to remove all trace of. For example, the volcano effaced almost all the houses in the town. The doctor has performed surgery to efface the cyst. As much as she tried, she could not efface the memories of the accident. So next time you refer to erasing or eradicating something, why not use the word efface instead? Hit the like. Debunk. Debunk. To debunk means to expose the false claims and myths of something. For example, the study debunked the myth that this causes you to lose weight. The essay attempts to debunk unrealistic expectations on the job. His claims were debunked by evidence. So next time someone exposes the false claims and myths of something else, why not use the word debunk instead? Hit the like. Ostentatious. Ostentatious. Ostentatious means showy or flashy. For example, I think my dress is a bit ostentatious for the event. He enjoyed an ostentatious lifestyle. The lady chose an ostentatious car from the garage. So next time something is showy or flashy, why not use the word ostentatious instead? Brawny. Brawny. Brawny means muscular or strong, well-built. For example, as he walked to his car, his brawny hand reached to open the door. The brawny businessman looked dashing in his seamless shirt. The thief cowered before the brawny policeman. So next time someone is muscular or well-built, why not use the word brawny instead? Galvanize. Galvanize. To galvanize means to excite someone into taking an action. Or to urge, impel, or jolt. For example, the teacher galvanized the students into planting flowers in the garden. They tried to galvanize the villagers into action. My mom tried galvanizing us into cleaning our rooms regularly. So next time someone excites someone else into taking an action, why not use the word galvanize instead? Dubious. Dubious. Dubious means doubtful, uncertain, or hesitant, undecided. For example, when the social media platform was initially introduced, the public was dubious about the benefits. The brothers were dubious about the decision. 
While she was confident about many topics, she was dubious about this one. So next time someone is doubtful, hesitant, or undecided about something, why not use the word dubious instead? Instigate. Instigate. To instigate means to start, begin, or provoke, incite someone to do something. For example, the bullies failed to instigate Jim at school. The group instigated the organization into action. Poverty instigated him to study for long hours and do well at school. So next time something or someone starts or incites someone to do something, why not use the word instigate instead? Hit the like. Totter. Totter. To totter means to walk unsteadily or tremble or shake. For example, the injured boy tottered to the front door of his room. We saw the toddler tottering on the floor towards the playroom. The old man tottered as he walked to the bench in the park. So next time someone walks unsteadily, why not use the word totter instead? Hit the line. Cartographer. Cartographer. A cartographer is a person who creates or produces maps. For example, the cartographer examined the land carefully before making the map. This software helped the cartographer to create a sketch of the map. The cartographer placed the legend at the bottom of the map. So next time you refer to a person who creates or produces maps, why not use the word cartographer instead? Hit the like. Preeminent. Preeminent. Preeminent means outstanding, distinguished, or prominent. For example, today, a preeminent scientist was the guest speaker of my lecture at the university. The minister took the advice of the preeminent lawyer to make the decision. Some predict that solar energy will be one of the preeminent sources of electricity in the future. So next time someone or something is outstanding, distinguished or prominent, why not use the word preeminent instead? Uproarous. Uproarous. Uproarous means hilarious, causing loud laughter, or disorderly, tumultuous, with loud noises. For example, the couple complained because of the loud noise from the uproarous party next door. The stand-up comedian made an uproarous joke and the laughter echoed in the stadium. Suddenly, the group next to us at the coffee shop burst into uproarous laughter. So next time something is causing loud laughter or if something is disorderly with loud noises, why not use the word uproarous instead? Devour. Devour. To devour means to eat quickly or to guzzle down. Or to gobble up. For example, I stared at my sister as she devoured her lunch. As soon as we placed the meat in the bowl, the dog devoured it in less than a minute. 
Tom devoured the juicy, succulent fruit. So next time you eat something quickly, why not use the word devour instead? Hit the like. Precedent. Precedent. Precedent means a previous occurrence or prior case. For example, her results set a new precedent. The lawyers worked to set a legal precedent for the department. We looked at a precedent for the work that we had to complete. So next time you refer to a previous occurrence of something, why not use the word precedent instead? Hit the like. Nebulous. Nebulous. Nebulous means hazy, unclear, or vague. For example, his nebulous statements led to confusion. The professor addressed questions on nebulous concepts. Her nebulous response about the matter increased doubts about the program. So next time something is unclear or vague, why not use the word nebulous instead? Hit the like. Concise. Concise. Concise means brief to the point or succinct. For example, I rewrote my verbose paragraph over the weekend and made it into a concise version. We admired the director's concise speech. It was difficult for them to converse with each other on their first date because of their concise responses. So next time something is brief or to the point, why not use the word concise instead? Decorum. Decorum. Decorum means decency or etiquette. For example, the children behaved with decorum at the wedding. He was disciplined for breaching the decorum of the academy. My niece lacked a sense of decorum in professional matters. So next time you refer to decency or etiquette, why not use the word decorum instead? Vital. Vital. Vital means essential, important, or necessary. For example, water is vital for our survival. Hard work, perseverance, and honesty are vital to success. The company ensured the vital equipment for production. So next time something is essential, important, or necessary, why not use the word vital instead? Contumacious. Contumacious. Contumacious means stubborn or disobedient to authority. For example, despite the gentle, reasonable voice of the policewoman, the contumacious driver refused to provide his identification. The man's refusal to pay the monthly fees is contumacious. The contumacious students did not attend class for weeks. So next time when someone is stubborn or disobedient to authority, why not use the word contumacious instead? Dexterous. Dexterous. Dexterous means skillful with one's hands or adept or deft. For example, the dexterous pianist played an emotional piece with a profound climax. The patient felt at ease because he was treated by a well-respected and dexterous surgeon. The hiring manager searched for dexterous typists. So next time someone is skillful with their hands, why not use the word dexterous instead? 
precipice. Precipice. A precipice is a steep slope or cliff. For example, they hiked in the forest and arrived at a precipice. The analysts say that the housing market is on the edge of a precipice. They lay near the edge of the precipice with their cameras, waiting to capture the flamingos flying toward the shore. So next time you refer to a steep slope or cliff, why not use the word precipice instead? Hegemony. Hegemony. A hegemony is political dominance, leadership, or... Authority, power, control, sovereignty. For example, the war between the two countries took place for regional hegemony. The country's world hegemony was due to its military superiority. The northern and southern parts of our country were united under the hegemony that took place 50 years ago. So next time you refer to political dominance or leadership, why not use the word hegemony instead? Lacuna. Lacuna. A lacuna is a gap or an unfilled space or interval. For example, his artistic work filled a lacuna that is much desired. After a downward fall, there was a lacuna because of the pandemic and then an upward trend. They analyzed if there was a lacuna in the regulations. So next time you refer to a gap or an unfilled space or interval, why not use the word lacuna instead? Cantankerous. Cantankerous. Cantankerous means quarrelsome, argumentative, or bad-tempered. For example, none of us wanted to serve the cantankerous customer. The cantankerous old man always got himself into trouble. After a few drinks, the men became cantankerous and boisterous. So next time someone is quarrelsome, argumentative, or bad-tempered, why not use the word cantankerous instead? Egress. Egress. An egress is an action of exiting or withdrawing, or departure. For example, the fire escape made for rapid egress during the emergency. The authorities investigated whether the area met the egress requirements. The architectural team strategized on the building's access and egress. So next time you refer to the act of exiting or withdrawing or departure, why not use the word egress instead? Libertine. Libertine. A libertine is a person who rejects accepted opinions in matters of religion or a free thinker. For example, she said that she is not a libertine anymore. Their transition from libertine to believer was what was discussed. Everyone looked at the libertine with surprise. So next time you refer to a person who rejects accepted opinions in matters of religion, why not use the word libertine instead? Hit the like. Apprehensive. 
apprehensive. Apprehensive means anxious, worried, and fearful, or uneasy, nervous. For example, many students felt apprehensive about their exams next week. The travelers were apprehensive because their flight was postponed on a very short notice. The residents were apprehensive about the vaccine. So next time you're anxious, worried, and fearful about something, why not use the word apprehensive instead? Profane. Profane. Profane means. Sinful, unholy, or impious. For example, the profane thief stole all the belongings of the old bedridden lady. The emperor ordered profane attacks on the neighboring emperor's land. The article describes details about the profane acts. So next time something or someone is sinful, unholy, or impious, why not use the word profane instead? Aversion. Aversion. Aversion means a dislike of or distaste for. For example, my aunt has an aversion to cats. Their aversion to the use of force was deep-seated, and immediately walked out the meeting when they felt some members were instigating violence. Tom had an aversion to heights and never lived in high-rise condominiums. So next time someone has a distaste for something, why not use the word aversion instead? Hit the like. Frivolous. Frivolous. Frivolous means silly, foolish, or not serious, light-hearted. For example, the students made frivolous comments in the classroom. Earl made a frivolous remark about the violence on the streets. Her frivolous answers to the reporter made the public question whether or not she was under the influence of alcohol. So next time something is silly or not serious, why not use the word frivolous instead? Hit the like. Modicum. Modicum. A modicum is a small amount of something, usually something considered valuable, or. A particle, speck, fragment. For example, the police officers interrogated the accused for a modicum of truth. A modicum of sincerity would help him tremendously. It appeared neither had a modicum of integrity. So next time you refer to a small amount of something, usually something considered valuable. Why not use the word modicum instead? Dichotomy. Dichotomy. Dichotomy means a separation into two parts, or division, split, difference. For example, I always try not to have a dichotomy between my actions and my words. The dichotomy between reality and the way things appeared to be through social media was vast. His corporate experience demonstrated the dichotomy between the corporate world and the academic world. So next time there is a separation into two parts or a difference, why not use the word dichotomy instead? Censorious. Censorious. Censorious means overcritical or disapproving of others, or hypercritical, condemnatory. For example, 
she was censorious about the environmental strategies taken. He had few friends because of his censorious attitude. Tom was always grateful and never censorious. So next time someone is overcritical or condemnatory, why not use the word censorious instead? Condescend. Condescend. To condescend means to talk down to someone, show feelings of superiority, or patronize. For example, he felt as if they were condescending him, so he respectfully walked away. Please don't condescend me. They condescended to my grandmother and she was annoyed. So next time someone talks down to someone else or shows feelings of superiority, why not use the word condescend instead? Hinder. Hinder. To hinder means to obstruct or to hamper. For example, her brother's loud music hindered her work. At this moment, there were no obstacles to hinder her progress that she could not handle on her own. The policy hindered the growth of the industry. So next time, when something obstructs something else, why not use the word hinder instead? Defunct. Defunct. Defunct means no longer in use or existence, or non-functioning or obsolete. For example, we visited the defunct factory which has become a historical site. The technology is now considered defunct. We anticipated that the methodology would become defunct, so we began to learn about new methodologies in the field. So next time something is no longer in use or in existence, why not use the word defunct instead? Hit the like. Parody. Parody. A parody is an imitation, a mockery with a focus of comic relief, or a skit. For example, the parody criticized her reaction to the incident. He spent weeks writing a parody to deliver at the event. The audience laughed at the parody of the author's response. So next time you refer to an imitation or mockery for comic relief, why not use the word parody instead? Cauldron. Cauldron. A cauldron is a round, huge cooking pot. For example, the pixies brought out a rotund cauldron from the room. Hagrid warmed up the dragon's egg in a hot cauldron. My grandmother boiled our favorite soup in a dark cauldron. So next time you refer to a round, huge cooking pot, why not use the word cauldron instead? Hit the like button. Arcane. Arcane. Arcane means mysterious, known to a few people, or obscure. For example, the history professors communicated using ancient arcane notation. The buyers did not fully understand the arcane details of the contract. arcane law was familiar to a few specialists in the field. 
So next time something is obscure, mysterious, or known to only a few people, why not use the word arcane instead? Flustered. Flustered. Flustered means worked up, agitated, or confused. For example, she looked flustered when she walked out of the meeting. The passengers were flustered when they heard that their flight got cancelled. The flustered old lady spoke quickly in short sentences that made little sense. So next time someone is worked up, agitated or confused, why not use the word flustered instead? Celerity. Celerity. A celerity is quickness of movement or speed. For example, this car performs better in stabilization, celerity, and fuel efficiency. The athlete's celerity was impressive. The celerity of the spread of the virus made it uncontrollable. So next time you refer to the speed of something, why not use the word celerity instead? Hit the like. Inconsequential. Inconsequential. Inconsequential means insignificant or unimportant. For example, the reader skipped the inconsequential details in the article. The difference between the two is inconsequential. Their discussion entailed inconsequential information about the weather. So next time something is insignificant or unimportant, why not use the word inconsequential instead? Transcribe. Transcribe. To transcribe means to copy or write out. For example, three administrative assistants sat at the front of the courtroom transcribing everything that was said. The debate was taped and transcribed. I prepared myself and my desk to transcribe the discussion that was about to take place. So next time you write or copy something, why not use the word transcribe instead? Hit the like Deplore. Deplore. To deplore means to disapprove of something or to be shocked by. For example, the students deplore violence in the school. The speaker expressed sentiments deploring oppression. Injustice was deplored among the people. So next time you disapprove of or are shocked by something, why not use the word deplore instead? Incipient. Incipient. Incipient means just beginning, emerging, or developing. For example, the managers identified a few incipient problems in the team. Kim recognized the incipient frustration arising from the meeting, so she excused herself. The doctor prescribed a series of treatments for the incipient tumor. So next time you refer to something that's emerging, why not use the word incipient instead? Obsolete. Obsolete. Obsolete means no longer valid or out of date. For example, 
Many phones become obsolete after five years. The company recycles the parts of obsolete computers. Many workers fear that their jobs will become obsolete due to the increase in technology and robots. So next time when something is no longer valid, why not use the word obsolete instead? Serene. Serene. Serene means peaceful, calm, or restful. For example, we sat by the serene water and looked into the sunset. I listened to serene music and sipped a glass of wine. My grandmother preferred to lead a serene life in the countryside. So next time someone or something is peaceful or calm, why not use the word serene instead? Solicit. Solicit. To solicit means to ask for, seek, or request. For example, Jim approached his mother and solicited her for advice on a financial matter. Harry Potter solicited Professor Slughorn for advice on some potions. Please feel free to solicit my help if you have any questions or concern. So next time someone asks for, seeks or requests something, why not use the word solicit instead? Infer. Infer. To infer means to deduce from evidence or data, or to conclude. For example, the statisticians inferred a positive relationship between student engagement and student outcomes. It seems reasonable to infer that the drug causes a feeling of drowsiness. The evidence is not sufficient for one to infer the relationship we discussed. So next time you deduce something from evidence or data, why not use the word infer instead? Corpulent. Corpulent. Corpulent means fat, overweight, or obese. For example, Santa Claus is a corpulent man with long gray beard who wears a red and white suit. My dad and I shopped for a large suit because he was tall and corpulent. She looked in the mirror and saw a corpulent, unconfident lady. So next time someone is fat, overweight, or obese, why not use the word corpulent instead? Irascible. Irascible. Irascible means easily angered or short-tempered, irritable. For example, she was still irascible months after the incident. He wondered what made him so irascible. We didn't get in my uncle's way because he seemed irascible. So next time someone is easily angered or short-tempered, why not use the word irascible instead? Churlishness. Churlishness. Churlishness means ill-mannered behavior or rudeness. For example, we didn't go to the restaurant again because of the manager's churlishness. Her churlishness caused her to lose many friends. There was an apparent churlishness in the way the director treated the reporters. So next time you refer to someone's ill-mannered behavior or rudeness, why not use the word churlishness instead? 
Sagacious. Sagacious. Sagacious means wise or having good judgment. For example, Arthur was a sagacious member of the team. He is a respected speaker whose sagacious words are worth remembering. The public was confident because of the sagacious decision the leader made. So next time someone has good judgment, why not use the word sagacious instead? Hit the like. Desecrate. Desecrate. Desecrate means to damage, violate, pollute, or disrespect a holy place. Or to treat sacrilegiously. For example, a gang of people desecrated the temple. The church was desecrated a century ago, and the remains are preserved and protected by the government. They desecrated the ancient scriptures with fire. So next time a holy place or thing is damaged, violated, polluted, or disrespected, why not use the word desecrate instead? Spurious. Spurious. Spurious means false, fake, or not genuine, counterfeit. For example, the spurious claims in the article misled consumers. The teacher identified the spurious arguments in the student's essay, which were not backed by evidence. The group argued that legal action should be taken towards those who create and market spurious advertisements. So next time when something is false or fake, why not use the word spurious instead? Hit the like and subscribe buttons. Placid. Placid. Placid means not easily upset or excited. Or calm, peaceful, or even tempered. For example, I approached Jane to discuss my concerns because she has a placid nature. We looked forward to canoeing on that lake because of its placid waters. The animals are generally placid unless you encroach on their space. So next time someone or something is calm or even tempered, why not use the word placid instead? Whittle. Whittle. To whittle means to peel or carve with a knife. Or to wear away or reduce. For example, the artist whittled the hard clay with a knife. We saw the ice whittle away in the sun. The manager strategized to whittle down expenses. So next time someone carves something with a knife or something wears away, why not use the word whittle instead? A basement. A basement. A basement means a state of being reduced in rank or reputation, or degradation or humiliation. For example, such strategies led to the abasement of the quality of education in the country. The bullies at school laughed at John's abasement. She worked hard to succeed and overcome the abasement of her past. So next time something has been reduced in rank or reputation, 
Why not use the word abasement instead? Enfranchise. Enfranchise. To enfranchise means to give voting rights to, or to give suffrage to. For example, women over twenty-five were enfranchised in nineteen forty. The leader proposed to enfranchise permanent residents. In the last century. They discussed which settlements to enfranchise. So next time a group gives voting rights to another group, why not use the word enfranchise instead? Morose. Morose. Morose means sulky, gloomy, or bad-tempered. For example. When my mom came home from the meeting, she was morose. My father looked morose while he sat on the chair. When she did not meet his high standards, she was morose for days. So next time someone is sulky, gloomy, or bad-tempered, why not use the word morose instead? Volatile. Volatile. Volatile means easily evaporated at normal temperatures, or changeable, unpredictable, unstable, or turbulent. For example, hexane is a volatile solvent. The investments were risky because of the volatile market. The teacher was concerned about the students' volatile behavior. So next time a solvent easily evaporates, or you refer to someone or something that is unstable or changeable, why not use the word volatile instead? Credulous. Credulous. Credulous means ready to believe anything, or. Gullible, innocent, trusting, naive. For example, the businessman looked for credulous individuals to sell his products. The credulous girl was almost trapped into a scam when her friend caught on and saved her from the trap. We admired the credulous gentleman as we were used to deceitful applicants. So next time someone is gullible, naive, and too trusting, why not use the word credulous instead? Plummet. Plummet. To plummet is to fall quickly and suddenly straight down. Or to plunge or drop. For example, during the pandemic, airline ticket sales plummeted. The swimmer plummeted to the bottom of the waterfall and swam to the shore safely. During the storm, I saw the branch plummet to the ground. So next time something plunges or drops quickly, why not use the word plummet instead? Flail. Flail. To flail means to wave, swing, or move erratically. Or, a tool used to separate grains from the chaff. For example. She tried getting onto the canoe, but fell with her hands flailing in the air. The farmers had multiple flails in stock. 
The fish flailed on the rock, so I threw it back into the water. So next time something waves, swings, moves erratically, why not use the word flail instead? Terse. Terse. Terse means brief, succinct, or curt or to the point. For example, she replied confidently with a terse statement. The terse announcement did not provide an explanation for what was happening. He provided terse responses during the interview. So next time a statement is brief or to the point, why not use the word terse instead? Repudiate. Repudiate. Repudiate means to refuse to accept or be associated with something, or to reject or renounce. For example, that community repudiated clothes and shoes made from animal skin. After she took on a corporate job, she repudiated the culture of the village. He did not repudiate the policy, but instead made amends and enhanced it. So next time someone rejects or renounces something, why not use the word repudiate instead? Abate. Abate. To abate means to reduce in intensity or to subside. For example, they stayed indoors until the snowstorm abated. We added cold water to abate the boiling water into lukewarm water. Nothing abated her limitless determination. So next time something reduces in intensity or subsides, why not use the word abate instead? Wanton. Wanton. Wanton means deliberate and unjustifiable. Or malicious, spiteful. For example, it took years for the city to recover from the wanton destruction caused by the group. We were appalled at the wanton discrimination they faced. They were charged for the wanton vandalism they committed. So next time something is deliberate and unprovoked, why not use the word wanton instead? Envenom. Envenom. To envenom means to poison or to contaminate. For example, the snake envenomed the cat. The antagonist in the movie envenomed his sword with poison. Don't be fooled by the beauty of the animal, because with an instant bite, it envenoms its victim. So next time when something poisons or contaminates something else, why not use the word and venom instead? Obliterate. Obliterate. To obliterate means to wipe out, destroy, or to eradicate. For example, the volcano obliterated almost all animal life in the town. The doctors performed surgery to obliterate the cyst. As much as she tried, she could not obliterate the memories of the accident. So next time something wipes out or destroys something else, why not use the word obliterate instead? Curtail. 
curtail. To curtail means to shorten, reduce, or to diminish. For example, the trip was curtailed by a heavy snowstorm. The team developed strategies to curtail bankruptcies. The analyst predicted that the pandemic will curtail consumer demand for gas. So next time something shortens or reduces something else, why not use the word curtail instead? Hiatus. Hiatus. A hiatus is a pause or gap in a sequence or process. Or interval, break or pause. For example, there was a continuous increase in sales throughout the year except for a brief hiatus in the month of June. After a three-month hiatus, the board resumed the discussion on environmental policies. The interviewer questioned the hiatus on my resume. So next time you refer to an interval in a series, why not use the word hiatus instead? Coda. Coda. Coda means a concluding event, section, piece of music, or finale, ending, or final part of the document. For example, last weekend, I worked on the coda for the piece of music. Everyone was excited to see the coda. This book is the coda to the trilogy of books. So next time the finale or concluding event or section is being referred to, why not use the word coda instead? Noxious. Noxious. Noxious means harmful or poisonous. For example, the workers wore masks to protect themselves from noxious fumes. The agent found out about the noxious plan to destroy the building. The scientists worked tirelessly to destroy the noxious bacteria. So next time something is harmful or poisonous, why not use the word noxious instead? Modest. Modest. Modest means simple, plain, not excessive, or unpretentious. For example, Mark was modest about the awards he won at school. I admired Aunt Kathy, the lady in the modest dress standing at the door. The family was happy in their modest home. So next time someone or something is plain, simple, not excessive or unpretentious, why not use the word modest instead? Kindle. Kindle. To kindle means to start a fire or to excite or stir up. For example, the teacher asked questions to kindle our interest in the topic. Each of us kindled a lamp as part of the ceremony. The events in the summer camp helped kindle our friendship. So next time something excites something else or someone else, why not use the word kindle instead? Surly. Surly. Surly means rude, bad-tempered, grumpy, or unfriendly. For example, 
We didn't go to the restaurant because of the surly manager. The officer tried to appease the surly customer. He didn't have much friends because of his surly behavior. So next time someone is grumpy or rude, why not use the word surly instead? Rye. Rye. Rye means ironic, mocking, satirical. For example, the comedian was known for her wry humor. He reacted with a wry smile. The wry and entertaining play was popular among the people. So next time you refer to something as ironic and mocking, why not use the word wry instead? Obfuscate. Obfuscate. Obfuscate means purposefully make something unclear or difficult to understand, or to confuse or to obscure. For example, when we thought the debate would clarify the issue at hand, it obfuscated the issue instead. He tried to obfuscate his listeners, but he failed as they were quick to catch him out. The author was known to obfuscate issues, so his book sales fell. So next time someone confuses or deliberately tries to make something unclear or difficult to understand, why not use the word obfuscate instead? Cringe. Cringe. To cringe means to recoil or cower, or to feel embarrassed or squirm. For example, the servants cringed as soon as the master walked into the living room. I cringe when I think about the various hairstyles of my teenage years. We laughed as we saw him cringe as he looked at the movie. So next time you refer to someone who is cowering or who feels embarrassed about something, why not use the word cringe instead? Lance. Lance. A lance is a spear, javelin, or pike. For example, Centuries ago, many soldiers used lances during war. The tip of the lances were made of iron and steel. The villager hurled a lance towards the beast. So next time you refer to a spear or javelin, why not use the word lance instead? Ensconce. Ensconce. Ensconce means to settle someone or oneself in a safe, comfortable place, or to establish. For example, after a long ride, we ensconced ourselves on the comfortable sofa. When the fireworks got out of control. The spectators who were ensconced in the stadium box seats quickly got up and ran to the doorway. My pet dog Fluffy had a habit to ensconce himself between two pillows. So next time you settle or establish oneself in a safe or comfortable place, why not use the word ensconce instead? Vapid. Vapid. Vapid means dull, uninteresting, or uninspiring, insipid. For example, 
Even though my story was vapid, mom said she enjoyed it. The interviewer was not impressed by the vapid response from the interviewee. The film did not do too well at the box office because the audience thought it was rather vapid. So next time something is dull or uninteresting, why not use the word vapid instead? Capricious. Capricious. Capricious means volatile, fickle, or unstable, changeable. For example, the mother tried to attend to the capricious nature of her toddler. We braced ourselves as our ship moved on capricious waters. We were shocked at the capricious actions of the group. So next time something is fickle, unstable, or changeable, why not use the word capricious instead? Temper. Temper. To temper means to tone down, soften, or moderate. For example, he tried to temper his rage with meditation. The laughter of the innocent child tempered her frustration. They tempered the cold water with a jug of hot water. So next time when something tones down or softens something else, why not use the word temper instead? Renown. Renown. Renown means fame or prestige. For example, we were interested in books by authors of great renown. The incident affected the country's renown for decades. I expected to see more singers of great renown on the panel as judges. So next time you want to refer to fame or prestige, why not use the word renown instead? Aberration. Aberration. Aberration means deviation from what is normal or expected, or anomaly or irregularity. For example, the scientists observed that this was an aberration. The city is typically a friendly and peaceful one, but this incident was an aberration. If you see a large spike in the graph, this means that an aberration exists and we must investigate it. So next time something deviates from what is normal or expected, why not use the word aberration instead? Quack. Quack. A quack is a fraudster or confident trickster claiming to have special knowledge and skill in a field usually in medicine. Or charlatan. Or swindler. For example, the man followed the quack doctor's advice and almost lost his life. The quack was reported and investigated. The quick fix suggested by the quack was so appealing. So next time you refer to a fraudster or confident trickster, usually in the field of medicine, why not use the word quack instead? Cynical. Cynical. 
Cynical means distrusting, skeptical, or doubtful or disbelieving. For example, we were cynical about his sources of income. Her experience made her cynical about love. The citizens are cynical about the leader's ability to implement the strategy. So next time someone is distrusting or skeptical, why not use the word cynical instead? Heed. Heed. To heed means to pay attention to, take notice of, or to listen to. For example, they took heed of the lessons from our ancestors. The wolves howled at the moon, yet the moon did not heed the wolves' howls. I did not take heed at the moment and regretted that decision. So next time you pay attention to or listen to something, why not use the word heed instead? Tawdry. Tawdry. Tawdry means flashy but cheap and of low quality. Or gaudy or of little value. For example, she wore a bright pink dress with tawdry jewelry. That part of the store was abundant in tawdry items. They wore tawdry jackets and bell-bottoms to the dance. So next time something is flashy but cheap and of low quality, why not use the word tawdry instead? Depravity. Depravity. Depravity means moral corruption, wickedness, or vice, perversion. For example, the group was condemned for depravity. Depravity was rampant in that era. The gangsters searched for evidence of depravity in their recruits. So next time you refer to moral corruption, wickedness, why not use the word depravity instead? Follow. Follow. Follow means unplowed, unseeded, uncultivated, or inactive or dormant. For example, the farmers looked for fallow land. The past decade was a fallow period for the town because there was not much business activity. My grandfather said that they let the fields fallow for a year. So next time something is unplowed, unseeded, or inactive, why not use the word fallow instead? Torrid. Torrid. Torrid means hot, scorching, blazing, or full of difficulty. For example, apart from the torrid day, the ride in the safari desert was adventurous and memorable. I rested for a few days because of the torrid past week. The pandemic resulted in torrid times for billions globally. So next time something is blazing or full of difficulty, why not use the word torrid instead? Languid. Languid. Languid means tired, slow, or relaxed or unhurried. For example, they were in a hurry and were irritated by his languid demeanor. Alan Rickman, 
the actor who played Professor Snape in the Harry Potter movie series, is known for his deep and languid voice. She was usually an active person, but over the past week she was languid and pale, so we were concerned. So next time someone or something is tired, slow, or unhurried, why not use the word languid instead? Apicure. Apicure. An apicure is a person who enjoys fine food and drink, or gourmet connoisseur of good food. For example, Victor is an epicure, so he was delighted when the new restaurant opened across the street. We tried that cookbook and can tell it was written by a true epicure. My grandfather was an epicure who always hosted Thanksgiving dinner for our family. So next time you refer to a person who enjoys fine food and drink, why not use the word epicure instead? Mirth. Mirth. Mirth means amusement expressed in laughter or merriment or high spirits. For example, the performance at the theater caused much mirth among the audience members. The boy's face was alive with mirth when he received the chocolate bar. The family danced and laughed with mirth. So next time you refer to merriment, high spirits or amusement, especially with laughter, why not use the word mirth instead? Treacherous. Treacherous. Treacherous means guilty of betrayal and deceit or disloyal, deceitful, or traitorous. For example, the treacherous soldier caused great harm to the people. He trusted her, but she was treacherous instead. The public lost faith in the treacherous leaders. So next time someone is guilty of deceit or betrayal, why not use the word treacherous instead? Oblivious. Oblivious. Oblivious means totally unaware, heedless, or unmindful. For example, she was oblivious to her listeners' lack of interest. The little boy jumped in the puddle of mud, oblivious to the mess he was making to his clothes. I spoke with the clock, oblivious to the clothes he wore. So next time someone is totally unaware, heedless or unmindful, why not use the word oblivious instead? Lacrimose. Lacrimose. Lacrimose means tearful or sad. For example, there were two lacrimose dramas in the theater this week. My grandfather gets lacrimose when we speak about our late grandmother. The children were lacrimose when they saw the movie. So next time someone or something is tearful or sad, why not use the word lacrimose instead? Forage. Forage. Forage means foodstuff or feed, or to search for food, hunt, or rummage around. For example, the squirrel foraged through the leaves to find food. 
My uncle foraged a duck for tonight's dinner party. The pigs were foraging in the pen. So next time you refer to feed or animal searches for food, why not use the word forage instead? Billowing. Billowing. Billowing means moving, flowing, or swelling outward. Or undulating. For example, the camels walked through the billowing clouds of dust in the desert. I wore a white shirt, a red billowing skirt, and a pair of black shoes. The interior designer chose great cream billowing curtains for the living room. So next time something is undulating or swelling outward, why not use the word billowing instead? In great. In great. In great means an ungrateful person. For example, no one wanted to gift her anything because she was an ingrate. Tom was an ingrate who asked for more and more, even though he was given millions already. We wondered if Sarah, an ingrate, would ever be grateful for what she was given. So next time you refer to an ungrateful person, why not use the word ingrate instead? Minion. Minion. A minion is a subordinate or underling of a powerful person or servant. For example, Gru had many minions. The captain assigned the job to one of her minions. Her minion brought a bowl of fruits placed it on the table, and walked out the door without a word. So next time you refer to an underling of a powerful person, why not use the word minion instead? Poignant. Poignant. Poignant means evoking a sense of regret and sadness, or deeply moving, saddening touching. For example, the poignant film affected us for months. The song awakened poignant memories. The volunteers were moved by his poignant speech. So next time something is deeply moving, why not use the word poignant instead? Viscous. Viscous. Viscous means having a thick, gluey consistency between solid and liquid. Or gummy, gelatinous, syrupy. For example, mix it into a viscous batter. We saw the viscous sap leak down the bark of the tree. The chemistry experiment resulted in a viscous solution. So next time you refer to something that has a thick, gluey consistency between solid and liquid, why not use the word viscous instead? Ruminate. Ruminate. To ruminate means to think over, ponder about something, or to mull over something. For example, we ruminated about eating all the cookies and cupcakes in the kitchen. John spent months ruminating about how to propose to Jane. They ruminated about what they'll do if they won the lottery. 
So next time you think over or ponder about something, why not use the word ruminate instead? Pertain. Pertain. Pertain means be applicable or related to something, or refer to. For example, the teacher asked us to give two examples pertaining to the topic. I'd like to talk about an issue that does not pertain to cost, but instead pertains to deadlines. The discount does not pertain to these items. So next time something refers to something else, why not use the word pertain instead? Listless. Listless. Listless means unenthusiastic, lackadaisical, or lethargic. For example, the manager tried to understand why Tom was listless on the job. When teachers taught online, they included various strategies to increase the engagement of listless students. We were concerned about Hannah because she remained listless many years after she lost her family in the accident. So next time someone is unenthusiastic, why not use the word listless instead? Coffer. Coffer. Coffer means funds or financial reserves of a group. Or money resources. For example, the institution's coffer is empty. The company donated to the foundation's coffers. Over time, the coffers whittled away. So next time you refer to money, resources, or funds of a group or institution, why not use the word coffer instead? Taunt. Taunt. To taunt means to make a comment with the intention to provoke, anger, or wound someone. Or to ridicule, tease, mock, or insult someone. For example, the bullies taunted Jim at school. She never ate at the cafeteria because they taunted her about her weight. He stood up to those who taunted him. So next time someone ridicules or makes a comment with the intention of provoking someone else, why not use the word taunt instead? Abhor. Abhor. Abhor means to regard with disgust or hate. For example, the group abhorred discrimination in the community. The citizens abhor laws which took away their freedom of choice. I abhor that color on the wall. So next time when someone hates or regards something with disgust, why not use the word abhor instead? Hedonism. Hedonism. Hedonism means pleasure seeking or self indulgence. For example, the group disagreed with the doctrine of hedonism. Ancient philosophers described their views on hedonism in various books. The businesses promoted hedonism when marketing their product. So next time you refer to self-indulgence or pleasure-seeking, why not use the word hedonism instead? Accolade. 
accolade. An accolade is an award to acknowledge merit or recognition. For example, in 2009, Adele won two Grammy Awards, the highest accolade in the music business. Their hard work led them to receive multiple accolades. The scientist received the Nobel Prize, the ultimate accolade in sciences. So next time you refer to an award or recognition of honor, why not use the word accolade instead? Lax. Lax. Lax means not strict or careful enough, slack, or negligent. For example, the lax discipline at school was a concern for many parents. The mayor's office was accused of lax management on the issue. I knew I did not perform well because of my lax efforts. So next time something or someone is negligent or not strict enough, why not use the word lax instead? Bilk. Bilk. Bilk means to obtain money from someone by deceit or without justification. Or to swindle or defraud, for example. The firm was under attack because investors thought they were bilked by its schemes. We created a strategy to ensure the business didn't bilk money from elderly customers. Be cautious of phone calls from scammers who try to bilk money off you. So next time someone is trying to obtain money from someone else by deceit, why not use the word bilk instead? Tangible. Tangible. Tangible means can be touched, touchable, or noticeable. For example, the new policy stated that taxes are applied to tangible products instead of services. My sister preferred to spend time with the family instead of a tangible gift for her birthday. The strategies brought tangible results to the company. So next time something is touchable or noticeable, why not use the word tangible instead? Ascribe. Ascribe. To ascribe means to assign something to a cause or to attribute to, to give credit to or to blame on. For example, we are ascribed as sincere to familial love. The teacher ascribed his conduct to his friend circle. We were wrong to ascribe his symptoms to an allergy. So next time you assign something to a cause, why not use the word ascribe instead? Tenuous. Tenuous. Tenuous means lacking a sound reasoning, clarity, or significance, or weak or thin. For example, no one believed his tenuous arguments. The detectives made a tenuous link between the two cases. The manager moved ahead with the second option because the other options were built on tenuous grounds. So next time something lacks sound reasoning or significance, why not use the word tenuous instead? Epistle. Epistle. 
An epistle is a letter or written communication. For example, her blog was an epistle with the rest of the world. We read the 11th epistle from the literature. The epistle gave us a deep understanding of Henrietta. So next time you refer to a letter, why not use the word epistle instead? Adapt. Adapt. Adapt means expert or proficient at something, or very skilled or accomplished. For example, the panel included a group of people who were adept in the subject matter. His work proves that he was adept at building complicated machines. The managers search for an adept geologist. So next time someone is an expert or proficient at something, why not use the word adept instead? Blythe. Blythe. Blythe means carefree, heedless, or cheerful. For example, Heidi was much loved because of her blithe spirit. The teenaged boy was blithe about his performance in the football team. My cousin loves candy and is blithe about accompanying tooth decay. So next time someone is carefree, heedless or cheerful, why not use the word blithe instead? Heresy. Heresy. A heresy is an unorthodox opinion or an opinion contrary to what is generally accepted. For example, the book was not published yet because it was being investigated for heresy. They committed a heresy when they read a poem about that issue. Her belief that the organization's intentions were not what they appeared to be was heresy. So next time an opinion is unorthodox, why not use the word heresy instead? Cryptic. Cryptic. Cryptic means having a meaning that is difficult to understand or obscure. Or enigmatic, mysterious or perplexing. For example... You should never click any links from cryptic messages you receive on your phone or email. Her cryptic comments made us confused. The professors studied the cryptic diagrams in the ancient text. So next time something has a meaning that is difficult to understand, why not use the word cryptic instead? Faction. Faction. Faction means a sector or small group that is part of a larger group. Or clique, branch, division. For example, a faction of the political party did not agree with the president. The debate took place between the eastern faction and the southern faction of the community. The faction was established in 1973. So next time you refer to a sector that is a part of a large group or branch or division, why not use the word faction instead? Waffle. Waffle. Waffle means to talk nonsense or to ramble, prattle. For example, they waffled about the newborn baby. 
They rolled their eyes as he waffled about the journey. Please stop waffling and get to the point. So next time someone talks nonsense or rambles, why not use the word waffle instead? Talisman. Talisman. A talisman is an object, usually with an inscription, thought to bring about luck or have magical powers. Or a lucky charm. For example, keep this talisman as you journey across the sea. The archaeologists found a talisman during their search. The objective was for the protagonists in the movie to find a talisman near a tombstone. So next time you are referring to a lucky charm, why not use the word talisman instead? Abrasive. Abrasive. Abrasive means coarse or rough and harsh. For example, my grandparents advise us not to use abrasive cleaners on the wall. She touched the material and found it abrasive. John had an abrasive manner, so others were cautious when they were around him. So next time something is coarse or rough, why not use the word abrasive instead? Plaintiff. Plaintiff. A plaintiff is a person who brings a case against another in a court of law or a petitioner in court. For example, the plaintiff brought the documents to the lawyer. The plaintiff won the trial easily. The defendant's case exposed his flaws and strengthened the plaintiff's case. So next time you are referring to a person who brings a case against another in a court of law, why not use the word plaintiff instead? Sublime. Sublime. Sublime means of great beauty or grandeur to result in awe and inspiration. Or awesome, majestic, elevated, exalted. For example, we admired her because of her display of sublime self-confidence. The view from the hotel on the hill was sublime. We pondered about laying on a beach listening to sublime music while watching the sunset. So next time you refer to something that's awe-inspiring, why not use the word sublime instead? Replete. Replete. Replete means filled or well-stocked. For example, the farmers were replete with food before the drought began. The leader's speech was replete with hope. The store was replete with bicycles from across the globe. So next time something is well stocked, why not use the word replete instead? Arson. Arson. An arson is a crime of deliberately setting fire to a property. Or incendiarism. Pyromania. For example, the young lady was arrested for arson. 
The arson attack resulted in $100,000 in damage. The firefighters saved the children from the arson attack that took place in school. So next time you refer to a crime of deliberately setting fire to a property, why not use the word arson instead? Audacious. Audacious. Audacious means willing to take bold risks, daring and fearless. For example, before Tom left home, he made an audacious promise. We were shocked to know about the audacious statements made about the party. Peter was an audacious character in the film. So next time you refer to someone who is willing to take bold risks, why not use the word audacious instead? Stigma. Stigma. Stigma means mark or stain of shame or disgrace or dishonor. For example, we talked about the stigma attached to obesity. The alcoholic explained that the social stigma attached to alcoholism made it more difficult for him to get out of it. There is a stigma attached to poverty, so it was reticent about my past. So next time you refer to a mark or shame or disgrace, why not use the word stigma instead? Plethora. Plethora. A plethora is an excessive amount of something or abundance or surplus. For example, the library was filled with a plethora of books. The musicians went to the music store because it had a plethora of guitars. The plethora of courses available online made it difficult to decide on which one to take. So next time there is an abundance or surplus of something, why not use the word plethora instead? Headstrong. Headstrong. Headstrong means stubborn, obstinate, or willful to have one's own way. For example, the headstrong director lost talented employees because he failed to see their point of view. My sister is headstrong, so I avoid arguing with her. I regret that I was so headstrong when I was a teenager since I lost a lot of friends because of it. So next time someone is stubborn or willful to have one's own way, why not use the word headstrong instead? Chronic. Chronic. Chronic means persistent, long-standing, or constantly occurring. For example, Aunt Philippa complained about her chronic headache. The regular tornadoes caused the country to have chronic economic problems for a decade. We were relieved that the doctor said she did not suffer a chronic illness, but instead an acute illness. So next time something is persistent, constantly occurring, or long-standing, why not use the word chronic instead? Impetuous. Impetuous. Impetuous means doing something hastily with little or no thought or care. Or reckless, impulsive, heedless. For example, the impetuous group regularly caused trouble. When I was a teenager, I made a few impetuous decisions. 
Meg was cautious, but her sister was impetuous. So next time someone is impulsive, reckless, or doing something quickly and heedlessly, why not use the word impetuous instead? Apprise. Apprise. To apprise means to inform or notify someone, or to make aware of. For example, the secretary kept the manager apprised of all the office matters. The officer came to apprise us about the road closure. I need to apprise you of the changes that took place during the week. So next time you inform or notify someone, why not use the word apprise instead? Syncopation. Syncopation. Syncopation means rhythm with missed beats. For example. We found the syncopation in the third phrase was very effective. Here, the syncopation is occurring at the beat level. Syncopations are generally common in contemporary pop music. So, next time you refer to a rhythm with missed beats, why not use the word syncopation instead? Bigot, bigot, bigot means a person who is stubbornly or unreasonably attached to a belief, opinion, or faction, or a prejudiced person. For example, don't let a few bigots lower your spirit. John was a bigot. And we found it difficult to work with him. A group of bigots crowded outside the building. So next time you refer to someone who is a prejudiced person, why not use the word bigot instead? Platitude. Platitude. Platitude means. A saying that is used too often to be considered thoughtful, or a cliche or hackneyed remark. For example, the public felt the leader was unauthentic, as her speech was filled with evasive platitudes. The group repeated the usual platitudes in an attempt to assure the citizens. He had no original plan to present to us, but instead recited empty platitudes. So next time you refer to a cliche or a saying that's overused to be considered thoughtful. Why not use the word platitude instead? Nuzzle. Nuzzle. To nuzzle means to borrow one's nose into something, or to cuddle. For example, the squirrel nuzzled through the leaves looking for food. He loved to nuzzle into her cheek when they hugged. When I arrive home, my pet dog would run rapidly and nuzzle my hands. So next time someone or an animal borrows its nose into something or cuddles something, why not use the word nuzzle instead? Cower. Cower. To cower means to crouch down in fear, or to shrink or recoil. For example. The children cowered at the sound of the whip and the schoolmaster's voice. I noticed our dog cower in the corner of our room when he heard the sound of fireworks. Even though he feared the bully at school, 
he never cowered in front of her. So next time something shrinks or crouches down in fear, why not use the word cower instead? Reprehensible. Reprehensible. Reprehensible means blameworthy or shameful. For example, John's behavior was morally reprehensible. It was reprehensible of her to conduct herself in that manner. We read about the reprehensible acts committed by the group. So next time something is blameworthy or shameful, why not use the word reprehensible instead? Tome. Tome. Tome means a large, heavy, scholarly book book or a volume or publication for example we searched the library for the tome which described these incidents in the harry potter series many lined up for a signed copy of professor gilderoy lockhart's tomes She wrote a tome to address this specific issue. So next time you refer to a large, heavy book, why not use the word tome instead? Accession. Accession. Accession means joining a rank or power or enrollment. For example, the Queen's accession to the throne occurred in 1952. The country's accession to the global organization benefited its economy and reputation. We looked forward to attending my dad's accession to the post. So next time someone is joining or enrolling in something, why not use the word accession instead? Temperate. Temperate. Temperate means moderate, restrained, or self-controlled. For example, most of Europe and Canada fall in the temperate zone, while Mexico and Central America fall in the tropical zone. We admire my aunt as she was temperate in her habits. We advised students to be temperate and professional when commenting on the class's online discussion forum. So next time you refer to someone or something as moderate or restrained, why not use the word temperate instead? Laconic. Laconic. Laconic means using few words, or brief, succinct, or to the point. For example, I rewrote my verbose paragraph over the weekend and made it into a laconic version. We admired the director's laconic speech. It was difficult for them to converse with each other on their first date because of their laconic responses. So next time something is brief or to the point, why not use the word laconic instead? Engender. Engender. To engender means to cause or to give rise to a feeling, situation, or condition, or to trigger or stir up. For example, the argument engendered a controversy on a larger issue at hand. This did not engender doing the right thing, so we must not choose this path. I admire her because she engenders a feeling of confidence and ease among us. 
So next time something gives rise to a feeling, situation, or condition, why not use the word and gender instead? Disingenuous. Disingenuous. Disingenuous means pretending to know less about something than one really does. Or deceitful, dishonest, crafty, not frank or sincere. For example, it would be disingenuous of my brother to make that claim. There was something odd about her, as if she seems disingenuous. No one wanted to do business with them because they were disingenuous. So next time someone is dishonest, deceitful, crafty or pretending to know less about something than one really does, why not use the word disingenuous instead? Resignation. Resignation. Resignation means the act of retiring or stepping down or retirement. For example, the government official announced her resignation on Monday. After his resignation from his job, he volunteered regularly at the community center. Sarah is looking forward to her resignation to spend more time with her family. So next time someone is retiring, why not use the word resignation instead? Mar. Mar. To mar means to impair the appearance of something or to disfigure, spoil, flemish. For example, the cut from the fall marred his leg. The celebration was marred by violence. There was nothing along the way to mar our journey. So next time something spoils or impairs the appearance of something else, why not use the word mar instead? Abreast. Abreast. Abreast means up to date with the latest news or informed about or in touch with. For example, we created the app to keep the employees abreast of the latest business news. This subject aims to keep us abreast of current affairs. I admired his ability to keep abreast of developments. So next time someone is up to date with the latest news, why not use the word abreast instead? Contrite. Contrite. Contrite means regretful, remorseful, or penitent. For example, we saw a contrite expression on her face as she sat on the chair. His tone was contrite and tears leaked down his cheeks. The actor looked contrite and repentant on set. So next time someone is regretful, remorseful, why not use the word contrite instead? Strut. Strut. To strut means to walk in an arrogant, erect manner. Or swagger or show off. For example, the teenager strutted around the school cafeteria with his expensive new shoes. The models strutted around the club to the music. During the parade, the masqueraders strut their stuff on the stage. So next time someone walks in an arrogant, erect manner or swaggers, why not use the word strut instead? Bombast. Bombast. 
Bombast means pompous or boasting speech, or pomposity. For example, at the ceremony, our eyebrows rose because Aaron's speech had bombast and vanity in it. Her brother used persuasion instead of bombast and self-praise to win us over. What he said he could do seemed more like bombast than reality. So next time you refer to a boasting speech or pomposity, why not use the word bombast instead? Obscure. Obscure. Obscure means not easily understood, or unclear or uncertain. For example, the origin of her ancestors was obscure. My essay was obscure, so I rewrote it last weekend. The natural disaster made our immediate future obscure. So next time something is unclear or not easily understood, why not use the word obscure instead? Counterfeit. Counterfeit. Counterfeit means made as an imitation of something that is important with the intention to deceive, or fake. For example. The teller inspected the notes to see if they were counterfeit bills. They were charged with creating counterfeit medicines. The officers worked hard to reduce the city's counterfeit businesses. So next time something is fake and made to imitate with the intention to deceive. Why not use the word counterfeit instead? Livid. Livid. Livid means very angry or furious. For example, my sister was livid when she found out someone stole her bike. The livid man walked across the lawn and smashed the bottle to the ground. When Grandma was livid, she would call me by my first name instead of my pet name. So next time someone is very angry, why not use the word livid instead? Blight. Blight. Blight means to infect or have a detrimental effect on something. For example. The fungus blighted the crops, and they lost their income for the season. Even though her career was blighted by illness and injury, she had a positive outlook on life. The country was blighted by regular natural disasters and poverty. So next time something infects or has a detrimental effect on something else. Why not use the word blight instead? Abrogate. Abrogate. To abrogate means to do away with or cancel, or to revoke. For example, last year the government abrogated the treaty. The officers temporarily abrogated the group's rights to enter the location. It will take more than 80% votes from the cabinet to abrogate the treaty. So next time something is revoked, why not use the word abrogate instead? Nullify. Nullify. To nullify means to make legally void, or to invalidate. For example, the citizens voted to nullify that policy. It is more than six months from the date on the check, so this nullifies the check. They were not willing to nullify the legislation. 
So next time when something or someone invalidates something else, why not use the word nullify instead? Credible. Credible. Credible means believable, reasonable, or plausible. For example, the team hired many credible known consultants in the industry, so it attracted high-performing applicants to the vacancy. The plaintiff produced credible evidence against the defendant. Mom and Dad looked at Justin, my five-year-old brother, with a grin because Justin's cookie story was not credible. So next time something is believable or reasonable, why not use the word credible instead? Blowhard. Blowhard. Blowhard means a boastful person or bragger or show-off. For example, we cringed when Mark walked in because he was a blowhard we did not like to listen to. The public regarded them as pompous blowhards and did not take them seriously. The member of the board was a blowhard and eventually lost his seat at the table. So next time someone is boastful, a bragger or a show-off, why not use the word blowhard instead? Epistolary. Epistolary. An epistolary is a literary work in the form of letters or relating to the writing of letters. For example, we looked forward to reading The Color Purple, an epistolary novel. The author decided to write a novel in epistolary form. The use of an epistolary narrative strategy was impactful to the readers. So next time you refer to a literary work in the form of letters, why not use the word epistolary instead? Armada. Armada. Armada means a fleet of warships, or a navy, squadron. For example, the armada of 30 warships left yesterday. The Spanish armada was defeated in 1588. The British armada ceased fire. So next time you refer to a fleet of warships, why not use the word armada instead? Dote. Dote. To dote means to be extremely fond of someone or to adore, to love dearly. For example, my brother doted on my baby sister. As we walked in the park, we could see pedestrians doting on our dog. Sarah doted on the delicious cupcakes displayed in the bakery. So next time you're extremely fond of someone or adore someone or something, why not use the word dote instead? Prophetic. Prophetic. Prophetic means predictive, prognostic, or visionary, foreseeing. For example, it seemed as if there was something prophetic about my grandmother because many of her predictions came to pass. My uncle's words proved prophetic. The analyst's words proved prophetic and they won the election. So next time you refer to something that's predictive or visionary, why not use the word prophetic instead? Indictment. Indictment. Indictment means a formal charge or summons. 
For example, each of them received an indictment for theft. The mobsters faced an indictment. News about the indictment was on the front page of the newspaper. So next time you refer to a formal charge or accusation, why not use the word indictment instead? Vilify. Vilify. To vilify means to speak or write about someone in a derogatory manner. Or to condemn, disparage, defame, or pour scorn on. For example, the speaker's intention is to vilify the candidate's reputation. They were vilified in the article. When he publicly vilified them, he revealed to the world his own insecurities. So next time someone speaks or worries about someone in a dark... So next time someone speaks or writes about someone in a derogatory manner, why not use the word vilify instead? Plot it. Plaudit. A plaudit is a statement or expression of approval or praise. For example, her successful completion of the mission won the plaudits of the directors. He deserved the plaudit he received. The newspaper article included a detailed plaudit for the team's work. So next time you refer to a praise, why not use the word plot it instead? Wizened. Wizened. Wizened means wrinkled or creased or shriveled up. For example, the blankets wizened between the bags of clothes. My grandmother was a wizened old lady with long gray hair. I held my mother's wizened hands and wondered how time flew by. So next time someone is wrinkled, why not use the word wizened instead? Podium podium. A podium is a raised platform for a speaker, conductor, or a recipient of a medal. For example, we admired her as she spoke in front of the podium. The principal stepped up to the podium. We searched for a brown wooden podium to match the wood in the boardroom. So next time you refer to a raised platform for a speaker, why not use the word podium instead? Fortuitous. Fortuitous. Fortuitous means unexpected, by chance, unpredictable or opportune or fortunate. For example, the timing was fortuitous. It seemed that our survival from the storm would depend on only fortuitous events. Thanks to the fortuitous entry of the truck, the hero escaped. So next time something is by chance unpredictable or opportune, why not use the word fortuitous instead? Tardy. Tardy. Tardy means late or behind schedule. For example, Joshua lost his job because he was tardy too often. Please accept my apology for my tardy response. She always arrived early to every lecture, 
So we were worried when she was tardy today. So next time someone is late or unpunctual, why not use the word tardy instead? Reprieve. Reprieve. Reprieve means to cancel the punishment of someone, or to respite or to pardon. For example, the man was reprieved from the sentence on Sunday. We thought that senior citizens were reprieved from the tax. After John was reprieved from the sentence, he worked hard to turn his life around. So next time someone or something is cancelled or pardoned, why not use the word reprieve instead? Bourgeois. Bourgeois. Bourgeois means middle class or property owning. For example, they introduced themselves as a bourgeois family. It was part of the bourgeois society that they were perceived that way. We admired their bourgeois lifestyle. So next time you refer to someone or something that is middle class, why not use the word bourgeois instead? Acrid. Acrid. Acrid means sharp, unpleasant, biting taste or smell, or pungent. For example, we passed the hallway, which was filled with the acrid smoke of tobacco. The sharp, acrid scent of the drains gave us a headache. She had thick skin to handle the acrid remarks thrown at her. So next time something has a sharp, unpleasant taste or smell, why not use the word acrid instead? Ephemeral. Ephemeral. Ephemeral means lasting for a short time or momentary transitory or fleeting. For example, slang words are ephemeral. We hoped that the country's harmony was everlasting, but it was ephemeral instead. Fashion is often ephemeral. However, that style survived through decades. So next time something is momentary or short-lived, why not use the word ephemeral instead? Ru. Ru. To ru means to regret or to be sorry about. For example, we advised him that he may rue the decision he is about to make. Martha rued the moment she forgot to close the window, because that's when the snake entered the house. My grandfather recommended to study hard because we would rue failing our examinations. So the next time you regret or are sorry about something, why not use the word rue instead? Garner. Garner. To garner means to gather or collect. For example, I garnered the courage to speak in front of the congregation. Within the past five years while working in the company, I garnered a variety of skills. Sherlock Holmes went to Paris to garner evidence. So next time you want to gather or collect something, why not use the word garner instead? Fringe. Fringe. Fringe means premature or borderline or decorative edging of a cloth. For example, 
we were so hungry that we felt as if we were on the fringe of starvation. The parade took place on the city's fringe. We searched for a fringe to match the curtain. So next time you refer to a perimeter, borderline, or a decorative edging of a cloth, why not use the word fringe instead? Vestige. Vestige. Vestige means remainder, remnant, or fragment of something that is disappearing. For example. The spokesperson advised that there was no vestige of truth in the rumor. Even though the teacher tried many strategies to convince the students to focus on their studies, no vestige for change in behavior was evident. Her actions removed any vestige of confidence we had in her. So next time you refer to a remnant. Or fragment of something that is disappearing. Why not use the word vestige instead? Gossamer. Gossamer. Gossamer means fine, thin, light, or gazy. For example, the curtains were covered with a layer of gossamer fabric. The costume had gossamer fairy-like wings. She wore a gossamer veil over her dress. So next time you refer to a gazy, fine, thin, and light substance, why not use the word gossamer instead? Deride. Deride. To deride means to mock, make fun of. Or to ridicule or jeer at. For example, the bullies derided the kid in the playground. Critics derided the policymakers' decisions. She was derided by her co-workers for her lisp. So next time someone mocks or ridicules someone else, why not use the word deride instead? Altruism. Altruism. Altruism means unselfishness, compassion, or the practice or belief of being selflessly concerned for the well-being of others. For example, they choose to volunteer out of altruism. The public wondered whether the organization's activities were incentivized by self-interest or altruism. There are many examples of altruism in history. So next time you refer to unselfishness, compassion, or the practice of being selflessly concerned for the well-being of others, why not use the word altruism instead? Confound. Confound. To confound means to prove a theory wrong, or to contradict, negate, go against, or counter. For example, the artist confounded the expectations of the people in his city. The scientist found evidence to confound the theory. The manager confounded the prediction and provided a new strategy forward. So next time someone proves a theory wrong, or contradict, negates, or counter something, why not use the word confound instead? Lamentation. Lamentation. Lamentation is an expression of grief, sorrow. Or regret, or sobbing or mourning. For example, the war brought great lamentation to the citizens of the country. We were emotionally engrossed in these scenes of lamentation. There was lamentation throughout the city when the team lost the World Cup. 
So next time you refer to the expression of grief, sorrow, or regret, why not use the word lamentation instead? Obiter. Obiter. Obiter is a judge, an arbitrator, a referee, or umpire, or a person who has authority in a matter or settles a dispute. For example, in the past, the oldest in their family was an arbiter of conflicts within their family. We searched for an unbiased arbiter to settle our disputes. James was the official arbiter between the parties regarding the matter. So next time you refer to a person who has authority in a matter or to settle a dispute, why not use the word arbiter instead? Overwrought. Overwrought. Overwrought means worked up, nervous, and agitated. Or exaggerated or over elaborate especially of a piece of art or writing for example the children fought among themselves and came to us overwrought and in tears the loss of her job the divorce and the passing away of her pet dog made her overwrought for weeks the critic said the author's writing was creative but overwrought. So next time when someone is worked up or a piece of art is exaggerated, why not use the word overwrought instead? Bucolic. Bucolic. Bucolic means relating to the pleasant aspects of country life or rural pastoral for example we admired the bucolic scenery as we drove through the countryside the artists displayed many of his paintings but i liked this bucolic one the movie was shot in a bucolic setting so next time something relates to the pleasant aspects of the country life, why not use the word bucolic instead? Crepuscula. Crepuscula. Crepuscula means active during the hours of twilight at dusk and dawn. For example, jaguars are crepuscular animals. The photographers were set with their cameras and waited patiently to take photographs of crepuscular insects in the area. Mark's crepuscular schedule led him to be asleep at noon every day. So next time you refer to an animal active during twilight, why not use the word crepuscula instead? Inert. Inert. Inert means lacking the ability or strength to move, or inactive, dormant, motionless. For example, we went to visit my father in the hospital, but he laid inert on the bed. If you combine yeast with this ingredient, it will be inert. The citizens were frustrated because of the inert system. So next time something is inactive or lacking strength or the ability to move, why not use the word inert instead? Constraint. Constraint. Constraint means a limitation or restriction. For example, Sarah could not attend the party due to financial constraints. Given the time constraints, we can only make 20 cakes. 
the building had an age constraint restricting minors because of the heavy equipment. So next time there is a limitation, why not use the word constraint instead? Lurid. Lurid. Lurid means sensational, melodramatic, or exaggerated, overdramatized. For example, the newspaper included the lurid details about the impact of the disease in the country. We were able to identify lurid reports about the incident. She gave us a lurid account of the theft. So next time, when something is exaggerated or overdramatized, why not use the word lurid instead? Transgress. Transgress. To transgress means to cross the bounds of a moral principle or standard behavior. Or commit an offense, misbehave, sin. For example, he never transgressed any rules of the company. The community leaders tried to understand why that mob often transgressed the unwritten social norms. She was tempted to transgress the law. So next time someone commits an offense or crosses the bounds of a standard behavior, why not use the word transgress instead? Acquiesce. Acquiesce. To acquiesce means to accept or agree to something unwillingly, but without protest. Or to give in to or to consent to. For example, Ron acquiesced in Harry's decision. The minority group felt intimidated and acquiesced in the plan. He wants to drive at night, but his father would not acquiesce. So next time someone gives in to something else, why not use the word acquiesce instead? Remuneration. Remuneration. Remuneration means money paid for work done or payment. For example, in the interview, I was asked about my expected remuneration for the position. The survey showed that employees were happy with the hours, culture, and remuneration at the company. Compared to the average remuneration in the industry, the amount quoted was much more. So next time you refer to payment or money paid for work done, why not use the word remuneration instead? Obdurate. Obdurate. Obdurate means refusing to change one's opinion or course of action, or stubborn or inflexible. For example, despite the options provided before her, she remained obdurate. Unfortunately, he was obdurate and met with this outcome. We have a group of obdurate members in the auditorium. So next time someone is stubborn or inflexible, why not use the word obdurate instead? Barrage. Barrage. Barrage means an abundance, outpouring, or plethora. For example, as the senator walked out the door, she faced a barrage of questions from the public. The minister received a barrage of criticism from the media reporters. 
As the business became successful, it matched with a barrage of phone calls daily. So next time there is an abundance or a pouring of something, why not use the word barrage instead? Winsome. Winsome. Winsome means appealing, charming, or attractive. For example, the winsome minister gained many followers. They gave their winsome smiles for the photo shoot. The couple looked winsome for the wedding ceremony. So next time someone is appealing or has a charming appearance or character, why not use the word winsome instead? Pyre. Pyre. A pyre is a stack of combustible material, usually for a funeral ceremony. For example, the family looked at the pyre with great sadness. The blazing pyre lit the full area. They built great pyres for the late brave soldiers. So next time you refer to a stack of combustible material usually for a funeral ceremony, why not use the word pyre instead? Lackluster. Lackluster. Lackluster means dull, lifeless, or lacking enthusiasm. For example, I was shocked that she was so full of energy a year ago, and now she seems quite lackluster. After many years on the job, he lost enthusiasm and his performance became lackluster. The movie's confusing plot led it to have lackluster sales at the box office. So next time something or someone is lacking enthusiasm, why not use the word lackluster instead? Absolution. Absolution. Absolution means a formal release from punishment or guilt or forgiveness or pardoning. For example, the Pope gave him absolution. After his absolution, he worked twice as hard to turn his life around. After five years of imprisonment, Jane received absolution from the sentence. So next time someone is granted forgiveness or pardon, why not use the word absolution instead? Tentative. Tentative. Tentative means not certain or fixed or unconfirmed or provisional. For example, we gave him a tentative date for our meeting. I notified my professor that this was my tentative conclusion. The major announced the tentative steps to respond to the pandemic. So next time something is unconfirmed or provisional, why not use the word tentative instead? Prodigal. Prodigal. Prodigal means wasteful, extravagant, or spendthrift. For example, we were grateful for nature's prodigal gifts. James found it difficult to get rid of his prodigal habits. Grace was a miserly lady, but her daughter was prodigal. So next time someone is wasteful or extravagant, why not use the word prodigal instead? Abyss. Abyss. Abyss means a seemingly bottomless, deep surface or chasm, or a gorge, canyon, 
a hole. For example, the truckers avoided the abyss ahead. The workers mistakenly dropped the equipment down the dark abyss. After the tragedy, she fell into an abyss, so she went to therapy sessions. So next time you refer to a bottomless deep hole, why not use the word abyss instead? Pliable. Pliable. Pliable means flexible, bendable, or easily influenced and malleable. For example, we searched for pliable material to cover the irregular item. The government's legal age limit helps with unwanted situations since teenagers have pliable minds. The children like to play with Play-Doh because it is pliable and can be bent into different shapes. So next time you refer to something as bendable or easily influenced, why not use the word pliable instead? Reticent. Reticent. Reticent means reserved, restrained, or not revealing one's thoughts or feelings readily. For example, Joe was reticent about his family life. Sarah was talkative while her sister Samantha was reticent. Even though the captain achieved many medals of distinction, he was reticent about his achievement. So next time someone is reserved, restrained, why not use the word reticent instead? Boycott. Boycott. To boycott means to refuse to have dealings with something or someone, or to shun, avoid, or snob. For example, the nurses boycotted their jobs to protest for higher pay. The group boycotted the products. They urged the public to boycott the elections. So next time someone refuses to have dealings with something or someone or to avoid something or someone, why not use the word boycott instead? Docile. Docile. Docile means submissive, compliant, receptive, or obedient and dutiful. For example, sheep are known to be docile animals. Most of the team members were docile in nature. We were surprised that the toddler was docile. So next time someone is submissive, obedient, dutiful, or receptive, why not use the word docile instead? Enshroud. Enshroud. To enshroud is to conceal or to cover. For example, we looked up at the moon, but then the clouds enshrouded the moon. I wore a long skirt to enshroud the injury on my leg. The student attempted to enshroud the truth by speaking indirectly. So next time you conceal or cover something, why not use the word enshroud instead? Abstain. Abstain. To abstain means to restrain oneself from doing something or to refrain, hold back, or desist. For example, we abstained from food for 14 hours per day. This month, I'm mustering the courage to abstain from chocolate. The doctor recommended he abstain from alcohol. So next time you hold back or refrain from something, 
why not use the word abstain instead? Grovel. Grovel. To grovel means to act in an excessively obedient or attentive way to gain someone's forgiveness or favor. Or to suck up, flatter. For example, the interviewer looks for an individual who would be critical about the project instead of grovel to management. Joe cringed at the way Brad groveled to the teacher. We saw the puppy groveling at the feet of the big brown dog. So next time someone or something flatters or acts in an excessively obedient way to gain the favor of someone else, why not use the word grovel instead? Purist. Purist. A purist is a person who adheres to or believes in the adherence of strict rules. Or traditionalist, perfectionist, dogmatist. For example, centuries ago, many communities included a majority of purists. In the book, The Scarlet Letter, the purists objected to the situation. As a football purist, that should never happen in a game. So next time you refer to a person who believes in the adherence or strict rules, or a traditionalist, why not use the word purist instead? Facetious. Facetious. Facetious means using inappropriate humor when referring to serious issues. Or, waggish, whimsical, flippant. For example, the professor requested that facetious remarks not be made on the discussion forum. The audience gasped when the speaker made a facetious comment about the president. The comedian was often facetious when delivering his monologue. So next time someone is waggish, whimsical or using inappropriate humor for serious issues, why not use the word facetious instead? Debility. Debility. Debility is physical weakness particularly due to illness or frailty or weakness. For example, we were concerned because his debility made it difficult for him to perform those tasks. After the accident, she suffered from general debility. After six months of a change in her diet and increase in physical activity, her debility was reduced. So next time you refer to someone's frailty, why not use the word debility instead? Plagiarism. Plagiarism. Plagiarism is the practice of taking credit for someone else's work, such as writing or design. Or piracy. For example, the first step before publishing was to check for plagiarism. The company worked with their lawyers to address the accusations of plagiarism. This is a software which allows educators to track plagiarism when students submit assignments. So next time you refer to piracy or taking credit for someone else's work, why not use the word plagiarism instead? Respite. Respite. A respite is a short break or rest from something difficult or unpleasant. Or rest, interval, intermission. For example, we had no time for a respite because the deadline was nearing. 
They took a respite from the journey through the woods. The shelter provided the homeless respite from their suffering. So next time you refer to a rest or interval from something difficult, why not use the word respite instead? Enigma. Enigma. Enigma is a person or thing that is difficult to understand, or a puzzle. For example, he intrigued the students because he was mysterious and an enigma. For a few months, the cause of the virus was an enigma to everyone. We hoped the enigma would disappear. And all will be known. So next time, something or someone is difficult to understand, or a puzzle, why not use the word enigma instead? Creditable. Creditable. Creditable means deserving public recognition or praise, but not necessarily outstanding. Or praiseworthy and commendable. For example, the team's hard work throughout the season led to their creditable performance. She received a hearty round of applause for her creditable performance. Even though the team did not win this season. Their performance was creditable for them to play in the next season. So next time something is praiseworthy or commendable, why not use the word creditable instead? Anal. Anal. Anal means to declare null or void, or to invalidate or notify. For example, the board of directors annulled the decision. Many citizens were furious because the president annulled the election. That group has the authority to annul decisions and strategies. So next time something is declared null or void, why not use the word annul instead? Placate. Placate. Placate means to calm down or make someone less angry, or to appease, soothe, or pacify. For example, my dad placated my baby sister by rocking her slowly while she rested on his chest. The officers tried to placate the mob on the street. Management placated the angry employees with attractive incentives for their work effort. So next time you calm down, appease, or pacify someone, why not use the word placate instead? Abstemious. Abstemious. Abstemious means not self-indulgent, particularly in eating and drinking, or self-disciplined, restrained. For example, her abstemious habits contributed greatly towards her success. He was very abstemious tonight, as he only ate a small bowl of salad. They were an abstemious, respectful group of individuals we admired. So next time someone is self-disciplined or restrained, why not use the word abstemious instead? Enunciate. Enunciate. Enunciate means to say or pronounce clearly. For example, 
The teacher slowly enunciated the words while she read the story to the children. James often drank to a point where he was unable to enunciate his statements. In preparation for the ceremony, I worked daily to enunciate my speech. So next time someone says or pronounces something clearly, why not use the word enunciate instead? Harbinger. Harbinger. A harbinger is a person or thing that brings a warning indicator. For example, Jonathan's interest in biking early in the morning was a harbinger that the entire family would be waking at 6 a.m. This was regarded as a harbinger of peace and joy. Investors thought it was a harbinger of price drops. So next time something is an indicator or a warning, why not use the word harbinger instead? Labyrinthin. Labyrinthin. Labyrinthin means complicated or maze-like. For example, her explanations were labyrinthine and confused the audience. They expected the journey to be long and labyrinthine, so they prepared well ahead. Even though the book's labyrinthine plot confused some readers, over one million copies of the book were sold. So next time something is complicated or maze-like, why not use the word labyrinthine instead? Tedium. Tedium. Tedium means monotony or boredom or dullness. For example, there was never a moment of tedium at the new startup company. My grandparents filled the evenings of tedium during the winter with songs and stories. Many children play video games to occupy themselves during the tedium hours of the day. So next time you refer to boredom, monotony, or dullness, why not use the word tedium instead? Boorish. Boorish. Boorish means awkward, unmannered, or insensitive. For example, the student was sent to detention because of her boorish behavior. John was often boorish and made few friends. Tom was a boorish character, while James was a compassionate character in the play. So next time someone is insensitive, awkward, or unmannered, why not use the word boorish instead? Duff. Duff. To duff means to take off, or remove an item of clothing, or to raise or lift. For example, as soon as they came home, they duffed their scarves. The congregation duffed their hats to her when she walked in. We duffed the first layer of bedsheets. So next time you take off or remove an item or clothing, why not use the word duff instead? Chauvinism. Chauvinism. Chauvinism means excessive support for one's own group or prejudice, jingoism, sectarianism. For example, the author discussed about cultural chauvinism in her book. The institution was known to oppose power chauvinism. The speaker raised many points about national chauvinism. So next time you refer to an excessive support for one's own group, why not use the word chauvinism instead? 
waft. Waft. Waft means to drift, float, or glide smoothly. For example, the children gazed in wonder as the bubbles wafted in the air. Pollen waft from one plant to the next. We followed the scent of Chinese food that wafted in the air. So next time something drifts or floats smoothly, why not use the word waft instead? Plumage. Plumage. A plumage is a bird's feather collectively. For example, the flamingo's plumage display shades of pink, red, or orange. The Indian peacock is known for its iridescent blue and green plumage. I noticed the difference between the plumage of the sparrows and the pigeons outside my house. So next time you refer to a bird's feathers collectively, why not use the word plumage instead? Resonant. Resonant. Resonant means vibrant in sounds or echoing. For example, Peter's resonant voice brought the attention of all the children in the room. We searched for a piano with a specific resonant tone. We heard a resonant pitch coming from the other side of the room. So next time you hear a vibrating sound, why not use the word resonant instead? Acumen. Acumen. Acumen means the ability to make good judgments and quick decisions, or sharpness, astuteness, accuracy. For example, the hiring manager was looking for someone with good business acumen. His political acumen was unmatched. Her financial acumen led her to success. So next time someone has an ability to make good judgments and quick decisions, why not use the word acumen instead? Cacophony. Cacophony. Cacophony means discordant loud noises or racket, discord, or raucousness. For example, we woke up in the middle of the night because we heard strange cacophonies. You can hear a cacophony of different languages in the supermarket. The cacophony of trucks and cars on the street disturbed the residents. So next time you refer to discordant loud noises, why not use the word cacophony instead? Whitewash. Whitewash. To whitewash means to cover up, camouflage, or sweep under the carpet. For example, her intention was to whitewash her past actions. The incidents were whitewashed by a number of media reports. They made efforts to whitewash the officer's record. So next time someone covers up or tries to camouflage something to conceal it, why not use the word whitewash instead? Objective. Objective. Objective means unbiased or fair or impartial. For example, the author made an objective analysis of the situation. 
While I was emotionally involved, my thoughts and actions were objective. She was praised for her professionalism and objective questions she posed to the interviewee. So next time someone or something is unbiased or unprejudiced, why not use the word objective instead? Bevy. Bevy. A bevy is a group of people or things of a particular kind. Or a troop or cluster. For example, we saw a bevy of soldiers standing on the ship. We recognized the bevy of officers by their white uniforms. Once I logged in, I saw a bevy of folders on the desktop. So next time you refer to a group of people or things of a particular kind, why not use the word bevy instead? Laceration. Laceration. A laceration is a deep cut in the skin or flesh or tearing. For example, he suffered lacerations on his leg. The team of doctors investigated the cause of the lacerations. She feared that after the lacerations healed, her performance would decline. So next time you refer to a deep tearing in the flesh or skin, why not use the word laceration instead? Diatribe. Diatribe. A diatribe is a bitter verbal attack against someone or something. Or harangue, tirade, verbal onslaught. For example, the students launched a diatribe against the administration. The author's diatribe in her book was well talked about among the congregation. The disgruntled customer's Facebook diatribe was investigated. So the next time you refer to a verbal onslaught or a bitter verbal attack against someone or something, why not use the word diatribe instead? Acerbic. Acerbic. Acerbic means sharp, biting, or caustic, particularly about a comment. Or sardonic or scathing. For example, he was hurt by Tim's acerbic comments. The debater was known for his acerbic wit. She did not have many friends because of her acerbic tongue. So next time you refer to a sharp, biting comment, why not use the word acerbic instead? Falter. Falter. To falter means to stumble, stammer, hesitate, or delay. Or lose strength or move unsteadily as if with lack of confidence. For example, she faltered as she said my friend's name. Tom faltered when he heard the remark. He was going at consistent speed but suddenly faltered. So next time someone stumbles, stammers, loses strength or momentum, why not use the word falter instead? Acolyte. Acolyte. Acolyte means assistant or follower. For example, the president's acolytes were loyal and alert. 
the acolyte brought a glass of sparkling water into the room. The acolytes wore uniforms. So next time someone is a leader's assistant or follower, why not use the word acolyte instead? Resolution. Resolution. Resolution means a firm decision to do or not to do something, or an intention or resolve. For example, despite her resolution to refrain from eating sweets, Holly felt her temptation for cupcakes rising. We made a resolution to eat a healthy diet daily. They unanimously agreed on the resolution. So next time you or someone made a firm decision to do or not to do something, why not use the word resolution instead? Bombastic. Bombastic. Bombastic means pompous, ranting, high-sounding but with a little meaning. For example. Every Sunday, the neighbor play bombastic music. Aaron's script was bombastic, while Jason's script was meaningful. We were surprised that the manager spoke in a bombastic manner. So next time someone is ranting or pompous, why not use the word bombastic instead? Harangue. Harangue. A harangue is a long, aggressive speech or lecture, or a tirade. For example, they listened with bent heads to their parents' harangue. The disobedient students were subjected to a five-minute harangue from the principal. The officer was in a good mood, so decided not to deliver a harangue to the children. So next time you refer to a long, aggressive lecture, why not use the word harangue instead? Acrophobia. Acrophobia. Acrophobia means fear of heights. For example. Due to her acrophobia, she refused to climb the mountain with us. I live in an apartment on the ground floor because of my acrophobia. Some argue that acrophobia is an instinct found in many mammals, including humans. So next time someone has a fear of heights, why not use the word acrophobia instead? Naughty. Naughty. Naughty means full of knots, or complex, complicated, or difficult to solve. For example, even though it was a straightforward case, he tried to make it appear as a naughty problem. She built a forum to discuss naughty topics. Mom entangled her fingers in her six-year-old's knotty hair. So next time something is complicated or full of knots, why not use the word knotty instead? Lampoon. Lampoon. To lampoon means to publicly criticize someone or something with sarcasm. Or to make fun of, ridicule, mock. For example, the users of the platform lampooned him about the incident. The newspaper's front page often displayed cartoons that lampooned the public figures on issues of the day. She was mercilessly lampooned for her pronunciation, that she laughed at herself publicly.
she was mercilessly lampooned for mispronunciation of the words. So next time someone makes fun of something or someone else publicly, why not use the word lampoon instead? Blunderbuss. Blunderbuss. A blunderbuss is a clumsy, blundering person, or a type of gun. For example, my family knew I was a blunderbuss. The officer took out the blunderbuss when he heard a loud noise in the middle of the night. He made it known to everyone that he was a blunderbuss. So next time you refer to a clumsy person or a specific type of gun, why not use the word blunderbuss instead? Endow. Endow. To endow means to provide with money, asset, quality, or ability, or to finance, fund, give money to what? For example, the fictional novel was endowed with several adventurers. Thor has been endowed with immense strength and durability. She was an alumni. Who endowed a library for the school? So next time someone is provided with a quality asset or donate money to what something, why not use the word endow instead? Agog. Agog. Agog means excited or curious to hear or see something, or impatient or in suspense. For example, we are agog to know who will be the winner. They were agog to hear what took place in the city. Mark loves traveling and is agog to see the Grand Canyon. So next time someone is excited or curious to hear or see something, why not use the word agog instead? Recluse. Recluse. Recluse means someone who lives a solitary life away from others, or hermit, ascetic. For example, many reporters wanted to interview the wise recluse. After his wife died, he lived the rest of his life as a recluse in a tiny house at the top of the mountain. When I spoke with the old recluse. I found her very friendly and funny. So next time, someone who lives a solitary life away from others, why not use the word recluse instead? Purloin. Purloin. Purloin means to steal, rob, or embezzle. For example. Pain goaded him to purloin the medicine from the pharmacy. We overheard him upbraid his sons for purloining money from the jar. We do not condone purloining. So next time someone steals or embezzles something, why not use the word purloin instead? Servile. Servile. Servile means excessively willing to please others, submissive, or obsequious. For example, the servile waiter placed the book on the table and left the room with her head looking downward and a constant smile on her face. The group was servile to people in power. We were amazed at the action of the servile businessman. So next time someone is excessively obedient or attentive to someone else with the intent to please, why not use the word servile instead? Gaff. 
gaffe. A gaffe means an intentional remark causing embarrassment to the person who said the remark, or slip, blunder, mistake. For example, yesterday I made a gaffe at the office. Tom made an unforgivable gaffe asking if Jenny was expecting a child. Her face flushed with embarrassment as she made a gaffe in front of her crush. So next time there is an unintentional slip or blunder made, why not use the word gaffe instead? Penury. Penury. Penury means extreme poverty or destitution, pennilessness. For example, the program aims to alleviate penury in the villages. Penury was rife despite the policies put in place one year ago. The hapless victims of war found it difficult to come out of penury. So next time you refer to extreme poverty or pennilessness, why not use the word penury instead? Hapless. Hapless. Hapless means unlucky or unfortunate. For example, the hapless drivers were stuck in traffic because of the fallen tree. The hapless victims of war found it difficult to come out of poverty. The hapless consumers were fooled by the businessmen's deceitful tactics. So next time someone is unlucky, why not use the word hapless instead? Espouse. Espouse. To espouse means to promote, support, or to adopt or take up. For example, the professors espoused the scientific theory. The politician espoused the policy to increase the minimum wage. The members of the group espouse values of freedom and equality. So next time someone promotes or supports something, why not use the word espouse instead? Timorous. Timorous. Timorous means fearful, cowardly, or faint-hearted. For example, he often spoke with a timorous voice. The timorous squirrel ran quickly towards the bushes. They were certainly a timorous group at the gathering. So next time someone is fearful or cowardly, why not use the word timorous instead? Metal. Metal. Metal means courage, bravery, tenacity, or fortitude. For example, the firefighters were lauded for their metal and service. The article praised the metal of the volunteer group and described their work. We wore white to commemorate the metal of the proletarian soldiers. So next time you refer to the courage, bravery, and tenacity of something or someone, why not use the word metal instead? Rigor. Rigor. Rigor means thoroughness or strictness. For example, the engineers worked with rigor and precision on the project. The professor explained with simplicity 
yet kept the mathematical rigor involved in the solution. We lost points because Alice lacked rigor. So next time you refer to the thoroughness or strictness of something, why not use the word rigor instead? Dyspeptic. Dyspeptic. Dyspeptic means having indigestion or consequent irritability, or irritable, snappish, bad-tempered. For example, a few patients who had dyspeptic symptoms were undergoing the procedure. The dyspeptic old man found it difficult to make friends. Within the dyspeptic belly of the city, there was a large market of cheap goods and services, with unswept streets. So next time you refer to someone having indigestion or consequent irritability, or being snappish or irritable, why not use the word dyspeptic instead? Overt. Overt. Overt means not a secret, or open, not hidden. For example, the dog's overt aggression alarmed the child. The residents were terrified by the gang's overt violence on the streets. His overt interest in the software caused the salesman to give him a deal. So next time something is open or not hidden, why not use the word overt instead? Irate. Irate. Irate means very angry or furious. For example, management tried to placate the irate employees with attractive incentives for their work effort. The irate customer complained about the services and fees. The irate caller yelled and accused the host of discrimination. So next time someone is very angry or furious, why not use the word irate instead? Fortitude. Fortitude. Fortitude means courage and bravery during adversity, or strength of character, firmness of purpose. For example, the captain praised the firefighters for their fortitude. The day commemorated the fortitude of the proletarian soldiers. The article emphasized the fortitude and tenacity of the volunteer group in the organization. So next time you refer to someone's courage and bravery during adversity, why not use the word fortitude instead? Lummox. Lummox. A lummox is a clumsy person. For example, the lummox bumped into the table five times. The lummox just walked on the freshly cemented walkway. The chubby lummox smiled at us with innocent eyes. So next time you refer to a clumsy person, why not use the word lummox instead? Onerous. Onerous. Onerous means burdensome, oppressive, or exhausting. For example, we compensated the laborers for their onerous work at the construction site. He explained his onerous delivery schedule to us.
James completed the onerous errands before leaving for vacation. So next time something is burdensome, oppressive, or exhausting, why not use the word onerous instead? Natty. Natty. Natty means smart, fashionable, or dapper, neat. For example, he wore a natty suit for the wedding. She looked gorgeous in her natty dress. I searched for a natty blue blazer for my dad. So next time something is smart, fashionable, why not use the word natty instead? Irrevocable. Irrevocable. Irrevocable means irreversible, irreparable, or unchangeable. For example, she advised the public about the irrevocable decision made in Parliament. They tried to enforce irrevocable laws. He tried to find a way out of the irrevocable course of his life. So next time something is unchangeable or irreversible, why not use the word irrevocable instead? Unequivocal. Unequivocal. Unequivocal means clear, unambiguous, or indisputable. For example, the company has been unequivocal about its view on the environmental issue. The party received unequivocal support from the organization. The message was unequivocal about its disapproval on violence. So next time, when something is unclear or unambiguous, why not use the word unequivocal instead? Precinct. Precinct. A precinct is an area or district of a city or region. For example, the officer ran a criminal check at the precinct. The downtown precinct was busy yet exquisite. The protest occurred within a mile of the precinct. So next time you refer to the area or district of a city, why not use the word precinct instead? Freeze. Freeze. Freeze means a decorative border, sculpted or painted, usually on the wall near the ceiling. For example, the older buildings were decorated with a frieze showing men with swords on horses. The architecture and interior design teams worked to find an appropriate frieze representative of the history of the place. The children made a frieze of cartoon characters. So next time you refer to a decorative border usually on the wall near the ceiling, why not use the word freeze instead? Prescient. Prescient. Prescient means having foreknowledge, prophetic, or clairvoyant. For example, the article included a number of prescient warnings. We were surprised that the episode created a decade ago appeared to be prescient of what is happening today. She felt she had a prescient vision. 
So next time something is prophetic, why not use the word prescient instead? Didactic. Didactic. Didactic means instructive, informative, or educational. For example, we gave the children didactic activities to complete for an hour. The professor used a didactic approach to the learning process. The learning opportunities included both didactic and observational activities and lectures. So next time something is instructive or informative, why not use the word didactic instead? Stratagem. Stratagem. A stratagem is a plan, scheme to outwit an opponent, or a trick, plot. For example, the thieves devised a stratagem to achieve their goals. My aunt saw through the man's stratagem five minutes after he conversed with her. Their stratagem was the claim that their friend was ill in the building and they needed to enter to help their friends. So next time you refer to a plan, scheme to outwit an opponent, or a trick or plot, why not use the word stratagem instead? Alibi. Alibi. An alibi is a claim or piece of evidence that shows someone was not at a crime scene. Or explanation, excuse. For example, the members developed a convincing alibi, but they were proven wrong. Her alibi is solid and backed by evidence. We wondered what was his alibi for being late again. So next time you refer to an excuse, explanation, or a claim that shows someone was not at a crime scene, why not use the word alibi instead? In size. In size. To incise means to cut into something or engrave, slit. For example, we bought him a plaque and got his name incised on it. During the lab experiment, the students were instructed to incise the rat's abdomen. The artist incised the pattern into the silver plate. So next time you cut into something, why not use the word in size instead? Ossify. Ossify. To ossify means to turn into bone tissue, fossilize, or to become rigid or inflexible. For example, the cartilages may ossify up until his 25th birthday. The system ossified and therefore lost connection with the people and everyday needs. The doctor observed the child's spinal structure and commented to another doctor about the rate at which the child's bones are expected to ossify. So next time you refer to something turning into bone tissue, or if something is inflexible, why not use the word ossify instead? Wane. Wane. To wane means to decrease in size, diminish, or decline. For example, support for the movement waned over time. As the job became monotonous, we saw the employee's enthusiasm wane. 
You sat on the chair and her smile waned. So next time something decreases in size, diminishes or declines, why not use the word wane instead? Sentinel. Sentinel. Sentinel means guard or sentry. For example, the sentinel wore a blue uniform. I applied for the position of the sentinel at the museum. There was a team of 10 sentinels at the event. So next time you refer to a guard, why not use the word sentinel instead? Peon. Peon. A peon is a praise, particularly in a song or a tribute. For example, the choir sang a peon at the start of the ceremony. We swayed our heads to the sweet sound of the pian played on the violin. That's my favorite pian. So next time a praise, particularly in a song or hymn, is referred to, why not use the word pian instead? Goad. Goad. To goad means to provoke, egg on, or to prod. For example, he failed to goad the group of listeners. The union goaded the organization into action. Pain goaded him to steal the medicine from the pharmacy. So next time someone provokes or eggs someone on, why not use the word goad instead? Lynch. Lynch. To lynch means to assassinate or kill by hanging or to criticize in public. For example, hundreds of years ago, many of the villagers were lynched by the violent mob. The CEO was severely lynched by the writer of the blog. The criminals planned to lynch the dictator. So next time you refer to someone being criticized in public, why not use the word lynch instead? Proxy. Proxy. A proxy is an authority to represent someone else or a representative, substitute, delegate. For example, my sister is acting as a proxy for me for this event. James appointed his son as his proxy to attend and vote for him. We searched for a proxy for the performance indicator. So next time you refer to a representative, substitute, delegate, why not use the word proxy instead? Illuminate. Illuminate. To illuminate means to light up, brighten, or clarify. For example, a string of lights illuminated the balcony at night. We were illuminated by the teacher on this particular topic. The data provided evidence to illuminate us on the effects of the drug. So next time something lights up or clarifies something else, why not use the word illuminate instead? Quam. Quam. 
Quam means hesitation, doubt, or fear. For example, the company fired the employee with no qualms about the twenty years he worked at the company. She gave no qualms about lying and deceiving us. Voldemort gave no qualms about disrespecting Dumbledore and stole the wand from Dumbledore's grave. So next time someone has a hesitation, doubt, or fear, why not use the word qualm instead? Nadir. Nadir. Nadir means lowest point or the bottom. For example, the prince's fortune was at its nadir. She struggled through the nadir of her career. The relationship between the two reached its nadir. So next time you refer to the lowest point or bottom of something, why not use the word nadir instead? Meticulous. Meticulous. Meticulous means very careful, showing great attention to detail, or scrupulous, diligent. For example, Mark walked with a bottle of hand sanitizer because he was meticulous about hygiene and cleanliness. They conducted the research with meticulous attention to detail. The meticulous worker found the difference in sales. So next time someone is very careful, showing great attention to detail, scrupulous or diligent, why not use the word meticulous instead? Impasse. Impasse. An impasse is a situation where no progress seems possible. Or deadlock, stalemate. For example, the negotiations between the parties reached an impasse. We are at an impasse here because they are unreasonable in their demands. We waited months before the political impasse was over. So next time there is a situation where no progress seems possible, why not use the word impasse instead? Resplendent. Resplendent. Resplendent means glittering, glowing, or magnificent, splendid. For example, the queen looked resplendent in the golden dress. We blushed as we saw him resplendent in his uniform. As sunlight glistened on the icy peaks, the resplendent mountains sparkled from a distance. So next time something glitters or glows, why not use the word resplendent instead? Halcyon. Halcyon. Halcyon means peaceful and happy, especially referring to a period of time or weather. Or calm. For example, my grandfather reminisced about the halcyon days of his youth. The governor talked about halcyon days of outdoor activity in summer after the pandemic restrictions would be lifted. Whenever she struggled, she closed her eyes and thought about halcyon days with her loving family. So next time you refer to a peaceful and happy period, why not use the word halcyon instead? Degradation. Degradation. Degradation means deterioration or humiliation. For example, 
The past decade showed evidence of environmental degradation. After the incident, he felt a sense of degradation. Such consistent behavior led to the degradation of the culture. So next time you refer to the deterioration or humiliation of something or someone, why not use the word degradation instead? Banal. Banal. Banal means lacking originality or common, dull. For example, even though my story was banal, mom said she enjoyed it. The interviewer was not impressed by the banal response from the interviewee. The film did not do too well at the box office because the audience thought it was rather banal. So next time something lacks originality, is common or dull, why not use the word banal instead? Salacious. Salacious. Salacious means obscene, indecent, or lecherous. For example, the movie included salacious content and was inappropriate for children to look at. The interest in the salacious stories was widespread. The novel was filled with salacious details of the relationship between Julia and Jonathan. So next time something is obscene, indecent, or lecherous, why not use the word salacious instead? Lugubrious. Lugubrious. Lugubrious means looking or sounding sad and gloomy, or dismal, mournful. For example, we were concerned because she had a long, lugubrious face for the entire evening. Everyone looked at Christopher Robin with lugubrious eyes. We can tell he was in a lugubrious mood because he did not want to talk to anyone. So next time someone is dismal or mournful, why not use the word lugubrious instead? Innocuous. Innocuous. Innocuous means harmless, non-injurious, or inoffensive. For example, the evidence showed that the drug had an innocuous effect on the mental health of the patient. The garden had a few innocuous plants and fungus. Her innocuous comment was quickly lost in the discussion. So next time something is harmless or inoffensive, why not use the word innocuous instead? Cosset. Cosset. To cosset means to overindulgently protect someone. Or to indulge, pamper. For example... The senators cosseted the firms which funded their political campaigns. The manager seemed to cosset her employees. The boy was cosseted by his family. So next time someone overindulgently protects someone else or pampers someone else, why not use the word cosset instead? Verdant. Verdant. Verdant means grassy or lush, rich, flourishing. For example, we enjoyed our walks in the verdant countryside. We saw the verdant pastures from the hills. 
The verdant setting was therapeutic. So next time something is grassy, why not use the word verdant instead? Allay. Allay. To allay means to lessen, reduce, diminish, or alleviate. For example, we did what we could to allay my grandmother's fears about a thief in the neighborhood. What Mark said helped allay any suspicion about the matter. We nibbled on raisins and nuts to allay our hunger. So next time something lessens or alleviates something else, why not use the word allay instead? Garble. Garble. To garble means to muddle, distort, or confuse. For example, the symptoms caused my grandfather to garble his sentences. The poor internet connection garbled my mom's voice, so we postponed our discussion for later. We could not understand the message because it was garbled due to connection issues. So next time something is confused, muddled or distorted, why not use the word garble instead? Languish. Languish. To languish means to weaken, to lose or grow weak. For example, the protesters on the street began to languish in the heat after many hours. The unsold animals languished in the shop. It did not rain for weeks, so the plants languished and died in the fields. So next time something weakens something else, why not use the word languish instead? Discord. Discord. Discord means disagreement, dispute, or lacking harmony. For example, we were made aware of the discord between the sisters. The composer rewrote the song because she thought there was discord in the music. The mediator helped resolve the discord between the two parties. So next time there is a disagreement or something lacks harmony, why not use the word discord instead? Indolence. Indolence. Indolence means laziness or idleness, inactivity, or slothfulness. For example, there is rampant indolence among children these days. She admitted that her failure was due to her own indolence. Parents tried inculcating diligence in the children while eradicating indolence. So next time you refer to laziness, idleness, or inactivity, why not use the word indolence instead? Caucus. Caucus. A caucus is a type of private political meeting or assembly. For example, the political party's caucus is on Thursday night. The caucus takes place every three months. They discussed this issue this morning in the caucus, which took place in the town hall. So next time you refer to a type of private political meeting or assembly, why not use the word caucus instead? Effusive. Effusive. 
Effusive means gushing, unreserved, or demonstrative. For example, the presenter of the award gave many effusive compliments to the winner of the award. He was effusive in his gratitude towards us. She was effusive in her praise for the opportunity she received. So next time someone is gushing or unreserved about something, why not use the word effusive instead? Palliative. Palliative. A palliative is a remedy that alleviates a problem but does not address the underlying cause. Or sedative, pain reliever. For example, my uncle took a palliative to ease the pain. An example of a palliative is aspirin. Zero interest rate for six months was a palliative for financial troubles. So next time you take a remedy that alleviates a problem but does not address the underlying cause or a sedative, why not use the word palliative instead? Exposition Exposition An exposition is a clear explanation of an idea or theory or description. For example, the professor gave an intelligible exposition of the motives behind the wars. The assignment was to prepare an exposition of the theory discussed in class today. Tom searched in many libraries for an exposition of the scientific theory. So next time you talk about a clear explanation of an idea or theory, why not use the word exposition instead? Tranquil. Tranquil. Tranquil means peaceful, calm, or restful and relaxing. For example, we sat by the lake and gazed at the tranquil waters. The frog hopped from one lily to the next, causing waves in the tranquil pond. My grandmother preferred to lead a tranquil life in the countryside. So next time someone or something is peaceful or calm, why not use the word tranquil instead? Canard. Canard. A canard is an unfounded rumor or gossip. For example, she was not bothered by the canards spreading about her because they were not true. Tom's jealous friend started a canard about him. The canard was proven to be wrong. So next time you refer to an unfounded rumor or piece of gossip, why not use the word canard instead? Pariah. Pariah. A pariah is an outcast, reject, or untouchable. For example, we squirmed as we saw him treat the family as pariahs. When my uncle married my aunt, for a few years my uncle was considered a pariah. The movie included the story of a young boy who was regarded as a pariah and his journey towards getting his education. So next time someone is considered an outcast, or reject, why not use the word pariah instead? Berate. Berate. Berate means to scold or 
criticize, or rebuke or reprimand. For example, the teacher berated the students for skipping school yesterday. He berated himself for losing the game. I expected to be berated for my tardiness. So next time when someone scolds or criticizes or rebukes someone else, why not use the word berate instead? Noisome. Noisome. Noisome means unpleasant or disgusting. For example, we held our breath as we passed by the Noisome River. The factory emitted noisome vapors, and the neighboring residents complained. We were amazed at the beautiful flowers that grew from the soil of the noisome swamp. So next time something is unpleasant or disgusting, why not use the word noisome instead? Wet. Wet. To wet means to stimulate or excite someone's desire, or to trigger, waken, or stir. For example, the advertisement did a great job at wetting my appetite. The trailer wet our desire to see the full movie in the theater. His explanations definitely wet our appetite to visit Europe. So next time something stimulates or excites your desire to do something, why not use the word wet instead? Gerontocracy. Gerontocracy. Gerontocracy is a state governed by the aged. For example, an example of the Greek gerontocracy was in the state of Sparta. A news reporter wrote an article questioning whether America was a gerontocracy because the 45th and 46th presidents were over 70 years old when elected into office. The gerontocracy made arrangements for upcoming proceedings. So next time you refer to a state governed by the aged, why not use the word gerontocracy instead? Mellow. Mellow. Mellow means soft, melodious, easygoing, or ripe. For example, the children were ready to eat the mellow watermelons. Michael Bublé is known for the mellow tone in his voice. His grandfather was a mellow man and the children loved playing with him. So next time something is soft, melodious, easygoing or ripe, why not use the word mellow instead? Alleviate. Alleviate. To alleviate means to lessen, reduce, diminish, or allay. For example, we sang to the child softly to alleviate his sadness from the loss of his pet. My parents performed this exercise routine to alleviate their back pain. The program aimed to alleviate poverty in the villages. So next time something lessens or reduces something else, why not use the word alleviate instead? Peruse. Peruse. To peruse means to read carefully or to scrutinize. For example, she perused the report in the early hours of the morning. He spent hours perusing the documents in the library. 
My grandfather used to sit in his chair in the veranda and sip his tea while perusing the newspaper. So next time someone reads or scrutinizes something carefully, why not use the word peruse instead? Fitful. Fitful. Fitful means intermittent, stopping and starting, or irregular, spasmodic. For example, she was apprehensive and woke up from her fitful sleep. The fitful clouds brought the right amount of sunshine and shade at the right times during our picnic in the park. The dog's hair moved gently as the fitful wind brushed onto it. So next time something is intermittent or irregular, why not use the word fitful instead? Quell. Quell. To quell means to suppress an unpleasant feeling or to calm, soothe, pacify. For example, the military quelled the violence and riot on the streets. They were given financial incentives to quell their fears. My parents quelled our doubts with surprise presents. So next time someone suppresses someone else or something, why not use the word quell instead? Nefarious. Nefarious. Nefarious means disreputable, criminal, wicked, or atrocious. For example, the nefarious acts of discrimination was published in the article today. The list of nefarious activities was long. We were shocked at the nefarious practices of water and air pollution at the factory. So next time you refer to wicked, criminal, or atrocious activities, why not use the word nefarious instead? Pusillanimous. Pusillanimous. Pusillanimous means cowardly, fearful, or timorous. For example, he often spoke with a pusillanimous voice and was afraid to stand up to his opponents. The pusillanimous squirrel ran quickly towards the bushes. They were certainly a pusillanimous group at the garden ring. So next time someone is fearful or cowardly, why not use the word pusillanimous instead? Quibble. Quibble. To quibble means to object to something trivial or to complain about, find fault with. For example, for 10 minutes, he quibbled over minor details. Let's not quibble over unimportant things. There were things to quibble about, but they were wise to spend their time more productively. So next time you object to something trivial, why not use the word quibble instead? Modish. Modish. Modish means trendy, modern, or fashionable. For example, everyone talked about the modish haircut he got yesterday. The author used modish jargons in her latest book. The company took a modish approach instead. So next time you refer to something that is trendy or modern, why not use the word modish instead? Aloof. Aloof. Aloof means detached, distant, or unapproachable. For example, the old man kept himself aloof from the young groups in his building. 
many people dislike politics and keep themselves aloof from political conversations. Jane was an unfriendly and aloof individual in our team. So next time someone is detached, distant or unapproachable, why not use the word aloof instead? Malady. Malady. Malady means disease, illness or sickness. For example, the young girl's future was disrupted by her parents' malady. There is an increase in cases of dengue fever, a severe malady in the tropical region. The team was devastated to hear about their captain's incurable malady. So next time you refer to a disease or illness, why not use the word malady instead? Potable. Potable. Potable means drinkable or suitable or safe for drinking. For example, we were advised that the water in the village was not potable. They brought bottles of potable water from the store. The committee headed a project to increase potable water supply in the countryside. So next time something is drinkable, why not use the word potable instead? Expiate. Expiate. To expiate means to atone for or make amends for, make up for or do penance for. For example, the bank robber was filled with regret and took all opportunities to expiate his actions. She volunteered to the community as an attempt to expiate her crimes. Rurouni Kenshin attempted to expiate the crimes he committed as an assassin by committing to protect the weak and not to kill anymore. So next time someone wants to atone for their sins, why not use the word expiate instead? Mercenary Mercenary. Mercenary means concerned only with making money at the expense of ethics. Or greedy, money-oriented, avaricious. For example, it was clear that he did this for mercenary reasons. The mercenary motives of the group led them to violence burglary and money laundering. The article discussed the actions and consequences of the mercenary ministers. So next time someone is concerned only with making money at the expense of ethics, greedy or money-oriented, why not use the word mercenary instead? Stipulate. Stipulate. To stipulate means to specify a requirement usually during a bargain or to set down, set forth, lay down. For example, my mom stipulated the measurements for the cloth. The school's rules stipulated that socks must be above one's ankles. The landlord stipulated that the tenant is liable to pay for the repairs. So next time you specify a requirement usually during a bargain, why not use the word stipulate instead? Hypochondriac. Hypochondriac. A hypochondriac is a person who is excessively anxious about their health or having imaginary illnesses. For example, 
He was a hypochondriac, so a quarter of his luggage included health shakes and pills. The hypochondriac looked healthy, strong, and fit as he entered the room. We learnt about fitness and nutrition, but was cautioned not to be a hypochondriac. So next time you refer to a person who is excessively anxious about their health, why not use the word hypochondriac instead? Vagrant. Vagrant. A vagrant is a homeless person who wanders and begs or a beggar. For example, we saw a vagrant sitting on the sidewalk eating a bagel. The shelter welcomed the vagrant for Christmas lunch. The child asked his mom to donate food for the vagrant for Thanksgiving. So next time, you refer to a homeless person who wanders and begs. Why not use the word vagrant instead? Pernicious. Pernicious. Pernicious means harmful, destructive, or detrimental. For example, the factory's chemicals had a pernicious effect on the people who lived nearby. Even though sweets, desserts, and chocolates are delicious, eating too much can be pernicious to one's health. It is argued that social media has a pernicious influence on society. So next time something is harmful, destructive, or detrimental, why not use the word pernicious instead? Utilitarian Utilitarian. Utilitarian means useful, practical, or functional. For example, the company focused on the utilitarian features of the product rather than the aesthetic features. His house had a utilitarian style. the management team decided to take a utilitarian approach. So next time something is useful, practical, or functional, why not use the word utilitarian instead? Lithe. Lithe. Lithe means flexible or pliable. For example, they tried to open the lock of the door with a lithe piece of wire. The audience applauded the graceful lithe dancers. The young animal was lithe and playful. So next time someone or something is flexible, why not use the word lithe instead? Sanction. Sanction. To sanction means to allow, give approval to, or to impose a sanction on something, or penalize. For example, some teachers sanctioned corporal punishment, while others did not approve of it. The parents refused to sanction the priest's relationship with their daughter. The government sanctioned the law relating to the abolition of slavery. So next time someone allows or gives approval to something, why not use the word sanction instead? Facade Facade a facade is the face of a building, particularly the one facing the street, or front, exterior. For example, the cottage had an intricately designed 
wooden facade. Behind his calm facade, he was infuriated by the actions against him. The Danish facade of the building remained unfinished for years. So next time you refer to the face of a building, particularly the one facing the street or the front of something, why not use the word facade instead? Quirk. Quirk. Quirk means an odd behavioral habit or peculiarity, idiosyncrasy. For example, Matt had a quirk of tapping his head when he was in deep thought. She mentioned her quirks in her introduction. He got his quirk from his father. So next time you refer to an odd behavioral habit, why not use the word quirk instead? Amass. Amass. To amass means to accumulate, gather, or collect. For example, my daughter worked for many years and amassed a fortune. James amassed coupons for his favorite restaurant. The researchers amassed enough data to make a robust analysis and form a conclusion. So next time you gather or accumulate something, why not use the word amass instead? Laud. Laud. To laud is to praise, applause, or to speak highly of. For example, the firefighters were lauded for their bravery and service. Many citizens lauded the environmental initiative. The author was lauded for her thought-provoking solutions she presented in her latest book. So next time you praise or applaud someone or something, why not use the word laud instead? Charlatan. Charlatan. A charlatan is a person who falsely claims to have special knowledge of something. Or a fraud, quack, trickster. For example, she was a charlatan who caused great financial loss to the family. He is not a doctor, but a charlatan. The charlatan was exposed and arrested for his crimes. So next time a person who falsely claims to have special knowledge of something, why not use the word charlatan? Ornate. Ornate. Ornate means highly decorated or elaborate. For example, we searched in many cities to get this ornate furniture. Jenny was excited to write on the ornate desk. We saw ornate patterns carved into the stone gazebo. So next time something is highly decorative or elaborate, why not use the word ornate instead? Virulent. Virulent. Virulent means harmful, dangerous, or noxious, highly infective. For example, a virulent form of the virus appeared in that part of the country. The media started a virulent campaign for the cause. The scientists noticed a virulent form of the disease. So next time something is dangerous and highly infective, why not use the word virulent instead? Chimeric. Chimeric. 
Chimeric means formed from parts of various animals, particularly of mythical creatures, or an organism made up of genetically different tissues. For example, Chimera is a Greek mythological chimeric creature which was made up of the head of a lion, the body of a goat, and the tail of a dragon. The chimeric mouse was light grey in colour. He drew a chimeric creature with the head of a snake and the body of a flying dragon. So next time you refer to something which was formed from parts of various animals, particularly of mythical creatures, why not use the word chimeric instead? Maladroit. Maladroit. Maladroit means unskillful, incompetent, or clumsy. For example, the young man was maladroit in social situations. Tom made a maladroit movement with his hands when riding his bicycle and fell to the floor. The maladroit handling of the case was the topic of discussion. So next time when someone is clumsy, unskillful, or incompetent, why not use the word maladroit instead? Limpid. Limpid. Limpid means transparently clear or plain and understandable. For example, I rewrote my ambiguous essay into a limpid version. The limpid water made it possible for us to see the coral reef below. His speech was limpid and effective. So next time when something is transparently clear, plain and understandable, why not use the word limpid instead? Nettle. Nettle. To nettle means annoy, irritate, or upset. For example, they nettled my grandfather when they treated him like an inferior. Uncle Jason was nettled because the loud music from the neighbor's party made it difficult for him to sleep. The children nettled her by calling her fat. So next time someone annoys or irritates someone else, why not use the word nettle instead? Elucidate. Elucidate. Elucidate means to explain or clarify or illuminate. For example, she tried to elucidate the seriousness of the matter. The professor elucidated the reasoning behind the event. Their work helped elucidate the issue. So next time you explain or clarify something, why not use the word elucidate instead? Pressage. Pressage. To presage means to foreshadow or to be a sign or warning of. For example, we did take note of the current incidents that occurred because they presage a war. The dark clouds, thunder and lightning presaged the storm. The elections may presage an economic improvement if investors were hopeful about the future. So next time something is a sign or warning of something else, why not use the word infallible? Infallible. Infallible means cannot make an error or flawless, perfect. For example, 
We are humans and we are not infallible. Ariana could not figure out how her mom had such an infallible sense of direction. The scientists worked to create an infallible cure for the disease. So next time you refer to something as flawless or perfect, why not use the word infallible instead? Broach. Broach. To broach means to begin to discuss a sensitive or difficult subject. Or to bring up, raise, introduce. For example, he gathered the courage to broach the matter with his father. The manager broached the suggestion to the board. We tried to figure out a gentle way to broach the topic with her. So next time you bring up a sensitive or difficult subject, why not use the word broach instead? Proletarian. Proletarian. Proletarian means ordinary or common. For example, we enjoyed the proletarian literature because we were able to relate to it. The director has a proletarian background. The day commemorated the bravery of the proletarian soldiers. So next time something or someone is ordinary or common, why not use the word proletarian instead? Plausible. Plausible. Plausible means reasonable, believable, or credible. For example, we investigated tirelessly to find a plausible explanation for the results. The parents grinned at their five-year-old son when his story was not plausible. It is plausible that the cat came through the window. So next time something is reasonable or believable, why not use the word plausible instead? Hasten. Hasten. To hasten means to hurry or to go quickly. For example, when we heard the noise, we hastened back to the room. As soon as she heard the announcement, she hastened to congratulate him. We saw the squirrels hasten to the trees when the wind rustled. So next time someone hurries or moves quickly, why not use the word hasten instead? Covert. Covert. Covert means not openly acknowledged or displayed, or undercover or hidden. For example, the government's covert operations protected the people from the attack. Police used covert surveillance to catch the thieves. James made a covert sign with his hands to signal John to move ahead. So next time something is openly displayed or undercover, why not use the word covert instead? Nuance. Nuance. Nuance means a subtle difference or a fine distinction. For example, there were a few nuances in their body language and facial expressions. The song's nuances made it a successful track. We admired the nuance in his performance, which were innate rather than coached. So next time something has a subtle difference or fine distinction, why not use the word nuance instead? Allure. 
Allure. Allure is the quality of being attractive in a fascinating and mysterious way. Or attraction, draw or pull. For example, my grandparents reminisced about the allure of the city. Diamonds and jewelry had no allure for her. It was the allure of the cottage that led them to stay longer. So next time something has an attraction, draw or pull, why not use the word allure instead? Circumspect. Circumspect. Circumspect means cautious, unwilling to take risk, or careful, guarded, wary. For example, they were circumspect when dealing with the businessman. His lack of credibility caused his mom to be circumspect about his recommendations. My uncle advised us to be more circumspect about the matters at hand. So next time someone is cautious or unwilling to take risks, why not use the word circumspect instead? Hedonist. Hedonist. A hedonist is a pleasure seeker or a person devoted to luxury and sensual pleasure. For example, the hedonist followed one trend after another. She committed herself to living a life of a hedonist. We were shocked when the hedonist announced he was working towards being more abstemious. So next time you refer to a pleasure seeker, why not use the word hedonist instead? Dane. Dane. To Dane means to lower oneself or to do something beneath one's dignity. Or condescend or stoop. For example, she did not deign to provide an explanation to the sweeper. They deigned an apology to the group. He did not deign to reply. So next time someone does something beneath one's dignity or condescends or stoops, why not use the word deign instead? Artless. Artless. Artless means simple, direct, or without deception, guileless. For example, the curious boy asked many artless questions to his grandparents. Heidi was an artless, sincere young girl. You were touched by his artless words during the ceremony. So next time you refer to someone who is without deception, simple or direct, why not use the word artless instead? Haughtiness. Haughtiness. Haughtiness means an air of supremacy or pride, arrogance, or snobbishness. For example, her know-it-all haughtiness irritated the rest of the class. The group cheered on as he delivered his speech with haughtiness. They rose to higher ranks in a short time, and their haughtiness rose as well. So next time someone has pride, arrogance, or snobbishness, why not use the word haughtiness instead? Hanger. Hanger. A hangar is a large area used to store aircraft. For example, the hangar was located on the west end of the building. We took a tour of the office, new planes and the hangar. 
Every day, the hangar is cleaned at 8 p.m. So next time you are referring to a large area or garage to store planes, why not use the word hangar instead? Blatant. Blatant. Blatant means done openly and shamelessly or undisguised. For example, we were saddened to hear the blatant lies they told about her. The employer was guilty of blatant discrimination. We noted the blatant disparity that existed in the education system. So next time something is done openly and shamelessly, why not use the word blatant instead? Enhance. Enhance. To enhance means to improve or to strengthen. For example, her charitable actions enhanced her reputation this past year. The changes will enhance the photograph. Vitamin C enhances the absorption of iron. So next time something improves something else, why not use the word enhance instead? Austere. Austere. Austere means simple, subdued, unadorned, or frugal. For example, when we moved to the town, we lived an austere life. James was an austere man who lived in a simple house in the village. That part of town was austere while this part was flamboyant. So next time something or someone is simple, subdued, or unadorned, why not use the word austere instead? Condone. Condone. To condone means to allow or accept a behavior that is morally wrong to continue. Or to overlook, deliberately ignore, turn a blind eye to. For example, the school could not condone such behavior. The group was accused of condoning violence. We do not condone stealing. So next time you overlook, deliberately ignore or turn a blind eye to something, why not use the word condone instead? LOL LOL To LOL means to sit stand or lie in a relaxed or lazy manner or to laze around or lunge for example at the cottage we lolled in our chairs and watched the ducks swim in the lake on sundays dad liked to loll about the beach nearby The children giggled when the dog's tongue lolled out. So next time, when something or someone sits, stands, or lies in a relaxed or lazy manner, why not use the word lol instead? Ambivalent. Ambivalent. Ambivalent means uncertain, unsure, or doubtful or indecisive or having mixed feelings about something or someone. For example, when the social media platform was initially introduced, the public had an ambivalent attitude toward it. The brothers felt ambivalent about the decision. While she was confident about many topics, 
she was ambivalent about others. So next time someone is uncertain, doubtful, or indecisive, why not use the word ambivalent instead? Insipid. Insipid. Insipid means flavorless, bland, unpalatable, or dull, uninteresting. For example, even though my cookies were insipid, mom said they were delicious when she tasted them. We didn't eat from that restaurant again because the food was insipid. The film did not do too well at the box office because the audience thought it was rather insipid. So next time something is flavorless, bland, unpalatable, dull or uninteresting, why not use the word insipid instead? Canonical. Canonical. Canonical means according to canon law or recognized traditional. For example, the ceremony occurred based on canonical rites. The team decided to take a canonical method to address the issue. We read the canonical works of the Europeans. So next time something is according to canon law, why not use the word canonical instead? Bore. Bore. A bore is an ill-mannered person. Or a hooligan, oaf, thug. For example, after years of hard work, determination, and consistency, the boar came off the streets and lived in an apartment. Tim was a boar whose clothes was always wrinkled. The boar got into a fight and injured his leg. So next time someone is ill-mannered or a thug, why not use the word boar instead? Rescind. Rescind. Rescind means to revoke a law or agreement, or to cancel or repeal. For example, the majority of the members voted to rescind the policy. James requested the bank to rescind any payments to that company. They submitted a petition to rescind the order. So next time someone revokes an agreement or contract, why not use the word rescind instead? Apathy. Apathy. Apathy means lack of interest, enthusiasm, or indifference or unconcerned. For example, Many were dispirited and apathy grew among them. An increase in student apathy can lead to increased school dropouts. She is usually enthusiastic, but after the tragedy we were concerned as her apathy grew. So next time someone lacks interest or enthusiasm, why not use the word apathy instead? Pause it. Pause it. To pause it means to put forward as a basis for an argument. Or to hypothesize or postulate. For example, he posited that there is a link between student engagement and student scores. The group posits that the forest fires are due to climate change. The detective posits a geographical basis for this occurrence. 
So next time you put forward as a basis for an argument or postulate something, why not use the word posit instead? Opaque. Opaque. Opaque means unclear, non-transparent, or not able to be seen through. For example, the bird sat outside the opaque window. My mom bought an elegant opaque vase for the bouquet of flowers. Dark smoke came from the neighboring building and made our car's glass windows opaque. So next time something is not transparent or unclear, why not use the word opaque instead? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Blasphemy is the act of speaking offensively against religious sentiments or sacred things, or profanity. For example, the book was under scrutiny for blasphemy. He was charged for blasphemy. We were shocked to hear the woman screaming blasphemies on the street. So next time someone speaks offensively against religious sentiments or sacred things, why not use the word blasphemy instead? Muse. Muse. A muse is a source of inspiration or creative influence, stimulus. For example, the public wondered who was the artist's muse. Her muse was from her past when she lived in Italy. We consoled her when her muse left. So next time you refer to a source of inspiration or creative influence, why not use the word muse instead? Apostle. Apostle. Apostle means advocate, supporter, or proponent, promoter. For example, he was known as an apostle of peace. She turned her life around to be an apostle of healthy living. Others were eager to hear the apostle's speech. So next time you refer to an advocate and supporter of something, why not use the word apostle instead? Labyrinth. Labyrinth. A labyrinth is a complicated path for which it is difficult to find one's way. Or a maze. For example, the last task in the Triwizard Tournament was for Harry Potter and the participants to find their way through a labyrinth. It took us some time, but we found our way through the labyrinth of her lies. The village is a labyrinth of narrow roads with small houses and trees. So next time you refer to a maze, why not use the word labyrinth instead? Burlesque. Burlesque. A burlesque is a lampoon, skit, or caricature. For example, Tom was the main character of the burlesque show. The audience was shocked at the message portrayed in the burlesque. That was the funniest burlesque musical we saw. So next time we refer to a skit, parody, or caricature, why not use the word burlesque instead? Hamper. Hamper. To hamper means to obstruct or 
to hinder. For example, this may hamper your efforts to find work in your field. The police worked tirelessly to hamper any potential violence. You must not wear clothing to hamper the movement when doing this exercise. So next time when something obstructs something else, why not use the word hamper instead? Gist. Gist. Gist means the main idea or essence, theme, the heart of the matter. For example, the gist of the presentation is that there will be an increase in sales by 20%. The speech was a bit confusing, so I took a few minutes to understand the gist of the speech. The gist of the policy is that seniors will get a discount. So next time you refer to the main idea or the essence of something, why not use the word gist instead? Fluke. Fluke. Fluke means coincidence, chance, or a stroke of luck. For example, Everyone was surprised at Tom's gold medal and said his win was a fluke. The car was greatly damaged in the accident, but the driver survived by fluke. Her consistent wins throughout the season proved that she won by talent and not by fluke. So next time something is a coincidence or chance, why not use the word fluke instead? Ethos. Ethos. Ethos is the spirit of a period, community, or culture that results from its beliefs and aspirations. Or character, spirit, prevailing tendency. For example, social media contributes greatly to the ethos of the current decade. The ethos of the restaurant was fresh food and great customer service. Her actions threatened the ethos of the family. So next time you refer to the spirit of a community, an era, or culture, or the spirit of something, why not use the word ethos instead? Amity. Amity. Amity is friendship or peace and harmony. For example, the treaty aimed to improve the amity between the nations. The students worked in amity to succeed in their group project. The family came together in Amity for Thanksgiving dinner. So next time you refer to friendship, peace and harmony, why not use the word Amity instead? Deplete. Deplete. To deplete means to use up, drain or lessen. For example, the water supply was depleted in six months. My grandfather depleted his bank account to pay for my father's tuition. The drug depleted the body's iron levels. So next time something uses up or lessens something else, why not use the word deplete instead? Longevity. Longevity. Longevity means long life or long existence. For example, my grandmother talked about some habits which led to her longevity. The scientists studied the relationship between diet and longevity. We prayed for happiness, 
peace, love, and longevity. So next time you refer to long life, why not use the word longevity instead? Hermetic. Hermetic. Hermetic means airtight, sealed and complete, or protected from outside influences. For example, he covered the container of liquid with a hermetic seal. They used a hermetic seal that was waterproof. They broke the hermetic seal of the jar to allow air to pass through to enter the jar. So next time you refer to something that is airtight, sealed and complete, why not use the word hermetic instead? Usurp. Usurp. To usurp means to take over, take possession of, or to take a position of power by force or illegally. For example, the Duchess tried to usurp the throne. The gang usurped the property and took control of the village. The new system usurped the functions within each family. So next time someone or something takes a position of power by force or illegally, why not use the word usurp instead? Hit the like and subscribe buttons for more videos like this. Malinger. Malinger. To malinger means to pretend to be ill, to avoid work, or to shirk. For example, the employee was sick and was not malingering. They malingered yesterday and their manager knew about it. They analyzed the characteristics of a person who would be more likely to malinger. So next time someone pretends to be ill to avoid work, why not use the word malinger instead? Hit the like and subscribe buttons for more videos like this. Liniment. Liniment. Liniment means soothing lotion to relieve pain. For example, the maids rubbed liniment on the queen's hands. When I entered the pharmacy, the scent of liniment was apparent in the air. The doctor treated her leg by rubbing liniment on it. So next time you refer to a soothing lotion to relieve pain, why not use the word liniment instead? Aeroglyphics. Aeroglyphics. Aeroglyphics are writing in pictures or symbols, or jottings, squiggles. For example, we observed the aeroglyphics carved into the walls of the pyramids. The scientists try to decipher the aeroglyphics written in the ancient books. The doctor's writing was incomprehensible and looked like aeroglyphics. So next time you see writing in pictures or symbols, why not use the word aeroglyphics instead? Consecrate. Consecrate. To consecrate means to make sacred or sanctify. For example, this place of worship was consecrated exactly 100 years ago. She consecrated her life to caring for the poor. They consecrated the church. So next time someone makes something else sacred, why not use the word consecrate instead? Abeyance. Abeyance. 
Abeyance means state of inactivity or suspension, a state of dormancy. For example, reports are in abeyance until workers return from vacation. The lack of funds left the project in abeyance. Violence and hostilities are in abeyance as the parties are negotiating terms of agreement. So next time there's a state of inactivity or suspension, why not use the word abeyance instead? Indelible. Indelible. Indelible means cannot be removed, erasable, or ineradicable. For example, the experience left an indelible impression on her perspective of life. They investigated the indelible ink used by their ancestors. Her good work made an indelible mark on her philanthropic reputation. So next time something cannot be removed or is inerasable, why not use the word indelible instead? Stoical. Stoical. Stoical means enduring hardship without complaining or uncomplaining, forbearing. For example, my stoical parents encouraged us to work hard with honesty. The book was based on the stoical courage of the people from that region. Many said that their stoical attitude kept them alive during that time. So next time someone endures hardship without complaining, why not use the word stoical instead? Lavish. Lavish. Lavish means elaborate, luxurious, or wasteful. For example, the lavish wedding fed thousands of people that night. She received lavish praise for the work she did. They worked diligently and long hours over the past 50 years to live a lavish lifestyle today. So next time something is elaborate or luxurious, why not use the word lavish instead? Yoke. Yoke. A yoke is a wooden piece that is attached to the neck of animals that pull a cart to plow. Or, subduing bond tie. For example, the people were under the yoke of the plantation masters. We lost our creativity because the department's culture felt like we were under the yoke of management's control. The donkey had a yoke attached to its neck. So next time you refer to a subduing, bond, or tie, why not use the word yoke instead? Candor. Candor. Candor means frankness, openness, or honesty. For example, the interviewee responded with candor and conviction to the questions asked. We admired his candor and confidence. Her candor was apparent and much appreciated by the team. So next time you refer to someone's frankness, openness, or honesty, why not use the word candor instead? Fecond. Fecond. 
Fecund means fertile, productive, or high yielding. For example, the region was known for its fecund lands. As the animal grew older, she became less fecund. My grandfather is proud of his fecund garden. So next time something is fertile, productive, or high-yielding, why not use the word fecund instead? Hit the like and subscribe buttons for more videos like this. Revere Revere To revere means to worship, admire, or think highly of. For example, the soldier was revered as a hero in his town. The budding scientists revered the experienced professor. They revere cleanliness and punctuality in their culture. So next time someone admires, thinks highly of someone or someone else, why not use the word revere instead? Inconspicuous. Inconspicuous. Inconspicuous means unnoticeable or subtle or unassuming. For example, Jim was inconspicuous in the crowd. The inconspicuous building was gray, just like the others. They looked for an inconspicuous place to have a picnic. So next time something or someone is unnoticeable or subtle, why not use the word inconspicuous instead? Supine. Supine. Supine means lying flat on one's back or prone. For example, they remained supine on their yoga mats. We saw the patient supine on the stretcher as the doctors moved her to the next room. While I sleep on my left arm, my brother sleeps in a supine position. So next time someone lies flat on one's back, why not use the word supine instead? Winnow. Winnow. To winnow means to filter or to sift out. For example, my grandmother winnowed the sand across the floor with her handheld fan. I read the articles many times to winnow the truth from the lies. As the car drove swiftly by, it winnowed the sand from the street and it blew towards our house. So next time you filter something, why not use the word winnow instead? Exceptionable. Exceptionable. Exceptionable means offensive, objectionable, or displeasing. For example, the film board removed the movie because of exceptionable scenes and plots. The writing was the talk of the town because of its exceptionable content. We agreed that his conduct was not exceptionable at all. So next time something is offensive or objectionable, why not use the word exceptionable instead? Maudlin. Maudlin. Maudlin means tearfully sentimental, often through drunkenness, or over-emotional, lacrimose. For example, after one drink, she was maudlin. I'm not up to hear his maudlin self-pity tonight. 
He was a maudlin, middle-aged Scottish man with a leather jacket. So next time someone or something is tearful or over-emotional, usually through drunkenness, why not use the word maudlin instead? Gratis. Gratis. Gratis means free of charge or at no cost, without payment. For example, the dinner was gratis for the performers. For the month of January, these publications are gratis. The first consultation is gratis. So next time something is free of charge, why not use the word gratis instead? Quaint. Quaint. Quaint means picturesque, charming, or unusual. For example, my great-grandparents live in a tiny quaint village in the Highlands. The novel described many quaint narrow streets where the protagonist had many childhood memories. The scent and beauty of the quaint country cottage filled my grandmother with great peace. So next time something is picturesque, charming or unusual, why not use the word quaint instead? Stifle. Stifle. To stifle means to suppress, suffocate or to hinder. For example, the volcano ashes began to stifle those who live nearby. So the residents evacuated the area. Mom stifled a chuckle and tried to keep a straight face when my brother walked into the room wearing the sweater Grandma knitted for him. The article explained that the new policy may stifle the progress in healthcare that is underway. So next time you or something suppresses, suffocates, or hinders something else, why not use the word stifle instead? Heterodox. Heterodox. Heterodox means not conforming to accepted standards or unorthodox, nonconformist. For example, orthodox and heterodox views were discussed respectfully in class. We read many books with heterodox perspectives. Many heterodox ideas are much more accepted today compared to centuries ago. So next time you refer to something that does not conform to accepted standards, why not use the word heterodox instead? Parasite. Parasite. A parasite is an animal that lives off the nutrients of a host animal, or a person who exploits others without giving anything in return, or a leech, bloodsucker. For example, the farmer gave the cows medicine to get rid of parasites living in the cows' stomachs. He was a parasite with only an interest of getting free food. The animal carried a dangerous parasite. So next time you refer to a leech, an animal that lives off the nutrients of a host animal, or a person who exploits others without giving anything in return, why not use the word parasite instead? Eddy. Eddy. Eddy means circular current or vortex swirl. For example, the eddies of the tornado brought great destruction. 
The river was calm with a few eddies at intervals. An eddy of air swirled past the village. So next time you refer to a circular current or vortex, why not use the word eddy instead? Truant. Truant. A truant is a person, particularly a student, who stays away from school without permission. Or absentee. For example, the teacher called the parents and told them that their son was a truant for five days this month. James was not a truant because he was interested in his studies. The truant was reprimanded for his actions. So next time you refer to a person, particularly a student, who stays away from school without permission, why not use the word truant instead? Garrulous. Garrulous. Garrulous means talkative, verbose, or loquacious. For example, Howard was garrulous, but his sister was reserved. I was garrulous, and I made many friends quickly. The garrulous child tried to convince us to study more. So next time someone is talkative, verbose, or loquacious, why not use the word garrulous instead? Abjure. Abjure. To abjure means to renounce, reject a belief or claim, or to disavow. For example, the addict abjured the drugs and committed to turn his life around. They abjured their faith when they moved to the new city. He abjured his job at the company to open his own business. So next time you renounce something, why not use the word abjure instead? Predecessor. Predecessor. A predecessor is someone or something that came before someone or something else. For example... President Joe Biden leads a different political party compared to his predecessor, Donald Trump. Model 4 captures better quality pictures in low light areas compared to its predecessor, Model 3. The new leader followed in the footsteps of her predecessor and focused on online learning. So next time you refer to someone or something that came before someone or something else, why not use the word predecessor instead? Intermittent. Intermittent. Intermittent means irregular or sporadic, fitful. For example, his intermittent impatience was one of his weaknesses. She came back with an accent which included an intermittent drawl. When the hamster made intermittent jumps, the children laughed. So next time something occurs at irregular intervals or is periodical, why not use the word intermittent instead? Leery. Leery. Leery means cautious, wary, or careful. For example, we questioned his motives and were leery of his proposal. I am a bit leery about the system. I'm leery about the articles written in that newspaper. 
So next time someone is cautious, wary, or careful, why not use the word leery instead? Underscore. Underscore. To underscore means to underline or to emphasize. For example, the captain underscored the bravery of the firefighters. The studies underscore that there is a positive relationship between student engagement and student outcomes. The experiences underscore that good always triumphs over evil. So next time you emphasize something, why not use the word underscore instead? Itinerant. Itinerant. An itinerant is a traveler or wanderer. For example, the itinerant returned home after three months. She was an organized itinerant. Both itinerants packed their bags and left. So next time you refer to a traveler or wanderer, why not use the word itinerant instead? Balk. Balk. To balk is to hesitate over an idea or to hinder, prevent. For example, we saw his facial expression when he balked at the thought of frogs on the menu. The economists strategized to balk the devaluation of the currency. Many people balked at going outside without a mask during the pandemic. So next time you hesitate over an idea, hinder or prevent something, why not use the word balk instead? Gouge. Gouge. To gouge means to overcharge or swindle. For example, we were shocked that during the pandemic, many airlines gouged the desperate passengers. The businessman gouged over $1 million from the retirement fund. She pondered her way to gouge investors out of millions of dollars. So next time someone overcharges or swindles someone else, why not use the word gouge instead? Nonplussed. Nonplussed. Nonplussed means confused, puzzled, and unsure of how to react, or bewildered, stumped. For example, we were nonplussed after hearing John's explanations. The public was nonplussed at the proposal. He was nonplussed at the response he received. So next time you're stumped or confused so much that you're unsure of how to react, why not use the word nonplussed instead? Extradite. Extradite. To extradite means to deport or to hand over. For example, the police extradited the thief. The government attempted to extradite the person to the next state. The country refused to extradite her to France. So next time someone is deported or handed over to a country, why not use the word extradite instead? Soothsayer. Soothsayer. A soothsayer is a person who tells the future, or fortune teller, prophet. For example, 
While walking in the market, they encountered a soothsayer and began to have a discussion. The soothsayer interpreted the incidents in Joanna's dream. The events that the soothsayer said would happen actually did happen a few months later. So next time you refer to a person who tells the future or a fortune teller, why not use the word soothsayer instead? Frenetic. Frenetic. Frenetic means wildly energetic or frenzied frantic. For example, the frenetic movement of the child was due to the sounds of the fireworks. The graph showed frenetic activity in that region. We heard frenetic screams from the neighboring room. So next time something or someone is wildly energetic or frenzied, why not use the word frenetic instead? Loquacious. Loquacious. Loquacious means talkative or verbose. I was loquacious, but my sister was reserved. Harry was loquacious and made many friends. The loquacious child tried to convince us to study more. So next time someone is talkative or verbose, why not use the word loquacious instead? Adversity. Adversity. Adversity means hardship, difficulty, or misfortune. For example, we admired her resilience while facing adversities. The old friends met after years and talked about their adventures and adversities. I am grateful to John because he listened to me through my adversity. So next time you refer to hardship or difficulty, why not use the word adversity instead? Palpable. Palpable. Palpable means can be touched, touchable, or perceptible. For example, her despair and gloom was almost palpable. There was a palpable bulge on the side of her dress. His honesty was palpable. So next time something can be touched or something is perceptible, why not use the word palpable instead? Sanguine. Sanguine. Sanguine means hopeful, especially in a difficult situation. Or optimistic. For example, Sarah's sanguine attitude brought some energy back to the team. John was not always sanguine about the child mortality rates. We felt hopeless and was relieved to have his sanguine comments flow in. So next time someone is hopeful, especially in a difficult situation, why not use the word sanguine instead? Opulent. Opulent. Opulent means wealthy, luxurious, or grandiose. For example, she was known to lead an opulent lifestyle. He saved up for decades to build an opulent palace. The museum housed opulent artwork and jewelry. So next time something is rich or luxurious, why not use the word opulent instead? Contiguous. Contiguous. 
Contiguous means sharing a common border, adjacent, or touching, neighboring. For example, even though two provinces may be contiguous to each other, the laws may be different. Wales is contiguous to England. The rose garden was contiguous to the pond. So next time when two things are adjacent to each other or sharing a common border, why not use the word contiguous instead? Hypocritical. Hypocritical. Hypocritical means insincere, pretended, or holier than thou. For example, they thought it was hypocritical to buy leather shoes when they were vegan and against animal abuse. The hypocritical woman said one thing and did something else. No one took them seriously because they were considered to be a hypocritical group. So next time someone or something is insincere, why not use the word hypocritical instead? Tout. Tout. A tout is an attempt to sell something, usually by pestering others. Or endorse urge. For example, we stayed away from that local market because if we go, vendors would tout their products as we walk by. The vegetable vendor touted me one dollar worth of tomatoes for eight dollars. He flew to Dubai to tout for investment. So next time someone attempts to sell something, usually by pestering others, why not use the word tout instead? Magnanimous. Magnanimous. Magnanimous means generous, big-hearted, or munificent. For example, the celebrity donated a magnanimous amount to the organization. We were extremely grateful for her magnanimous gesture. It was magnanimous of Jane to offer that we stay at her home for the weekend. So next time someone or something is generous or big-hearted, why not use the word magnanimous instead? Bulwark. Bulwark. A bulwark is a wall or barricade. For example, they built a dam as a bulwark against potential floods. The bulwarks of society are our laws and morality. I saved to create a bulwark against unemployment. So next time you refer to a wall, barricade, or something created as a defense against something else, why not use the word bulwark instead? Prevaricate. Prevaricate. Prevaricate means to speak or act in an avoiding manner. Or to be evasive, beat around the bush. For example, the student prevaricated and the teacher asked her to pause. She did not prevaricate, but was direct with her answers. The assistant appeared to prevaricate when asked about his involvement in the matter. So next time when someone is evasive or beats around the bush, why not use the word prevaricate instead? Marshal. Marshal. To marshal means to assemble in order or collect, gather. For example, 
My father asked to excuse himself for a few minutes to marshal his thoughts on the matter. The sports captain marshaled the members of his team. The police marshaled the crowd to reduce the chaos. So next time you assemble something in order or gather or collect something, why not use the word marshal instead? Vindicate. Vindicate. To vindicate means to declare someone innocent, free from blame, or to acquit, exonerate. For example, Melissa was vindicated from the theft charges. The evidence we gathered last week was sufficient to vindicate her. The inquiry vindicated the company from any wrongdoing. So next time someone is declared innocent or acquitted, why not use the word vindicate instead? Incongruous. Incongruous. Incongruous means not in harmony with something, out of place, or unsuitable or inappropriate. For example, I feared that I would look incongruous if I wore this dress. The new house looked incongruous in the old-fashioned town. The movie would have been better if a few incongruous scenes were omitted. So next time, when something is out of place or unsuitable, why not use the word incongruous instead? Acuity. Acuity. Acuity means mental or visual sharpness. For example, I found that the light beams of passing cars reduces my acuity while driving at night. After many years away from the field, he felt his mental acuity in the subject reduced. An eagle's visual acuity is so impressive that it can see a tiny prey from hundreds of miles up in the air. So next time you refer to the mental or visual sharpness of a person or animal, why not use the word acuity instead? Equivocate. Equivocate. To equivocate means to speak ambiguously to avoid telling the truth, or to evade, beat around the bush. For example, we knew she would equivocate. He often equivocated with everyone and avoided giving straight answers to a straight question. They accused the politician of equivocating claiming that she purposely avoided disclosing the truth in the matter. So next time someone speaks ambiguously to avoid telling the truth, why not use the word equivocate instead? Ignominious. Ignominious. Ignominious means shameful, dishonorable, or embarrassing. For example... Arthur exited the kingdom in an ignominious manner. Deception is an ignominious trait. The novel described the ignominious crimes of the group. So next time something is shameful or dishonorable, why not use the word ignominious instead? Scapegoat. Scapegoat. A scapegoat is a person on whom blame is placed for the faults of others or a victim. For example, 
the manager was made a scapegoat for the team's blunder. The scapegoat pleaded not guilty for the faults blamed upon her. The mayor was made a scapegoat for the economic downfall of the town. So next time you refer to a person on whom blame is placed for faults of others, why not use the word scapegoat instead? Homage. Homage. Homage means special honor or respect. For example, we paid homage to the brave soldiers. She said the poem was a homage to her parents. The movie was an act of homage. So next time you refer to a special honor or respect to what something, why not use the word homage instead? Recalcitrant. Recalcitrant. Recalcitrant means uncorporate and stubbornly disobedient, especially towards authority, or unmanageable, rebellious. For example, the recalcitrant protesters were arrested. The bank hired a third-party business to deal with recalcitrant debtors. The teachers found great difficulty in dealing with the recalcitrant teenagers. So next time someone is stubbornly disobedient, especially towards authority, why not use the word recalcitrant instead? Onus. Onus. Onus means responsibility, duty, or burden. For example, the onus for safety lies with the airline. The onus of care for the patients rests on the doctors and nurses. The policy aimed to transfer the onus of compliance to the government. So next time someone has the responsibility or burden of something, why not use the word onus instead? Voracious. Voracious. Voracious means insatiable or unquenchable. For example, their dog had a voracious appetite. Matt has thousands of books in his library because he is a voracious reader. The voracious consumers caused supplies of the product to drain. So next time something is insatiable or impossible to satisfy, why not use the word voracious instead? Mar. Mar. To mar means to spoil, disfigure, or impair. For example, her ambitions were not marred by hostility at her workplace. The journey was marred when our car got a flat tire. They called in a carpenter because the accident had marred the wall. So next time you refer to something being spoiled, disfigured or impaired, why not use the word mar instead? Alchemy. Alchemy. Alchemy means medieval chemistry or sorcery, enchantment. For example, the ancient book included secret recipes in the subject of alchemy. Nicholas Flamel was a famous expert in alchemy in the Harry Potter books. We admired the remarkable results in alchemy. 
So next time you refer to medieval chemistry or enchantments, why not use the word alchemy instead? Xenophobia. Xenophobia. Xenophobia means fear of foreigners. For example, John did not want to go to the party because he has a case of xenophobia. Mary felt her xenophobia began when she saw a foreigner hit her pet dog. She did not have a case of xenophobia, so she was easily able to socialize. So next time someone is fearful of foreigners, why not use the word xenophobia instead? Tumult. Tumult. Tumult means noise, uproar, or confusion, disarray. For example, the neighbors heard a tumult of falling furniture and shouting from the house across the street. The revolt left the residents in a state of tumult and terror. I screamed out with the hope that I could be heard above the tumult. So next time there is noise, uproar or confusion, why not use the word tumult instead? Adamant. Adamant. Adamant means unwavering, inflexible or resolute. For example, the manager was adamant about her decision. The scientist was adamant about the expected effects of the serum. My grandfather was adamant that he will not attend the dinner. So next time someone is unwavering or inflexible, why not use the word adamant instead? Decoy. Decoy. A decoy is a trap, lure, or bait. For example, the thief took the decoy from the bank and the police caught him. The note was a decoy to distract their attention from the real situation. James acted as a decoy at the front of the house while his friends sneaked out at the back to surprise my dad for his birthday. So next time someone or something is a trap or bait, why not use the word decoy instead? Stratum. Stratum. A stratum is a level, class, or a layer of a structure. For example, the pandemic affected every stratum of society. The work was laborious and difficult, so only a thin stratum developed the skills and pursued the field. Social media allowed all stratum of society to come together on one platform. So next time you refer to a level, class, or layer of a structure, why not use the word stratum instead? Maverick. Maverick. A maverick is a loner, individualist, or nonconformist. For example, Jim was a maverick who took a long time to fit into the team. She was an intelligent, mysterious maverick who attracted the attention of many people in the office. The maverick lawyer worked on the case. So next time someone is a loner, individualist, or nonconformist, why not use the word maverick instead? Fervor. Fervor. 
fervor means passion, intensity, or enthusiasm. For example, Annie worked on the assignment with great fervor. The fervor surrounding the show attracted a large audience. The Prime Minister spoke to the people with a nationalist fervor. So next time you refer to passion, intensity, or enthusiasm, why not use the word fervor instead? Peremptory. Peremptory. Peremptory means in a commanding, abrupt manner, brusque, or binding, absolute, incontrovertible. For example, the professor's peremptory tone of voice caused the students to tremble. The captain issued peremptory orders. He did not have many friends because of his peremptory character. So next time someone is commanding or something is binding, why not use the word peremptory instead? Gibber. Gibber. To gibber means to make meaningless noises or rattle, ramble. For example, they rolled their eyes as he gibbered to himself. Please stop gibbering and get to the point. We heard the children gibbering in the playroom. So next time someone rambles or makes meaningless noises, why not use the word gibber instead? Querulous. Querulous. Querulous means always complaining or pettish, touchy. For example, the police officers addressed the querulous group. Her tone was querulous and demanding. While John was querulous, Jane was easygoing. So next time someone is complaining or pettish, why not use the word querulous instead? Pracy. Pracy. A pracy is a summary or synopsis. For example, we read the pracy of the chapter and gathered the main points. I took a few hours to write a pracy of the book. It was mentioned in the pracy of the paper. So next time you refer to a summary of something, why not use the word pracy instead? Wistful. Wistful. Wistful means regretful, nostalgic, or yearning, longing. For example, we saw a wistful expression on her face as she talked about her childhood years. His tone was wistful and tears leaked down his cheeks. She gave us a wistful smile then walked out the room. So next time when someone is feeling regretful or nostalgic, why not use the word wistful instead? Fusillade. Fusillade. A fusillade is a long burst of gunfire or barrage, cannonade. For example, the police officers faced a fusillade in front of the bank. The channel reported that three people died from the fusillade of bullets fired last night. The senator faced a fusillade of questions when she walked out the courtroom. So next time you refer to a long burst of gunfire, why not use the word fusillade instead? Lethargic. Lethargic. Lethargic means sluggish, 
slow, or dull. For example, mom tried to understand why my pet was lethargic this week. I was lethargic after an hour of playing in the sun. She was depressed and lethargic during the day. So next time someone or something is sluggish or slow, why not use the word lethargic instead? Atrophy. Atrophy. Atrophy is to waste away, decline, or deteriorate. For example, the doctor said that her health is expected to gradually atrophy in the next few weeks if she does not complete the treatment. The living standards in the village atrophied during the pandemic. The teacher advised her student that his skill would atrophy if he didn't practice daily. So next time something wastes away or deteriorates, why not use the word atrophy instead? Meander. Meander. To meander means to stroll from side to side or to curve, bend, wander. For example, on Sunday evenings, the old couple meander through the parkland. The hikers saw the river meander into the horizon. Heidi saw the sheep meander through the field and up the hill. So next time someone or something wanders from side to side or curves or bends, why not use the word meander instead? Brusque. Brusque. Brusque means blunt or abrupt. For example, she was not very popular because of her brusque speech. The administrative assistant was brusque on the phone. His brusque tone surprised us. So next time someone's speech or manner is blunt or abrupt, why not use the word brusque instead? Hidebound. Hidebound. Hidebound means rigid in one's opinions or actions because of a tradition. Or fundamentalist, orthodox, conservative. For example, the result of the group's decision was predictable because the group was known to make hidebound decisions in the past. The hidebound speaker provided thought-provoking arguments for his views. I just came out of a hidebound meeting and I think I need a timeout. So next time you refer to a fundamentalist or conservative, why not use the word hidebound instead? Subversive. Subversive. Subversive means seeing to undermine the power or authority of a system, or disruptive, insurgent. For example, the subversive protesters were arrested. Subversive forces gained support in the region. The subversive article included negative comments about the political party. So next time something undermines the power or authority of a system or is disruptive, why not use the word subversive instead? Pedant. Pedant. Pedant means a person who adheres to strict rules and doctrines, or dogmatist, purist. For example, in Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix, 
Professor Umbridge was a pedant who overthrew the existing headmaster of Hogwarts, Professor Dumbledore. As a football pedant, that should never happen in a game. It was difficult to make progress in the situation because the pedant negotiator refused to change his ideas. So next time a person who adheres to strict rules and doctrines is someone you refer to, why not use the word pedant instead? Adroit. Adroit. Adroit means skillful or adept, dexterous. For example, he became adroit at using the software. The adroit debater arranged her answers with precision. My uncle was an adroit and determined social worker. So next time someone is skillful or adept at something, why not use the word adroit instead? Chicanery. Chicanery. Chicanery is trickery for a financial, legal, or political purpose. Or deception, dishonesty, fraud. For example, the article attempted to bring light to the political chicanery that existed. The team felt there was chicanery and investigated to find any truth in the suspicions. The bank had a team to investigate existing financial chicanery. So next time you refer to trickery for a financial, legal or political purpose, why not use the word chicanery instead? Ubiquitous 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 means omnipresent or found everywhere. For example, the product seemed ubiquitous because it was available in every country that I visited. Flies are ubiquitous in unhygienic places. Ubiquitous lights decorated the entire lane for the celebration. So next time something is found everywhere, why not use the word ubiquitous instead? Surreptitious. Surreptitious. Surreptitious means secret, especially something that is not approved. Or stealthy, clandestine. For example, the officers carried out a surreptitious search at the family's home. They used a surreptitious method to solve the problem. They had several surreptitious conversations at a meeting of a lunch. So next time something is kept secret, especially something that is not approved, why not use the word surreptitious instead? Benevolent. Benevolent. Benevolent means kind-hearted, warm-hearted, or magnanimous, altruistic. For example, the benevolent lady walked into the room with a smile and a bouquet of flowers in hand. His benevolent, compassionate nature made many of us feel safe to come to him with our concerns. The benevolent man donated to the children's hospital every year. So next time when someone is kind-hearted, warm-hearted, magnanimous, or altruistic, why not use the word benevolent instead? Gamble. Gamble. To gamble means to frolic, skip, or jump around playfully. For example, the toddler gambled at the sound of her favorite nursery rhyme. The sheep gambled across the pasture before dusk. We saw the lamb gamble towards the shepherd. 
So next time you refer to an animal frolicking, skipping, or jumping around playfully, why not use the word gambol instead? Obtuse. Obtuse. Obtuse means mentally dull, slow-witted, or stupid. For example, we were confused by whether he was being deliberately obtuse. She pretended to be obtuse when she was questioned about the matter. Even though I am skillful in finances, I must admit I'm obtuse in this field. So next time someone is mentally dull, why not use the word obtuse instead? Immutable. Immutable. Immutable means unchangeable, inflexible, or permanent, unyielding. For example, she advised that the public must not perceive the decision as immutable. They tried to enforce immutable rules. We are not immutable beings. So next time something is unchangeable, why not use the word immutable instead? Catharsis. Catharsis. Catharsis means purging of pent-up emotions or emotional release or relief. For example, his music is a means of catharsis for millions. The therapist advised the patient that the process of catharsis will have physical and mental health benefits. It is argued that violent games can benefit individuals through catharsis. So next time you refer to an emotional release or the purging of pent-up emotions, why not use the word catharsis instead? Inveigle. Inveigle. Inveigle means to persuade by use of deception or flattery, or to coax, cajole, lure, wheedle. For example, my cousin inveigled my uncle into letting us borrow the car. She did not want to inveigle my mother into the decision. The kids tried to inveigle me with a delicious cupcake. So next time someone tries to coax, cajole, lure, wheedle, or persuade someone else by using flattery or deception, why not use the word inveigle instead? Peerless. Peerless. Peerless means without an equal, unrivaled, or matchless, incomparable. For example, the dancer was praised for his peerless performance on stage last night. The peerless artist will speak at the conference next week to provide guidance to budding artists in the field. The company made millions in the first year because of high demand for its peerless technology. So next time something or someone is unrivaled, incomparable or unequaled, why not use the word peerless instead? Transient. Transient. Transient means short-lived, transitory or fleeting. For example, she recognized that her depression was transient and focused on her goals instead. The doctor advised to stop taking the medicine once the transient pain passed. The data demonstrated a transient nature of consumer demand for the good. So next time something is short-lived or transitory, why not use the word transient instead? Raconteur. 
Raconteur. A raconteur is a person who tells a story in an amusing and relatable way. Or a storyteller, narrator. For example, we admired him because he was a talented raconteur. I am no raconteur and I do not prefer to tell the story. She was a colorful raconteur who spoke at conferences, authored books and columns in newspapers. So next time someone tells a story in an amusing and relatable way, why not use the word raconteur instead? Verbosity. Verbosity. Verbosity means quality of using too many words unnecessarily or wordiness. For example, Henry's verbosity and charm won the heart of many. My essays are usually filled with verbosity, while my sister's essays are laconic. The verbosity in the articles lowered the newspaper's ratings. So next time something is too wordy, why not use the word verbosity instead? Dilate. Dilate. To dilate means to become larger, widen, or to enlarge or expand. For example, the pupils of her eyes dilated as she entered the dark room. Uncle Joe dilated about his interest in cars. The manager asked her to dilate on her experience in the field. So next time something expands, why not use the word dilate instead? Nascent. Nascent. Nascent means emerging young, just beginning, or budding, embryonic. For example, the bank considered businesses in the nascent technology industry risky. Investors were hopeful about the nascent renewables industry. He discovered a nascent talent among the mutants. So next time something is emerging, budding, or just beginning, why not use the word nascent instead? Echelon. Echelon. Echelon means rank, grade, or level. For example, Jessica belonged to the upper echelons of the fashion world. We saw him rise to the higher echelons of the company. The group worked hard to reach the higher echelon of military. So next time you refer to rank, grade or level, why not use the word echelon instead? Therapeutic. Therapeutic. Therapeutic means healing or remedial. For example, I find driving very therapeutic. Many seniors said that the music session has effective therapeutic value. The results proved that therapeutic effects were real and not only theoretical. So next time something is healing or remedial, why not use the word therapeutic instead? Strident. Strident. Strident means loud, harsh, or piercing. For example, the officer woke up when he heard a strident noise in the middle of the night. The couple complained because of the strident noise from the construction work next door. The teacher's strident voice echoed in the silent room. So next
next time something is loud, harsh, or piercing, why not use the word strident instead? Candid. Candid. Candid means frank, honest, or direct. For example, he was hurt by the candid remarks. I looked forward to hearing your candid opinion about the matter. The audience enjoyed the candid discussion between the speakers. So next time someone or something is frank, honest or direct, why not use the word candid instead? Malapropism. Malapropism. Malapropism means use of a word that is an incorrect word that sounds similar to the correct word. Or misusage, misapplication. For example, he laughed at himself as he thought of the many malapropisms he used when he was beginning to learn English. I searched through my essay to identify many malapropisms and to correct them. The kids giggled when they heard Grandma use one of her malapropisms. I have a great affluence in the family. They giggled and corrected her by saying, Influence, Grandma. So next time someone uses a word that is an incorrect word and sounds similar to the correct word, why not use the word malapropism instead? Luscious. Luscious. Luscious means delicious or juicy, succulent. For example, the table was filled with all kinds of luscious desserts. The children's eyes widened when they ate the luscious ice cream. I could not wait to have a bite of that luscious cake. So next time something is delicious, juicy or succulent, why not use the word luscious instead? Adulation 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 means excessive admiration or praise, or worship. For example, the politician gleamed in the adulation of his followers. She felt overwhelmed to receive adulation from millions of fans across the country. The book received adulation from many readers. So next time you refer to excessive admiration or praise, why not use the word admiration instead? Savant. Savant. A savant is a distinguished, learned scientist or intellectual scholar. For example, we listened to the interview of the savant on TV. The savant opined that the virus would mutate. I read the research paper written by the savant who won the global award. So next time you refer to a distinguished learned scientist, why not use the word savant in Compendium. Compendium. A compendium is a collection of detailed information about a particular subject or compilation. For example, the Britannica Encyclopedia was the ultimate respected compendium of knowledge decades ago before the internet. We searched for a book that included a compendium of his poetry. My grandmother read us bedtime stories from a compendium of ancient magical tales. So next time you refer to a collection of detailed information about a particular subject, 
why not use the word compendium instead? Phlegmatic. Phlegmatic. Phlegmatic means calm, controlled, or imperturbable. For example, I approach Jane to discuss my concerns because she has a phlegmatic nature. The phlegmatic young man was never pessimistic. The animals are generally phlegmatic unless you encroach on their space. So next time when someone is calm, controlled, or imperturbable, why not use the word phlegmatic instead? Ebullient. Ebullient. Ebullient means cheerful, very lively, or high-spirited, joyful. For example, the family gathering and bright summer weather put her in an ebullient mood. We admired his ebullient personality in spite of his difficult childhood. This chapter was an ebullient one, in contrast to the tragic chapter that followed. So next time someone or something is cheerful or very lively, why not use the word ebullient instead? Tirade. Tirade. A tirade is a long, aggressive speech or lecture or harangue. For example, the students launched a tirade against the administration. The author's tirade in her book was well talked about among the congregation. The disgruntled customer's Facebook tirade was investigated. So next time you refer to a long aggressive speech or lecture, why not use the word tirade instead? Serrated. Serrated. Serrated means jagged or saw-edged. For example, the scientists researched how the serrated stones were formed. We cut the bread with a serrated knife. The red leaf with a serrated edge bent downwards slightly because of the green caterpillar resting on it. So next time something is jagged or saw-edged, why not use the word serrated instead? Flippant. Flippant. Flippant means lacking a serious or respectful attitude or frivolous, facetious. For example, the teacher requested that flippant remarks not be made in the classroom. Jim made a flippant comment about the violence on the streets. Her flippant answers made her lose friends in the office. So next time someone lacks a serious or respectful attitude, why not use the word flippant instead? Nostrum. Nostrum. Nostrum means favorite remedy to bring about social reform or prescription or recipe for success. For example, the policy was a nostrum to keep the group out of the area. The media's bias was a nostrum for the political party's views. We were not surprised that they implemented a nostrum to solve the problem. So next time you refer to a favorite remedy to bring about social reform, why not use the word nostrum instead? Grouse. Grouse. Grouse means to grumble or complain pettily. For example, they groused about the office party. He sat in his chair grousing about his brother. The group of interior designers 
groused about the design of the restaurant. So next time someone grumbles or complains pettily, why not use the word grouse instead? Salubrious. Salubrious. Salubrious means good for one's health, healthy, or health-giving. For example, we moved to a salubrious area. The employer provided salubrious solutions for the employees. Demand for the salubrious plant increased. So next time something is good for one's health or healthy, why not use the word salubrious instead? Aesthetic. Aesthetic. Aesthetic means concerning beauty or art, or artistic or decorative. For example, we changed our discussion to the aesthetics of the presentation. The aesthetics of the room would attract many customers. They described various aesthetic options for us. So next time you refer to something concerning beauty or art, why not use the word aesthetic instead? Largesse. Largesse. Largesse means generosity or bounty, magnanimity. For example, we were grateful for her largesse. He decided to throw a party with great largesse. Sometimes her largesse exceeded her pocket and she went into debt. So next time you refer to generosity or magnanimity, why not use the word largesse instead? Impious. Impious. Impious means sinful, unholy, or profane, unrighteous. For example, the impious thief jumped through the window and stole all the belongings of the old bedridden man. The emperor ordered impious attacks on the neighboring emperor's land. The article described details about the impious crime. So next time something or someone is sinful, unholy, or profane, why not use the word impious instead? Turgid. Turgid. Turgid means pompous or bombastic, usually in language or style. Or congested, swollen. For example, the debris moved through the Turgid River during the storm. Carrie's Turgid writing was ineffective and lacked authenticity. The short film was far from Turgid. So next time something is pompous, usually in language or style, or congested, why not use the word turgid instead? Dilemma. Dilemma. A dilemma is a difficult situation or predicament. For example, I found myself in a dilemma while running in the woods. James' mom found a solution to his dilemma. The villagers faced a dilemma of drought during the month of June. So next time you refer to a difficult situation, why not use the word dilemma instead? Parry. Parry. To parry means to avoid, sidestep, or evade. For example, she parried the question with a smile and walked away. 
he parried the blow with his sword. Timothy parried the bullies by walking in the other direction. So next time someone avoids something, why not use the word parry instead? Extant. Extant. Extant means still in existence or surviving, remaining, not extinct. For example, the 17th century manuscripts are extant and located in a museum in Europe. Cockroaches lived during the times of extinct dinosaurs, but cockroaches are extant today. They took great care of the extant weapons from that era. So next time you refer to something as surviving, remaining, not extinct, why not use the word extant instead? Monolithic. Monolithic. Monolithic means uniform, large or massive, or inflexible or unbending. For example, in the middle of the city stood a monolithic historical structure. The monolithic movement had a global impact. They created monolithic categories for the places. So next time something is uniform, massive, or inflexible, why not use the word monolithic instead? Incarceration. Incarceration. Incarceration means put into prison, imprisonment, or confinement. For example, her husband visited her once a month during her incarceration. The supporters protested after the incarceration of their leader. Mr. Nelson Mandela's incarceration took place on the Robben Island Penal Colony. So next time you refer to imprisonment or confinement, why not use the word incarceration instead? Pallid. Pallid. Pallid means pale, usually due to poor health, or colorless, washed out. For example, we were concerned because he looked pallid. He was an old, pallid man who lived across the street. Her pallid face gleamed with sweat. So next time someone is pale, usually due to poor health, why not use the word pallid instead? Extraneous. Extraneous. Extraneous means irrelevant, unrelated, or not connected. For example, the editor removed extraneous information from the chapter. My nephew knew a plethora of extraneous facts about dinosaurs. She recognized the extraneous thoughts and quickly refocused her thoughts to the matter at hand. So next time something is irrelevant or unrelated, why not use the word extraneous instead? Ludicrous. Ludicrous. Ludicrous means silly, ridiculous, or foolish. For example, Sarah giggled as a ludicrous thought came to her mind. We chose ludicrous suits for the party and had a great laugh at each other. 
This may be a ludicrous idea, but I thought there is no harm in mentioning it. So next time something or someone is silly or ridiculous, why not use the word ludicrous instead? Supercilious. Supercilious. Supercilious means arrogant, behaving as if one is superior to others, or proud, haughty. For example, her supercilious know-it-all attitude irritated the rest of the class. They rose to higher ranks in a short time, and their supercilious attitude rose as well. The businessman looked at the mechanic with a supercilious air. So next time someone is arrogant, proud, haughty, or behaving as if one is superior to others, why not use the word supercilious instead? Tractable. Tractable. Tractable means controllable, manageable, or dutiful and obedient. For example, he was a tractable individual who was always willing to help. Our pet dog sometimes changed his behavior from tractable to unmanageable. The issues were tractable, so we finished the project on time. So next time something or someone is manageable or obedient, why not use the word tractable instead? Wary. Wary. Wary means cautious or careful. For example, they were wary when dealing with the businessmen. His lack of credibility caused his mom to be wary about his recommendations. My uncle advised us to be more wary about the matters at hand. So next time someone is cautious or careful, why not use the word wary instead? Burnish. Burnish. To burnish means to polish something by rubbing it or to smoothen, shine or brighten. For example, they removed the marks by burnishing the metal. They burnished the surface then placed the furniture in the sun. The company took steps to burnish its image. So next time someone polishes or brightens something else, why not use the word burnish instead? Fatuous. Fatuous. Fatuous means silly, pointless, or lacking intelligence or bird-brained. For example, even though he was apt in many aspects, sometimes he made some fatuous remarks that we would raise our eyebrows. The lady made a fatuous comment about the tree. Some audience members asked fatuous questions and the speaker replied briefly. So next time someone or something is silly or pointless, why not use the word fatuous instead? Felicitous. Felicitous. Felicitous means suitable, well-chosen, or fortunate, happy, pleasing. For example, the house resonated with felicitous music. We had a felicitous time at my grandmother's place last night. She was praised for her felicitous speech at the ceremony. So next time something is suitable or fortunate, why not use the word felicitous instead? 
Homogeneous. Homogeneous. Homogeneous means uniform, identical, unvaried, or of the same kind. For example, the fruits displayed in the supermarket appeared homogeneous, with similar length, shape, and color. The town's population was mainly homogeneous. The characteristic of this group is homogeneous. So next time something is uniform or of the same kind, why not use the word homogeneous instead? Affable. Affable. Affable means friendly, easy to talk to, or personable. For example, my grandmother was an affable lady. He made many friends because he was a kind, affable man. They were the only affable and approachable group. So next time someone is friendly and easy to talk to, why not use the word affable instead? Deference. Deference. Deference means respect, esteem, or courtesy. For example, he addressed his uncle with deference due to his experience. We removed our hats out of deference towards the fallen soldier. She was overwhelmed with the deference she received as a new member of royalty. So next time you refer to respect or esteem, why not use the word deference instead? Manipulatable. Manipulatable. Manipulatable means capable of being changed or manipulable, or persuaded by others to do what they want you to do. For example, the engineer created a device with three manipulatable points. The dashboard was manipulatable to enable scenario analyses. The manipulatable device sold out today. So next time something is capable of being changed or manipulable, why not use the word manipulatable instead? Indigenous. Indigenous. Indigenous means local to a particular area, native, or Aboriginal. For example, they found a few lizards that were indigenous to the region. Indigenous plants and trees surrounded the buildings. This was a common dish made in indigenous communities. So next time you refer to someone or something that is local to a particular area or native, why not use the word indigenous instead? Extrinsic. Extrinsic. Extrinsic means external, on the outside, or exterior. For example, one extrinsic reward in a job includes the salary. The researchers studied the extrinsic factors affecting the change in the bee population. The discussion changed to something extrinsic to the main topic. So next time something is external, why not use the word extrinsic instead? Levity. Levity. Levity means frivolity when treating a serious matter or carefreeness. For example, 
His remark was one of levity, especially during a tense moment in the room. The group looked confused at our levity in the matter. She tried to introduce a note of levity during the vigorous process. So next time there is frivolity when treating a serious matter, why not use the word levity instead? Redress. Redress. Redress means to rectify or to correct something that was wrong. For example, the leader tried to redress the wrongs committed by the government over 50 years. They tried to redress the situation via a lawsuit. They created a strategy to redress the inequality in pay. So next time someone tries to rectify something, why not use the word redress instead? Quixotic. Quixotic. Quixotic means unrealistically idealistic or impractical. For example, the team thought that the project was quixotic and we should look at another one. Elon Musk has often made quixotic situations through his company's services. What seemed quixotic was the means of implementing this strategy. So next time something is unrealistically idealistic or impractical, why not use the word quixotic instead? Err. Err. To err means to make a mistake or blunder. For example, they were careful to err on the side of caution. To err is human, but to admit it and be accountable for it is the right thing to do. John erred as many foster children have. But John focused on his studies and made a successful life for himself and loved ones. So next time someone makes a mistake or blunder, why not use the word err instead? Brevity. Brevity. Brevity means being brief or conciseness, precision. For example, for the sake of brevity, the speaker listed the top three ideas for the conference. I wrote the paragraph another time with a focus on brevity. The author was commended for his brevity and tone in his latest book. So next time you refer to the precision or conciseness of something, why not use the word brevity instead? Pensive. Pensive. Pensive means engaging or reflecting in deep thought. Or engrossed, contemplative, reflective. For example, she touched her chin and stared into space with a pensive look in her eyes. John did not bother his mom because she seemed to be in a pensive mood today. The pensive expression signaled to us that there was something more to consider. So next time someone is engrossed, contemplative, reflective, or is engaging in deep thought, why not use the word pensive instead? Vitriolic. Vitriolic. Vitriolic means strongly attacking, or bitter, rancorous, acrimonious. For example, the media launched a vitriolic attack on the leader of the party. He 
contended with vitriolic press coverage. She met with vitriolic critics at the conference. So next time you refer to bitter criticism, why not use the word vitriolic instead? Seminary. Seminary. A seminary is a college that teaches theology, or a college to train spiritual teachers like priests and ministers. For example, the students bought books for their classes in the seminary. He attended the seminary to become a priest. The seminary was a building made of grey stone. So next time you refer to a theological college, why not use the word seminary instead? Alacrity. Alacrity. Alacrity means eagerness, promptness, or liveliness and quickness. For example, my uncle accepted the job offer with alacrity. The children obeyed the teacher with alacrity. I responded to the challenge with great interest and alacrity. So next time someone has a lot of eagerness or promptness to do something, why not use the word alacrity instead? Intransigence. Intransigence. Intransigence means stubbornness or refusing to agree to something or change one's views. For example, despite the options provided before her, her intransigence did not allow her to accept any options. Such an outcome could only have come from intransigence. Intransigence seemed to be the norm in that group. So next time you refer to stubbornness, why not use the word intransigence instead? Imbue. Imbue. To imbue means to inspire or diffuse a feeling or quality, or to permeate. For example, the leader imbue her followers with dignity and self-love. The performance was imbued with enthusiasm. The social workers were challenged to imbue the orphans with hope, confidence, and values. So next time someone inspires or diffuses a feeling or quality in someone, why not use the word imbue instead? Trepidation. Trepidation. Trepidation means fear or apprehension. For example, we saw her staring at the floor in trepidation of news from the doctor. Amy walked with trepidation in the dark room to get her book. The researchers were motivated by trepidation. So next time you refer to fear or apprehension, why not use the word trepidation instead? Olfactory. Olfactory. Olfactory means concerning the sense of smell. For example, an olfactory organ in our body is the nose. The garden was an olfactory abundance of Japanese cherry. There are many animals which are provided with olfactory receivers and transmitters, such as bats. So next time you refer to something concerning the sense of smell, why not use the word olfactory instead? 
Venal. Venal. Venal means capable of being bribed or corrupt, bribable. For example, the venal officers accepted the luxurious watches as a bribe. The group was accused of engaging in venal practices. Jenny was a venal lawyer, while Jane was a law abiding, honest magistrate. So, next time someone is corrupt or capable of being bribed, why not use the word venal instead? Machination. Machination. A machination is a plot, plan, or scheme. For example, the companies caught the thief planning his machinations. The police arrested the gang leader when evidence was found as proof of the gang leader's machinations. The man's money machinations was caught before he can trap his victims. So next time you refer to a plot, plan or scheme, why not use the word machination instead? Hori. Hori. Hori means old or grayish white silver. For example, the hoary man ate his croissant slowly. It suddenly snowed, and a hoary man looking like Jack Frost appeared from the dark forest. A hoary lady with long hair sat on the armchair on the veranda. So next time someone or something is old or grayish white, why not use the word hoary instead? Myopic. Myopic. Myopic means short-sighted or nearsighted. For example, the group's myopic attitude made it difficult to work with them. The leadership's myopic strategies led to decline in this company's success. She got these lenses because of her myopic field of view. So next time you refer to something as short-sighted, why not use the word myopic instead? Gainsay. Gainsay. To gainsay means to deny a statement or oppose, disagree with, or contradict. For example, the co-workers feared to gainsay the analyst. The opponents tried but failed to gainsay the senator. It takes a great deal of courage to gainsay our boss. So next time you deny or contradict a statement, why not use the word gainsay instead? Raucous. Raucous. Raucous means loud, harsh, or strident. For example, we woke up in the middle of the night because we heard raucous noises outside. You can hear raucous yelling in the supermarket. The raucous honking from the trucks and cars on the street disturbed the residents. So next time something is loud, hard or strident, why not use the word raucous instead? Magnate. Magnate. A magnate is a wealthy, powerful business person. Or mogul, tycoon. For example, 
after an increase in economic demand, the magnet was on the front page of the newspaper. Petroleum magnate James Johnson donated $1 million to the cause. Oprah Winfrey is a media magnate. So next time you refer to a wealthy, powerful business person, why not use the word magnate instead? Furtive. Furtive. Furtive means secretive, covert, or hidden. For example, the government's furtive operations protected the people from attack. The officers made furtive glances at each other. Aaron made a furtive sign with his hands to signal Yona to move ahead. So next time something is secretive, covert or hidden, why not use the word furtive instead? Sage. Sage. A sage is a wise person or scholar. For example, Confucius is a well-known Chinese sage. We learned important lessons from the sage. The sage walked to the podium and began to speak. So next time you refer to a wise person or scholar, why not use the word sage instead? Monotonous. Monotonous. Monotonous means repetitive, tedious, dull, or unchanging. For example, the monotonous sound of the air conditioner in the library soothed me to sleep. My brother wanted a change from his monotonous job because he felt he stopped growing and learning. The factory workers were willing to work the monotonous job because of the attractive pain. So next time something is dull, repetitive and unchanging, why not use the word monotonous instead? Fractious. Fractious. Fractious means wayward, difficult to control, or irritable, grumpy. For example, the celerity of the spread of the virus made it fractious. We wondered what made him so fractious. The fractious old lady found it difficult to make friends. So next time someone or something is uncontrollable, irritable or grumpy, why not use the word fractious instead? Byline. Byline. Byline means the line which states who wrote an article. For example, Mary was excited because her name was included in the byline. We searched for the writer in the byline. James worked hard to have his name on the byline. So next time you refer to the line which states who wrote an article, why not use the word byline instead? Peripheral. Peripheral. Peripheral means situated on the edge, outskirts, or unimportant, secondary, subsidiary. For example, even though he played a peripheral role in the movie, he was grateful to be a part of it. They discussed peripheral issues in the meeting today. The employee had a peripheral involvement in the matter. 
So next time something is secondary, unimportant, or situated on the edge of something, why not use the word peripheral instead? Hit the... Ambiguity. Ambiguity. Ambiguity means uncertainty or vagueness. For example, his statements had a great deal of ambiguity in them. Her humor included ambiguity about popular topics. The response aimed to reduce ambiguity about the matter. So next time there is uncertainty or vagueness, why not use the word ambiguity instead? Proponent. Proponent. A proponent is a supporter, advocate, or promoter. For example, the proponents for the theory came forward with a strong evidence-based case study. The leaders' proponents attended the conference. The group was a proponent for education across the country. So next time someone is a supporter or promoter for something or someone else, why not use the word proponent instead? Venial. Venial. Venial means forgivable or excusable. For example, the public was able to forget about her venial actions and embrace the responsible person she is today. The student's low-income background was a venial fault for him not purchasing his books. They discussed venial matters in the meeting today. So next time something is forgivable or excusable, why not use the word venial instead? Gambit. Gambit. Gambit means an opening remark or move mainly to give one an advantage. Or stratagem, scheme. For example, he changed his strategy in the second game because his gambit in the first game was not fruitful. The debate's gambit was direct and powerful. We waited patiently for the chess player to reveal her gambit. So next time you refer to an opening remark or move mainly to give one an advantage, why not use the word gambit instead? Perspicacious. Perspicacious. Perspicacious means insightful, perceptive, or sharp-witted, shrewd. For example, the director of the company was convinced that she was a perspicacious businesswoman. The interview demonstrated that the leader was a perspicacious politician. He was a perspicacious analyst, so he saw the risks and benefits in the investment. So next time someone is insightful, perceptive, or shrewd, why not use the word perspicacious instead? Metaphorical. Metaphorical. Metaphorical means figurative, symbolic, or analogous. For example, the readers enjoyed the metaphorical style of the author's second published book. Did you mean what you said in a literal sense or in a metaphorical sense? The team discussed if there was a metaphorical interpretation from the actions. 
So next time something is figurative, symbolic, or analogous, why not use the word metaphorical instead? Unscathed. Unscathed. Unscathed means unharmed or unhurt. For example, fortunately, she was unscathed when the chair on which she was sitting fell. The children were unscathed by the game. Many e-learning businesses were left unscathed during the pandemic. So next time someone or something is unharmed, why not use the word unscathed instead? Delineation. Delineation. Delineation is a description, explanation, or portrayal. For example, they made an elaborate delineation about the museum. The article composed of an accurate delineation of the environmental issues in the area. They had a clear delineation of their responsibilities. So next time you refer to an explanation, description or portrayal, why not use the word delineation instead? Prescribe. Prescribe. Prescribe means to forbid, ban, or prohibit. For example, the students were prescribed from entering the fifth floor. The law prescribes ownership of guns. The consumption of sweets on weekdays was prescribed by mom. So next time someone forbids or bans something else, why not use the word prescribe instead? Salutary. Salutary. Salutary means beneficial, useful, or advantageous. For example, the herbal mixture was salutary for our illness. She embraced the opportunity because she thought it would be a salutary experience. We walked on the sand, inhaled the salutary ocean air, and reminisced about our happy childhood together. So next time something is beneficial or useful, why not use the word salutary instead? Normative. Normative. Normative means deriving from a standard or norm. For example, we analyzed the normative behavior of the people. The normative consequences included imprisonment or community service. The study focused on normative issues. So next time you refer to something deriving from a standard or norm, why not use the word normative instead? Obstreperous. Obstreperous. Obstreperous means noisy, boisterous, or unruly and unmanageable. For example, the drunken men at the corner of the pub were obstreperous and the supervisor spoke to them about it. The obstreperous children irritated my grandfather. The obstreperous protesters rallied on the streets outside the office. So next time someone is noisy or unruly, why not use the word obstreperous instead? Welter. Welter. A welter is a jumble of items or confusion. For example, the teacher left clearly defined instructions and deliverables for her students, 
so her classroom would not be in a welter. It has been a crazy week and my house is in a welter. By the time their parents came into the room, they fixed the welter. So next time you refer to a jumble of items, why not use the word welter instead? Hit the like. Cajole. Cajole. To cajole means to persuade through flattery or to coax. For example, my brother cajoled my dad into letting us go to the concert with our friends. She avoided cajoling her mother into the decision. My baby brother knew it was easy to cajole me into something by giving me some delicious cupcakes. So next time someone persuades or coaxes someone else, why not use the word cajole instead? Insentient. Insentient. Insentient means lacking feeling, lifeless, inanimate, or unconscious, desensitized. For example, the scientists proved that the animals were not insentient beings. They experienced great trauma and mentally insentient panic for some time. They gathered a few insentient elements for the experiment. So next time something is lacking feelings, lifeless, inanimate. Why not use the word insentient instead? Incubus. Incubus. An incubus is a cause of anxiety and distress or impediment, drawback. For example, the flight ban was an incubus for many who were stuck outside of their country. I tried not to let my brother's illness be an incubus, but instead focused on hope and recovery. The doctors tried to understand the incubus for his symptoms. So next time you refer to a cause of anxiety and distress, why not use the word incubus instead? Hit the like Orthodox. Orthodox. Orthodox means conventional, mainstream, accepted, or approved, or conforming to what is traditionally accessed as true. For example, the Orthodox couple were generous and warm hearted. The speaker expressed orthodox views with great evidence supporting each view. The group preferred a more orthodox solution to the issues. So next time someone or something conforms to what is traditionally accepted as true, why not use the word orthodox instead? Conscript. Conscript. To conscript means to recruit someone compulsorily or to enlist. For example, the department began the paperwork to conscript more members. The brothers were conscripted into the army. The school wanted to conscript parents as event coordinators. So next time someone recruits someone else compulsorily, why not use the word conscript instead? Rococo. Rococo. A Rococo is a Baroque style of art such as in furniture, 
prevalent in the 18th century continental Europe. For example, my parents searched many stores before purchasing this decorative Rococo table. The students tried to recreate the Rococo artwork. We admired the intricacy of the Rococo decoration in the building. So next time you refer to a Baroque style of art, such as in furniture prevalent in the 18th century continental Europe, why not use the word Rococo instead? Puril. Puril. Puril means silly, immature, or childish. For example, we were fed up with her puril excuses. The birthday party was made up of a variety of puril games for the five year old kids. The intellectual left the room as he found the discussion a bit puerile for him. So next time something is childish, silly or immature, why not use the word puerile instead? Ambulatory 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 means mobile or related to or adapted for walking. For example, the patients are not bedridden anymore, but instead are ambulatory. The hospital has an ambulatory ECG monitor in its inventory. The studies were done using ambulatory machines from that hospital. So next time something is related to or adapted for walking or mobile, why not use the word ambulatory instead? Invidious. Invidious. Invidious means arousing envy in others particularly of a situation, awkward, unpleasant, or unfair, unjust. For example, he was put into an invidious position. The regulators were put into an invidious position. The principal avoided the invidious rules against students. So next time something is awkward, unfair, or unjust, why not use the word invidious instead? Disseminate. Disseminate. To disseminate means to spread widely, circulate, or distribute. For example, the organization worked with the marketing team to disseminate the details about the competition. The public health agency of the country disseminated information about the pandemic and how to protect oneself during the pandemic. The researchers disseminated the findings of their study in a book. So next time something is spread widely, distributed or circulated, why not use the word disseminate instead? Inept. Inept. Inept means unskilled, incompetent, or clumsy. For example, she knew that she was inept at the subject, so she chose a different field of study. The result of the work was proof that an inept contractor completed the job. Joe was an inept mechanic, so we did not hire him. 
So next time someone is unskilled, incompetent, or clumsy, why not use the word inept instead? Hit the Menagerie. Menagerie. A menagerie is a collection of animals. For example, the conservation area had a menagerie of mammals, insects, reptiles, and birds. My grandmother was fond of her glass menagerie and told us about how she collected each piece every time we sit for Thanksgiving dinner. The scientists studied a menagerie of insects in the lab. So next time you refer to a collection of animals, why not use the word menagerie instead? Choleric. Choleric. Choleric means easily angered, irritable, or bad-tempered. For example, she had few friends because of her constant choleric attitude. He stormed into the room and walked around in a choleric manner, so we stayed away from him for a while. The mechanic was fired because of his violent actions from his choleric temper. So next time someone is easily angered or irritated, why not use the word choleric instead? Peak. Peak. Peak means a feeling of being irritated or annoyed, or displeasure or resentment. For example, the manager walked out frantically in a fit of peak. His response was driven by peak. I didn't approach her because her peak for the matter would bias the discussion. So next time you feel displeasure, irritation or resentment, why not use the word peak instead? Utopian. Utopian. Utopian means idealistic or visionary. For example, the governor continued to work towards achieving utopian standards for the community. She outlined many differences between the current situation and the utopian vision she had. His essay described the utopian ideas that he had for the university. So next time something is idealistic or visionary, why not use the word utopian instead? Hit the like. Ramble. Ramble. To ramble means to wander, roam, or to babble, chatter. For example, they rolled their eyes as he rambled about the journey. The couple rambled on the beachfront. Please stop rambling and get to the point. So next time someone wanders, roams, babbles or chatters, why not use the word ramble instead? Somnambulist Somnambulist. Somnambulist means sleepwalker. For example, my aunt was a somnambulist. The somnambulist went to the doctor to address her sleepwalking concerns. Tom, a somnambulist, walked from the bedroom to the kitchen and back to the bed last night. So next time you refer to a sleepwalker, why not use the word somnambulist instead? Augment. Augment. To augment means to increase or make bigger by adding something to it. 
or supplement. For example, she augmented her income by tutoring students at a college on weekends. The computer technician thought of a way to augment the memory capacity of the computer. The organization is seeking sponsorship to augment the existing funds from membership fees. So next time you want to increase or make something bigger by adding something to it, why not use the word augment instead? Hit the like. Munificent. Munificent. Munificent means generous, magnanimous, or charitable. For example, Grandma donated a munificent sum of money to the organization. We got a munificent dinner for the price we paid. He received munificent gifts from his friends. So next time someone or something is magnanimous or charitable, why not use the word munificent instead? Capacious. Capacious. Capacious means spacious or roomy. For example, the buyer loved the capacious rooms and large windows overlooking the lake. We drove down the capacious and empty streets at night. They looked for a capacious hall for the ceremony. So next time something is spacious or roomy, why not use the word capacious instead? Lobbyist. Lobbyist. A lobbyist is a person who tries to convince others to support a particular cause. For example, she was a lobbyist for environmental policies. The lobbyist had a meeting with the senator this morning. The lobbyist flew from New York to Chicago to discuss the strategies. So next time you refer to a person who tries to convince others to support a particular cause, why not use the word lobbyist instead? Diurnal. Diurnal. Diurnal means active in daytime or daily, day-to-day, -day, quotidian. For example, dogs, elephants, and butterflies are diurnal animals. The aquarium included many diurnal species. The researcher studied diurnal birds of prey. So next time you refer to something that is active in daytime, why not use the word diurnal instead? Hit the like. Tenet. Tenet. A tenet is a principle or belief, particularly of a philosophy or religion or doctrine. For example, a tenet of the philosophy was respect for each other. Competition is one of the classical tenets of capitalism. We focused on the central tenet of the model. So next time you refer to a principle or belief, particularly of a philosophy or religion, why not use the word tenet instead? Sacrosanct. Sacrosanct. Sacrosanct means sacred, holy, or inviolable. For example, the politicians were not sacrosanct. My boss asked me to work on weekends, but my weekends are sacrosanct, so I told her I was not available.
She considered this a sacrosanct routine for her success. So next time something is sacred, holy, or inviolable, why not use the word sacrosanct instead? Hit the like. Irksome. Irksome. Irksome means irritating or annoying. For example, we found her know-it-all haughtiness irksome. His languid demeanor was irksome because they were in a hurry. The boisterous, irksome children didn't let grandfather sleep. So next time something is irritating or annoying, why not use the word irksome instead? Voluminous. Voluminous. Voluminous means roomy, particularly of clothes, or spacious, loose. For example, the buyer found the voluminous sweaters warm and perfect for casual wear. She slid her arms through the voluminous sleeves of the jacket. Even though he liked the color of the shirt, it was voluminous, so he did not purchase it. So next time a piece of clothing is roomy, loose or spacious, why not use the word voluminous instead? Perfidy. Perfidy. Perfidy means treachery, deceit or infidelity. For example, the novel demonstrated a classic case of perfidy. His conscience would not have allowed him to commit any form of perfidy. The scent of perfidy hung in the air as they walked into the room. So next time you refer to treachery, deceit, or infidelity, why not use the word perfidy instead? Errant. Errant. Errant means wrong, guilty, or offending, culpable. For example, the penalties were imposed on the errant workers. The errant child admitted to the mistakes she made. Whenever she plays an errant note on the piano, she shakes her head in disappointment. So next time something or someone is wrong, why not use the word errant instead? Hit the like button. Potent. Potent. Potent means powerful, strong, or influential. For example, I took a potent drug and fell asleep immediately. His song had a potent and emotional impact on his audience. She is a potent leader in the company. So next time someone or something is powerful or strong, why not use the word potent instead? Hit the like. Mendacious. Mendacious. Mendacious means not speaking the truth, lying, or dishonest, false. For example, the mendacious report was written to mislead those who are interested in the topic. Jim was mendacious since he gave different reasons to each of us about why he was absent. The group argued that legal action should be taken towards those who create and market mendacious advertisements. So next time someone is lying or something is false, why not use the word mendacious instead? Fastidious. Fastidious. Fastidious means very concerned about cleanliness and details, or finicky, meticulous, scrupulous. For example, 
Mark walked with a bottle of hand sanitizer because he was fastidious about hygiene and cleanliness. She was fastidious while her brother was sloppy. We knew that she was fastidious, so we made sure her surprise was perfect. So next time someone is very concerned about cleanliness and details, or finicky or meticulous, why not use the word fastidious instead? Ominous. Ominous. Ominous means inauspicious, threatening, or unfavorable. For example, novelists often include crows in a scene to symbolize ominous events ahead. There was a tense and ominous silence in the room. The music included ominous tones followed by hopeful ones. So next time something is inauspicious or threatening, why not use the word ominous instead? Flagrant. Flagrant. Flagrant means blatantly offensive or obvious, glaring. For example, we were appalled at his flagrant disregard for the rules. The country was fined for the flagrant violation of the treaty. This was noted as a flagrant case of misuse of power. So next time something is obvious, glaring, or blatantly offensive, why not use the word flagrant instead? Occlude. Occlude. To occlude means to block, to obscure, or to seal or plug something. For example, we looked up to see the moon, but it was occluded by the clouds in the sky. He searched for a material to place in the area to occlude any air from entering the room. The doctor pointed to the area of the scan which showed where the artery was occluded. So next time something is blocked, obscured or sealed, why not use the word occlude instead? Skirmish. Skirmish. Skirmish means argument a small fight, or disagreement. For example, they had a minor skirmish over which type of cookies to bake. There was a skirmish among the members about the policy change. The brothers tried to avoid a skirmish at the family dinner. So next time there is a small fight or disagreement, why not use the word skirmish instead? Impune. Impune. To impune means to dispute the truth or validity of something, or to challenge, call into question, query. For example, the analyst impugned the validity of the politician's statement. Her competence as a professional consultant was impugned. The authorities impugned the motives of the businessman. So next time you challenge or dispute the validity of a statement, why not use the word impugn instead? Circumscribe. Circumscribe. To circumscribe means to limit, restrict, or to keep within bounds. For example, her movement was circumscribed by the injuries from the accident. 
the policy circumscribed the power of the group. The regulations circumscribed the movement of individuals during the pandemic. So next time something is kept within bounds or limits, why not use the word circumscribed instead? Hit the like. Ameliorate. Ameliorate. To ameliorate means to make better or to improve. For example, education ameliorates poor circumstances. The members of the board strategized on ways to ameliorate the current situation. The policy ameliorated poor living standards. So next time something is made better or improved, why not use the word ameliorate instead? Nell. Nell. Nell means the sound of a bell, especially related to a funeral or death. Or end. Beginning of the end. For example, I heard the knell from ten houses away. The knell resonated throughout the small town and gave us chills. The policy rang the knell of our hopes. So next time you refer to the sound of a bell, especially related to a funeral or death, or the end of something, why not use the word knell instead? Virtuoso. Virtuoso. Virtuoso is an accomplished musician or maestro, champion. For example, we felt privileged to meet the pianist who was a virtuoso. The lights dimmed and one spotlight shone on the virtuoso when he began singing. The audience clapped loudly when the virtuoso walked on the stage. So next time you refer to an accomplished musician or artist, why not use the word virtuoso instead? Maelstrom. Maelstrom. A maelstrom is a vortex or swirl in the ocean, river or sea. Or a state of turbulence commotion or jumbling movement. For example, as the pirates journeyed across the sea, their ship was destroyed by a maelstrom. The author received a maelstrom of criticism surrounding her latest books. He was engulfed with a maelstrom of emotions and stayed in his room. So next time you refer to a swirl in the ocean, river, sea, or a state of turbulence, why not use the word maelstrom instead? Turpitude. Turpitude. Turpitude means shameful or vile act. Or depravity. For example, his moral turpitude prevented him from moving forward in his sporting career. She was sentenced for the acts of turpitude she committed. James did not voluntarily disclose his turpitude from the past, so the group distrusted him. So next time you refer to a shameful or vile act, why not use the word turpitude instead? Hit the like. Stolid. Stolid. Stolid means calm, dependable, or unemotional, placid. For example, I approached Jane to discuss my concerns because she has a stolid nature. Parents were stolid when they heard the news. 
the animals are generally stolid unless you encroach on their space. So next time someone is calm, dependable, or unemotional, why not use the word stolid instead? Egregious. Egregious. Egregious means obviously bad, horrifying, or terrible, atrocious. For example, the incident demonstrated an egregious example of discrimination. The egregious error of the politician raised concern among all residents. We were shocked at the egregious practices of water and air pollution at the factory. So next time something is obviously bad or horrifying, why not use the word egregious instead? Precipitous. Precipitous. Precipitous means done in a hurry or without much thought. Or rushed, hasty or hurried. For example, James made a precipitous decision and turned right. The athlete's precipitous move turned out to lead the team to a win. My essay gave an unclear message to the reader because I wrote it in a precipitous manner. So next time someone or something is done in a hurry or without much thought, why not use the word precipitous instead? Syntax. Syntax. Syntax means the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language. For example, we compared the syntax of the English and of the French languages. There was a syntax error and we were confused. Converting these questions to a statement would involve changes of both intonation and syntax in English and Spanish. So next time you refer to the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language, why not use the word syntax instead? Hit the like. Futile. Futile. Futile means useless, pointless, or fruitless. For example, the boss thought that the efforts were futile and we'd never reach our goal. My brother made a futile attempt to cheer me up when I flunked my exam. Jason thought it would be futile to try fixing the oven. So next time something seems useless, pointless, or fruitless, why not use the word futile instead? Hit the like. Vacillate. Vacillate. To vacillate means to waver, hesitate, or to be indecisive. For example, she vacillated between which of the two computers to buy. He looked into space, then sat down and vacillated about the options. Please don't vacillate to ask for additional support if you need it. So next time you hesitate to do something, why not use the word vacillate instead? Obsession. Obsession. Obsession means dominating, concern, or fixation. For example, his obsession with dinosaurs began when he was three years old. Her desire to lose weight became an obsession. The media's obsession with the celebrity's personal life never ended. So next time someone has a dominating concern about something, why not use the word obsession instead? Ruse. Ruse. Ruse means cunning plan, trick, 
or a ploy intended to deceive. For example, the thieves devised a ruse to achieve their goals. My aunt saw through the man's ruse five minutes after he conversed with her. Their ruse was the claim that their friend was ill in the building and they needed to enter to help their friend. So next time you refer to a cunning plan, trick or a ploy intended to deceive, why not use the word ruse instead? Garish. Garish. Garish means gaudy, overbright, or glaring, lurid. For example, she wore a bright garish golden dress. That part of the store was abundant in garish items. They wore garish jackets and bell bottoms to the dance. So next time something is gaudy, overbright, glaring or lurid, why not use the word garish instead? Hit the like. Amorphous. Amorphous. Amorphous means lacking in shape or form or unstructured or unformed. For example, the chemistry experiment created an amorphous soft substance. My brother dropped a spoon of mashed potatoes onto my plate, which looked like an amorphous heap of creamy substance. The melted butter turned into an amorphous yellow mass in the bowl. So next time something is shapeless or formless, why not use the word amorphous instead? Recapitulate. Recapitulate. To recapitulate means to summarize, sum up, or restate. For example, the manager paused to recapitulate what they already discussed in the meeting. Tracy recapitulated the list of items she needed to buy. Did you know that recap is the short form of the word recapitulate? So next time you have to summarize or restate something, why not use the word recapitulate instead? Trivial. Trivial. Trivial means unimportant or insignificant. For example, we talked about trivial matters over hot chocolate. I didn't talk about my problems because they seemed trivial compared to what others were discussing. She received a warning for the trivial offense she committed. So next time something is unimportant or insignificant, why not use the word trivial instead? Hit the like. Neophyte. Neophyte. A neophyte is a novice, beginner, or a new convert. For example, we could tell she was a neophyte at singing. His overconfidence as a neophyte led him to be ridiculed by the audience. The neophyte was willing to study and work long hours and years in the field to master it. So next time you refer to a novice or a new convert, why not use the word neophyte instead? Clemency Clemency. Clemency means mercy or leniency. For example, the lady appealed to the court for clemency. Mr. Jake was granted clemency yesterday. The court replaced two years of his term in prison with community service as an act of clemency. So next time someone has mercy or leniency on someone else, 
Why not use the word clemency instead? Hit the like. Odious. Odious. Odious means extremely unpleasant or repulsive, detestable. For example, his actions demonstrated odious hypocrisy. They used odious methods to obtain their goals. They were a group with odious values. So next time something is extremely unpleasant or repulsive, why not use the word odious instead? Dilatory. Dilatory. Dilatory means slow in doing one's work or unpunctual, tardy. For example, the businesses were dilatory in lowering their prices. The manager called the dilatory employee into her office. Mark was dilatory in responding to customers' emails. So next time someone is slow in doing one's work or unpunctual, why not use the word dilatory instead? Malefactor. Malefactor. A malefactor is an offender, wrongdoer, or lawbreaker, criminal. For example, the member of the gang was a malefactor. The malefactor received a 10-year sentence. The police arrested the malefactor. So next time someone is an offender or lawbreaker, why not use the word malefactor instead? Torpor. Torpor. Torpor means lethargic, sluggishness, or inactivity, dormancy. For example, the author had sunk into a creative torpor. The pandemic created a torpor in the industry. After eating and drinking unhealthily for a week, we fell into a state of torpor. So next time when someone or something is lethargic or inactive, why not use the word torpor instead? Quandary. Quandary. Quandary means dilemma, predicament, or puzzle. For example, I found myself in a quandary while running in the woods. My mother found a solution for my quandary. The villagers faced a quandary of drought during the month of June. So next time you refer to a dilemma, predicament or puzzle, why not use the word quandary instead? Preamble. Preamble. Preamble means introductory statement or prologue, preface. For example, the preamble included the reason why they researched this topic. The doctor spoke to the patient's father about the patient without a preamble. I wrote a preamble to include the vision and goals of the department. So next time you refer to an introductory statement or prologue, why not use the word preamble instead? Hit the like. Dictum. Dictum. A dictum is a saying that expresses a general truth or principle or a proverb, axiom, maxim. For example, the dictum applied to capitalism and not to communism. William Shakespeare's play 
all's well that ends well is a common dictum used today. The dictum proved to be true in this era and the last. So next time you refer to a saying that expresses a general truth or principle, why not use the word dictum instead? Iconoclast. Iconoclast. An iconoclast is a person who opposes orthodoxy, a nonconformist, or a person who attacks cherished beliefs or institutions. Critic. For example, we were informed that our manager was an iconoclast. They argued whether or not Walt Disney could be considered an iconoclast of animation. The iconoclast explained her views, and we listened attentively. So next time you refer to a person who opposes orthodoxy or nonconformist, why not use the word iconoclast instead? Paramount. Paramount. Paramount means most important, supreme, or highest overriding. For example, the car's paramount feature was its fuel efficiency. The mayor said that achieving a 90% vaccination rate by the end of summer was of paramount importance. The parents' paramount consideration was their child's health and safety. So next time something is of supreme importance or the overriding factor, why not use the word paramount instead? Inexpedient. Inexpedient. Inexpedient means not advisable, unwise, or imprudent. For example, the central bank thought it would be inexpedient to raise interest rates at this point in time. It was inexpedient for her to take that route. They agreed to go with option two because they thought it was inexpedient to go with option one. So next time something is unadvisable, unwise, or imprudent, why not use the word inexpedient instead? Hit the like. Pontificate. Pontificate. To pontificate means to speak pompously or dogmatize preach. For example, the political analysts pontificated about inflation. We were ashamed as the group pontificated about the matter. They pontificated about the responsibilities of workers. So next time someone preaches or speaks pompously about something, why not use the word pontificate instead? Hit the like. Disparage. Disparage. To disparage means to belittle, deprecate, or to criticize. For example, the article disparaged the work of the scientists. The bullies disparaged the achievements of one of their classmates. The political leaders disparaged each other in their speech last night. So next time someone belittles or criticizes something or someone else, why not use the word disparage instead? Inculcate. Inculcate. To inculcate means to instill a habit by persistent instruction or to implant ingrain, or infuse. For example, the school took steps to inculcate ethical behavior in the children.
the company tries to inculcate cultural diversity in its employees. The parents inculcated honesty and respect in the children. So next time someone instills a habit, why not use the word inculcate instead? Antediluvian. Antediluvian. Antediluvian means outdated, old-fashioned, or prehistoric. For example, he contributed a rather antediluvian idea during the class. The antediluvian system was replaced 50 years ago with the new system. The paleontologists found fossils of antediluvian animals. So next time something is outdated or prehistoric, why not use the word antediluvian instead? Hit the like. Glacial. Glacial. Glacial means cold, icy, or hostile, unfriendly. For example, her glacial smile made me uncomfortable. The meteorologists warned about the glacial conditions. He walked out the office with a glacial expression on his face. So next time something is cold, icy, or a relation or expression is hostile or unfriendly, why not use the word glacial instead? Hit the like. Obviate. Obviate. To obviate is to avoid or to prevent. For example, we strategized to obviate a disaster in the upcoming weeks. They increased the chemicals to obviate the risk of disease. We tried to obviate the need to redo the dance sequence. So next time you avoid or prevent something, why not use the word obviate instead? Erratic. Erratic. Erratic means irregular, inconsistent, or unpredictable. For example, her parents found it challenging to cope with her erratic behavior. The band gave an erratic performance. The water supply here is erratic, so many moved away from this region. So next time something or someone is irregular or inconsistent, why not use the word erratic instead? Martinet. Martinet. A martinet is a person who believes in strict discipline or disciplinarian, taskmaster. For example, Aunt Lizzie was a martinet, so we never wanted to go over to her house. The colonel was a martinet, bored at work and at home. There were rumors that the new teacher is a martinet. So next time someone is a disciplinarian or a taskmaster, why not use the word martinet instead? Hit the like. Flout. Flout. To flout means to openly defy, refuse to obey, or rebel against. For example, some businesses flouted the law by selling marijuana in the region. The workers were tested against and flouted low wages in the company. Cameras were there to identify people to often flout traffic laws. So next time someone defies refuses something openly, why not use the word flout instead? 
ratify. Ratify. To ratify means to approve something formally, or to confirm, sanction, endorse. For example, some principals ratified corporal punishment, while others did not approve of it. The government ratified the law relating to the abolition of slavery. They ratified the treaty in May 2021. So next time something is approved formally or endorsed, why not use the word ratify instead? Hit the like. Predicament. Predicament. A predicament is a dilemma or a difficult situation. For example, while walking on the beach, I found myself in a predicament. My father found a solution for my predicament. Declan found himself in a predicament when Jane asked him a technical question. So next time you refer to a difficult situation, why not use the word predicament instead? Skeptical. Skeptical. Skeptical means not easily convinced, doubtful, or having reservations, cynical. For example, Anna was skeptical about the analyst's projections. The skeptical parents questioned their son when he asked for a large amount of money. The public was skeptical about the accusations made against the mayor. So next time someone is not easily convinced or has reservations about something, why not use the word skeptical instead? Inclination. Inclination. An inclination is a tendency, readiness, or leaning. For example, we mentioned it was late because she showed no inclination to leave. My natural inclination was to offer advice, but I paused and listened more. The group had an inclination to consider music as a less important subject. So next time you refer to the tendency of something, why not use the word inclination instead? Precarious. Precarious. Precarious means uncertain, unstable, unreliable, or risky. For example, she did not venture into the business because she felt her financial position was precarious at that time. My grandmother took all her treatments and medicines on time, but her health remained precarious. I reduced my spending because my employment status was currently precarious. So next time something is uncertain, unstable, or risky, why not use the word precarious instead? Hit the like button. Deteriorate. Deteriorate. To deteriorate means to worsen, decline, or to degenerate. For example, her health deteriorated over the past few weeks. The living standards in the village deteriorated during the pandemic. The analyst predicted that the weather conditions would deteriorate for the next few months. So next time something worsens or declines, why not use the word deteriorate instead? Hit the like. Inscrutable. Inscrutable. Inscrutable means mysterious, incomprehensible, or impenetrable, 
impossible to interpret. For example, her inscrutable comments made us confused. We notified the police about the inscrutable emails and phone messages we received. The speaker's inscrutable face made it difficult for others to understand what she was feeling. So next time something is mysterious, incomprehensible, or impossible to interpret, why not use the word inscrutable instead? Castigate Castigate To castigate means to criticize strongly or to scold severely. For example, the man castigated his sons for stealing. The manager castigated her employees for going against the computer's policies. My mother castigated us when we played in the mud when it rained. So next time someone criticizes someone else strongly, why not use the word castigate instead? Endemic. Endemic. Endemic means often found among particular people or in a certain region, particularly relating to a disease. For example, malaria is endemic in Philippines and tropical Africa. The researchers studied how to reduce the persistent growth of the disease in endemic areas. In cholera endemic countries, an outbreak of cholera can be irregular or seasonal. So next time when a disease is often found among particular people or in a certain region, why not use the word endemic instead? Benign. Benign. Benign means harmless or good-natured, warm-hearted. For example, our neighbor was a benign old lady who brought freshly baked cookies for us every Sunday morning. The doctor said that the tumor is benign. She had a benign, calm expression on her face as she sat looking out the window. So next time, when something is harmless or inoffensive, why not use the word benign instead? Posterity. Posterity. Posterity means future generations or those who come after us, the future. For example, they buried a time capsule for posterity. These books would preserve the knowledge for posterity. Posterity will remember her as an empathetic leader. So next time you refer to the future generations, why not use the word posterity instead? Etymology 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 is the study of the origin of words and the changes of their meaning over time, or origin. For example, when we considered the etymology, we were surprised about the depth of thought in the script. The etymology of Harry Potter spells tells us that every spell has a story behind its name. We studied the etymology of the names of scientific medicines. So next time you refer to the study of the origin of words and the changes of their meaning over time, why not use the word etymology instead? Hit the like. Collate. Collate. To collate means to arrange or gather in order, or to assemble, collect. For example, the editor collated the main points in the speech for the president. The secretary will collate the information as soon as he receives it. 
My responsibility was to write up report after researching, collating, and analyzing information. So next time you arrange or assemble something in order, why not use the word collate instead? Inexorable. Inexorable. Inexorable means relentless, unstoppable, or inflexible, unyielding. For example, he was praised for his inexorable ascent towards the win of yet another game. The road trip seemed like an inexorable journey. Bellatrix Lestrange was an inexorable character in the Harry Potter books. So next time someone or something is unstoppable or unyielding, why not use the word inexorable instead? Scuttle. 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 To scuttle means to hurry, scamper, or scurry. For example, in the Harry Potter novel, Ron looked at Scabbers scuttle on the floor towards the door. The children scuttled across the park towards the ice cream truck. We looked at the hamsters as they scuttled from one side of the room to another. So next time someone is in a hurry, why not use the word parochial? Parochial. Parochial means small town, concerned with local matters, or narrow-minded, small-minded. For example, I went to my grandmother's village and read the parochial newspaper. The ideas discussed were parochial. The parochial minister provided great detail about the matter. So next time someone is concerned with local matters or is narrow-minded, why not use the word parochial instead? Diaphanous. Diaphanous. Diaphanous means thin, delicate, and translucent, or sheer, ultra-fine. For example, the diaphanous shawl elegantly fell over her silver dress. We saw the glow of the candlelights through the diaphanous drapes. The moon appeared diaphanous yesterday, and the child questioned how this could be. So next time, when something is thin, delicate, and translucent, why not use the word diaphanous instead? Certitude. Certitude. Certitude means certainty, sureness, or confidence, conviction. For example, the Prime Minister spoke with certitude about the effects of the policy. Henry failed to answer with certitude when asked about his involvement in the matter. They were not able to predict the outcome of the election with any degree of certitude. So next time you refer to the certainty of something, why not use the word certitude instead? Illusory. Illusory. Illusory means delusional, not real, or deceptive, misleading. For example, the theories were illusory. The data was illusory because it represented a small fraction of the population. At this moment, he realized that his freedom of expression was illusory. So next time when something is not real, delusional, or misleading, why not use the word illusory instead? Airsats. Airsats. 
Ersatz means a typically inferior substitute for something, or imitation, artificial, or synthetic. For example, it was ironic that the cost of creating the Ersatz software exceed the cost of creating the original software instead. We had a cup of Ersatz coffee made from acorns. Jim took an ersatz alternative to sugar since there was none at the counter. So next time you refer to a substitute for something which is usually inferior or artificial, why not use the word ersatz instead? Hit the like. Vacuous. Vacuous. Vacuous means mindless, silly, meaningless or empty, emotionless. For example, she walked out of her manager's office with a vacuous expression on her face. The audience thought that the vacuous speech was a waste of their last five minutes. We felt something about him was off because his eyes were vacuous and dull while speaking such comforting words. So next time something is silly, emotionless, or mindless, why not use the word vacuous instead? Inadvertent. Inadvertent. Inadvertent means unintentional or accidental. For example, the child tripped and caused inadvertent damages to the glass furniture. Lifting the small bag off the floor was inadvertent because the small bag was stuck to the larger bag which she picked up. He was an inadvertent assistant as he was in the right place at the right time. So next time when something is unintentional or accidental, why not use the word inadvertent instead? Rife. Rife. Rife means common or widespread. For example, honesty was rife among the employees. Rumors about unrest was rife. Poverty was rife despite the policies put in place one year ago. So next time something is common or widespread, why not use the word rife instead? Hit the like. Prolific. Prolific. Prolific means producing many works, productive, creative, or abundant. For example... Bananas are prolific in the area. The musician was also a prolific songwriter. The prolific artist created over 1,000 songs in his lifetime. So next time someone or something is productive or abundant, why not use the word prolific instead? Serendipity Serendipity. A serendipity is a lucky chance or happy coincidence. For example, they describe their first meeting as pure serendipity. She smiled and said that the great opportunities she received this year was due to serendipity. My grandfather described a series of serendipities while we drank hot chocolate and listened to him without moving. So next time there is a happy coincidence, why not use the word serendipity instead? Pastiche. 
pastiche. A pastiche is an artistic work that is made up of works from various sources, or a medley. For example, we searched for a book which was a pastiche of articles, poems, and stories. The audience was captured by the pastiche he presented. The manager asked for the team to create a pastiche of works from the past two decades. So next time you refer to an artistic work that is made up of works from various sources or medley, why not use the word pastiche instead? Hit the like. Impartial. Impartial. Impartial means unprejudiced or unbiased. For example, my coworker offered impartial advice to me when I faced a challenge at work. The interviewer asked impartial questions to the interviewee. The article detailed an impartial perspective on the political situation. So next time someone or something is unbiased or unprejudiced, why not use the word impartial instead? Chastise. Chastise. To chastise means to punish by beating, scold, or to strongly disapprove of or criticize someone, rebuke, reprimand. For example, the article chastised the government policy. My grandfather chastised my father with a whip when my father was 10 years old. He chastised himself for losing the game. So next time when someone punishes or criticizes someone else, why not use the word chastise instead? Incessant. Incessant. Incessant means continuing without pause, not stopping. Or ceaseless, everlasting. For example, Flights were cancelled because of the incessant thunderstorm that took place for four days. We closed the window to reduce the incessant honking and noise from the street. The incessant rain and chilly night motivated us to drink hot chocolate and cuddle under our blankets while we looked at our favorite movies. So next time something is continuing without pause or ceaseless, why not use the word incessant instead? Parsimonious. Parsimonious. Parsimonious means not willing to spend money, miserly, or thrifty, penny-pinching. For example, we did not expect an extravagant dinner because of her parsimonious attitude. The parsimonious lady spent hours looking at the clothes, but always walked out buying the cheapest thing in the store. He was parsimonious in disclosing information about his brother. So next time someone is not willing to spend money or is miserly, why not use the word parsimonious instead? Impoverished. Impoverished. Impoverished means poor, destitute, or impecunious, having no money. For example, the pandemic led to business closures and they were impoverished because of prolonged unemployment. 
The drought left many farmers impoverished this year. Tom grew up in an impoverished village. So next time someone or something is poor or destitute, why not use the word impoverished instead? Scrupulous. Scrupulous. Scrupulous means attentive to details and thorough, or meticulous, diligent. For example, the scrupulous worker found the difference in sales. Her mother was scrupulous about the cleanliness of her room. They conducted their research with scrupulous attention to detail. So next time someone is meticulous, diligent, or attentive to details, why not use the word scrupulous instead? Prerogative. Prerogative. Prerogative means right, privilege, or entitlement. For example, the prime minister exercised his prerogative and called an election. Decades ago, education was considered a prerogative of affluent society. It was Tom's prerogative to choose whether or not he wanted to attend the party. So next time you refer to someone's right or privilege, why not use the word prerogative instead? Stagnant. Stagnant. Stagnant means motionless, still, or dull, inactive. The iguanas lay stagnant in the sun on the rock. Mosquitoes are known to breed in stagnant water. The economists recommended strategies to improve the stagnant economy. So next time something is motionless or inactive, why not use the word stagnant instead? Exonerate. Exonerate. To exonerate means remove blame for or absolve something from a fault or wrongdoing. Or acquit, declare innocent. For example, Tom was exonerated from the theft charges. The evidence we gathered last week was sufficient to exonerate her. The inquiry exonerated the company from any wrongdoing. So next time someone is absolved from a fault or wrongdoing, why not use the word exonerate instead? Palisade. Palisade. Palisade means a fence, usually made of iron railings, posts, or wooden stakes. Or barricade. For example, the government building was surrounded by a tall palisade. The palisade protected the community from wild animals. The artistic palisade attracted many foreigners to this building. So next time you refer to a fence usually made of iron railings, posts, or wooden stakes, or barricade, why not use the word palisade instead? Circumlocution. Circumlocution. Circumlocution means using too many words, usually to be evasive. Or long-windedness, periphrasis, beating around the bush. For example, the team was frustrated with his circumlocution as they felt they could never come to a conclusion. The political party's leader was an expert in circumlocution. 
the son of your father's brother, is a circumlocution for your cousin. So next time you refer to using long-windedness or too many words to be evasive, why not use the word circumlocution instead? Mitigate. Mitigate. To mitigate means to lessen, make less severe, or to alleviate, ease. For example, the analyst recommended ways to mitigate the risks involved. The students wanted to mitigate poverty in their community. The doctors explained that the medicine has some chance of mitigating some symptoms of the disease. So next time something lessens, alleviates, or makes something else less severe, why not use the word mitigate instead? Desist. Desist. To desist means to discontinue, stop, or abstain from. For example, we committed to desist from eating sugar for a month. My father advised that I desist from drinking excessive alcohol. The group promised to desist from acts of violence and destruction. So next time you discontinue or abstain from something, why not use the word desist instead? Ironic. Ironic. Ironic means happening in the opposite way than expected, but providing humor as a result of it. Or sarcastic, wry. For example, the comedian was known for her ironic tone of voice. He reacted with an ironic smile. The ironic and entertaining play was popular among the people. So next time something happens in the opposite way than expected, but providing humor as a result of it, why not use the word ironic instead? Sporadic. Sporadic. Sporadic means occurring at irregular intervals, intermittent, or periodical. For example, his sporadic impatience was one of his weaknesses. The village experienced a sporadic outbreak of the disease. When the hamster made sporadic jumps, the children laughed. So next time something occurs at irregular intervals, is intermittent or periodical, why not use the word sporadic instead? Fanatical. Fanatical. Fanatical means obsessively enthusiastic about something or fixated. For example, the group was fanatical about the movie. The political party had large fanatical support from this region. The fanatical minds of the environmental organization disagreed with the proposed strategy. So next time someone is obsessive about or fixated on something, why not use the word fanatical instead? Deprecate. Deprecate. To deprecate means to belittle, criticize, or disparage. For example, they deprecated the value of animated movies. The writer deprecated the contributions of two scientists. We were infuriated as we heard her deprecate the value of our work. So next time someone belittles or criticizes something or someone else, why not use the word deprecate instead? Complacent. Complacent. Complacent means self-satisfied with one's achievement in an uncritical way. Or smug. For example, 
the officers could not afford to be complacent with internet security. The family became complacent with their help and had to work twice as hard to get back to their previous fitness state. The complacent workers lost momentum and it was visible in their performance. So next time someone is self-satisfied with one's achievement in an uncritical way or smug, why not use the word complacent instead? Inimical. Inimical. Inimical means unfriendly, hostile, or harmful, injurious. For example, even though sweets, desserts, and chocolates are delicious, eating too much can be inimical to one's health. The actions of the board were inimical to the interests of the company's employees. The agent found out about the inimical plan to destroy the building. So next time something is unfriendly, hostile, or harmful towards something else, why not use the word inimical instead? Paucity. Paucity. A paucity is a shortage or scarcity. For example, after the storm, there was a paucity of clean drinking water. The statisticians need to wait longer as there was a paucity of data from which to analyze. The paucity of buyers meant there were many products left on the shelf. So next time there is a shortage of something, why not use the word paucity instead? Hit the like. Connoisseur. Connoisseur. Connoisseur means a person with refined taste and judgment, or expert judge. For example, Aunt Wendy was a connoisseur of fine wines. We got helpful advice from the art connoisseur at the museum. Do you know any connoisseurs of paintings? So next time you refer to a person with refined taste and judgment, why not use the word connoisseur instead? Protagonist. Protagonist. A protagonist is the main character in a book, movie, or play, or leading role. For example, the protagonist lived with his family in a cottage. She played the protagonist in both films. In the book, the protagonist met a happy ending. So next time you refer to the leading role or the main character in a book, movie or play, why not use the word protagonist instead? Dispassionate. Dispassionate. Dispassionate means rational and impartial due to not being influenced by emotions, or objective, neutral. For example, the author made a dispassionate analysis of the situation. The guests had a dispassionate discussion about the political issues. Even though I was emotionally involved, my thoughts and actions were dispassionate. So next time someone or something is objective, neutral, rational or impartial, why not use the word dispassionate instead? Stoke. Stoke. To stoke means to add fuel to or to strengthen. For example, my uncle stoked the coals and barbecued the chicken. The current event stoked fears of violence. We avoided saying anything about it because it may stoke her anger about the issue. 
So next time something adds fuel or strengthens something else, why not use the word stoke instead? Extrapolate. Extrapolate. To extrapolate means to estimate based on known data or to extend. For example, the analyst extrapolated a trend from a large sample size. The task was to extrapolate the length of the room from the measurements given. The students extrapolated the number of stars in the solar system. So next time you estimate something based on known data, why not use the word extrapolate instead? Omniscient. Omniscient. Omniscient means all-knowing or all-seeing. For example, Santa Claus is considered to be omniscient for children. In many cultures, God is considered to be omniscient. The novel was in the voice of an omniscient narrator. So next time you refer to someone as all-knowing, why not use the word omniscient instead? Exemplify. Exemplify. To exemplify means to serve as a good example or to represent. For example, I read a paper that exemplifies servant leadership. The song exemplified the loving relationship between siblings. The products exemplify the spirit of Christmas. So next time something serves as a good example or represents something else, why not use the word exemplify instead? Scintilla. Scintilla. A scintilla is a speck or a tiny trace. For example, there wasn't a scintilla of doubt in her eyes. It was unfortunate that there was not a scintilla of truth in what he said. As much as the detectives searched, there wasn't a scintilla of evidence against the company. So next time you refer to a tiny trace or speck of something, why not use the word scintilla instead? Exculpate. Exculpate. To exculpate means to show that someone is not guilty of wrongdoing. Or pardon, acquit. For example, the man was exculpated from the theft charge. The proof exculpated the minister from the charges. She was exculpated from the accusations by the witnesses' testimonies. So next time someone is pardoned, or it is shown that someone is not guilty of wrongdoing, why not use the word exculpate instead? Lukewarm. Lukewarm. Lukewarm means slightly warm, tepid, or unenthusiastic, indifferent. For example, I got away for a few minutes and ended up drinking lukewarm tea instead. James was lukewarm about the project action plan. The baker dissolved the yeast in lukewarm water and mixed a tablespoon of sugar into the mixture. So next time something is slightly warm or someone is unenthusiastic about something, why not use the word lukewarm instead? Insurgent. Insurgent. Insurgent means rebellious 
or rioting. For example, the insurgent protesters were arrested. Insurgent forces gained support in the region. The teachers found great difficulty in dealing with the insurgent teenagers. So next time you refer to something that's rebellious or rioting, why not use the word insurgent instead? Palatable. Palatable. Palatable means tasty, edible, or flavorful. For example, we ate my grandmother's palatable apple pie. The script was palatable to a diversified audience. The chef proved that healthy foods can also be palatable. So next time something is tasty, edible or flavorful, why not use the word palatable instead? Idiosyncrasy Idiosyncrasy An idiosyncrasy is something peculiar or unique to a person or mannerism, quirk, peculiarity. For example, her idiosyncrasy was adding milk to her herbal tea. Every region had its idiosyncrasies, festivities and slangs. The painting was a work of Egyptian idiosyncrasy. So next time you refer to something peculiar or unique to a person, why not use the word idiosyncrasy instead? Unfrock. Unfrock. To unfrock means to deprive a priest from authority or rank, or to dismiss someone from a profession. Defrock. For example, the priest was unfrocked due to the inappropriate behavior. The president was unfrocked after the company's mistakes. They refused to unfrock the priest because there was no evidence of the accusations. So next time a priest is deprived from a rank or someone is dismissed from a profession, why not use the word unfrock instead? Conflagration. Conflagration. Conflagration is an extensive large fire or blaze, firestorm. For example, the conflagration caused the death of many wild animals. The conflagration spread rapidly through the forest. It took weeks before the conflagration in the forest was put out. So next time you refer to an extensive large fire or firestorm, why not use the word conflagration instead? Prudent. Prudent. Prudent means wise, cautious, or advisable. For example, the central bank thought it would be prudent to raise interest rates at this point in time. It was prudent for her to take that route. They agreed to go with option two because they thought it was more prudent to do so. So next time something is advisable, wise or cautious, why not use the word prudent instead? Eulogy. Eulogy. Eulogy means speech of praise, commendation or accolade. For example, the priest delivered a heartfelt eulogy. The song was a eulogy for parental love. The crowd chanted the eulogy of the brave soldiers. So next time you refer to a speech of praise or commendation, why not use the word eulogy instead? 
Mercurial. Mercurial. Mercurial means volatile, temperamental, or unstable, fickle, changeable. For example, my uncle had few friends because of his mercurial temperament. We were frustrated because of the mercurial actions of the group. The teacher was concerned about the students' mercurial behavior. So next time something or someone is volatile, temperamental, or changeable, why not use the word mercurial instead? Portend. Portend. To portend means to be a sign or warning of something, or foretell a prophecy. For example, we wondered what these strange events portend. The article described what the analysts portended for the economic future of the country. The old man across the street said that the shell portend good luck. So next time someone foretells something or an object or event is considered to be a sign or warning of something, why not use the word portend instead? Presentiment. Presentiment. A presentiment means a feeling or intuition that something might happen in the future, or premonition, foreboding. For example, I had a presentiment that the container would fall off the table. My grandfather said he had a presentiment that this is what society would become. The patient had a presentiment that the doctor would tell her some good news. So next time you have a feeling or intuition that something might happen in the future, why not use the word presentiment instead? Rebuttal. Rebuttal. Rebuttal means denial or refutation. For example, the speaker listed point by point rebuttal of the accusations. The rebuttal took place yesterday. The rebuttal was very convincing. So next time there is a denial or refutation, why not use the word rebuttal instead? Diffident. Diffident. Diffident means lacking self-confidence, shy, or modest, bashful. For example, Andrea was diffident, but her brother was confident. Tom was an intelligent, hardworking, and diffident employee. She never spoke about her achievements because she was diffident about her success. So next time someone lacks confidence and is shy, why not use the word diffident instead? Finesse. Finesse. Finesse means skill, expertise, or panache. For example, the play lacked finesse, so ticket sales dropped. The hiring manager looked for someone with finesse rather than someone with enthusiasm who is not backed by impactful work. We admired his finesse at playing chess. So next time you refer to someone's skill or expertise, why not use the word finesse instead? Pro Prodigious. Prodigious. Prodigious means very large, enormous, or remarkable. For example, the prodigious pianist played a masterpiece on stage. The cost of the industrial machine was a prodigious amount. 
The tables were laid with prodigious quantities of food for the ceremony. So next time something is very large or remarkable, why not use the word prodigious instead? Proclivity. Proclivity. Proclivity is a tendency or inclination, or disposition, propensity. For example, my brother has a proclivity for analyzing trends. Anna has a proclivity to misbalance if she is holding something, so she never applied for a job as a waitress. James has a proclivity for taking risk, so he read the business news regularly. So next time someone has a tendency for something, why not use the word proclivity instead? Synoptic. Synoptic. Synoptic means concise or compressed. For example, they employed the synoptic strategy. We compared our observations with the synoptic facts. The team put together a synoptic overview of the project's status. So next time something is concise or compressed, why not use the word synoptic instead? Annex. Annex. Annex means to add, attach, join, or to append. For example, the diagram was annexed in Appendix A. Please annex last year's report at the end of this document. The lecturer requested we annex the references at the end of the research paper. So next time you refer to adding, attaching, or appending something, particularly to a document, why not use the word annex instead? Obsequious. Obsequious. Obsequious means excessively obedient or attentive to someone with the intent to please or servile, submissive. For example, an obsequious waiter placed the glass of water on the table and left the room with his head looking downward and a constant smile on his face. The group was obsequious to people in power. We were amazed at the action of the obsequious businesswoman. So next time someone is excessively obedient or attentive to someone else with the intent to please, why not use the word obsequious instead? Exhaustive. Exhaustive. Exhaustive means thorough and complete or all-inclusive, comprehensive. For example, over the past couple of months, I completed an exhaustive study of the topic. My aunt underwent exhaustive tests over the past few weeks. Please find an exhaustive list of articles attached in the mail. So next time something is thorough and complete, why not use the word exhaustive instead? Hit the like button. Cogent. Cogent. Cogent means well argued with clear, logical persuasion, or coherent, convincing, lucid. For example, the lawyer put forward cogent arguments for the case. The cogent appeal moved some members of the jury. They presented cogent data for the business recommendation. So next time something is well argued with clear, logical persuasion, why not use the word cogent instead? Hit the like. Recant. Recant. 
To recant means to renounce one's opinion or belief, or to retract or disavow. For example, she recanted her statement to avoid imprisonment. He was strong-willed and would not recant. The senator urged for her team to recant. So next time you say that you no longer hold an opinion or belief or retract your opinion, why not use the word recant instead? Hit the like. Epistemology. Epistemology. Epistemology means the theory of knowledge relating to scope, methods, and validity. For example, we compared past epistemology and contemporary epistemology. The professor discussed one of the concepts in epistemology. The proponents of virtue epistemology were present at the conference. So next time you refer to the theory of knowledge relating to scope, methods, and validity, why not use the word epistemology instead? Hit the like. Poised. Poised. Poised means calm, composed, collected, or self-assured. For example, we gazed at her graceful and poised movements in water. The poised young man was never pessimistic. The bird poised in mid-air overlooking the garden. So next time someone or something is calm and composed or collected, why not use the word poised instead? Inebriation. Inebriation. Inebriation means drunkenness or intoxication. For example, the group at the corner of the bar drank until they were in an advanced state of inebriation. She tried to forget about her concern through inebriation. We pitied our neighbor because his constant inebriation costed him his savings. So next time someone is in the state of drunkenness or intoxication, why not use the word inebriation instead? Pertinent. Pertinent. Pertinent means relevant, applicable, or suitable. For example, the student asked a pertinent question about the chapter. My nephew knew pertinent facts about dinosaurs. The teacher described the pertinent points and listed them on the blackboard. So next time something is relevant or applicable, why not use the word pertinent instead? Truncate. Truncate. To truncate means to shorten, trim, or to reduce. For example, they truncated the program to fit the scheduled time. The discussion between the managers was truncated when the employee entered the room. The hockey player's sporting career was truncated by the injuries he received last year during the game. So next time something is shortened or trimmed, why not use the word truncated instead? Apocryphal. Apocryphal. Apocryphal means of doubtful origin, especially of a statement or story that has been circulated as true, or fictitious, fabricated. For example, don't believe any of the stories you hear about him because they are apocryphal. 
the apocryphal statements were bizarre. An apocryphal story about an argument circulated on social media. So next time a story or statement is fictitious or fabricated, why not use the word apocryphal instead? Misanthropy. Misanthropy. Misanthropy means dislike of mankind or cynicism and antisocial behavior. For example, Aaron's misanthropy impeded his success. Her challenges with bullies in her childhood increased her misanthropy. Even though the character has some misanthropy instilled in him, he channeled his negative energy into creating something useful for mankind. So next time someone dislikes humankind, why not use the word misanthropy instead? Variegated. Variegated. Variegated means multicolored or colorful. For example, last fall, the family drove a few miles away to see the scenic variegated leaves in the park. The variegated wall brightened the room and added life to the space. My father is fond of variegated plants. So next time something is multicolored, why not use the word variegated instead? Drawl. Drawl. To drawl means to speak slowly with prolonged vowel sounds. For example, she came back with an accent which included an intermittent drawl. Mark is the gentleman who speaks with a southern drawl. That's right, the old man drawled slowly. So next time someone speaks slowly with prolonged vowel sounds, why not use the word drawl instead? Petulant. Petulant. Petulant means sulky in a childish way bad-tempered, or peevish. For example, when my sister came home from school, she was petulant. My baby brother looked petulant when he sat on the sofa. When the toddler did not get what he wanted, he was petulant for days. So next time someone is sulky in a childish way, bad-tempered, or peevish, why not use the word petulant instead? Saccharin. Saccharin. Saccharin is a synthetic compound used as a substitute for sugar. For example, we looked for saccharin at the coffee shop. The label included saccharin as the source of sweetness. He could tell the difference in taste between saccharin and sugar. So next time you refer to a synthetic compound used as a substitute for sugar, why not use the word saccharin instead? Punctilious. Punctilious. Punctilious means meticulous, diligent, or showing great attention to detail. For example, the punctilious execution of the strategy was commendable. The punctilious scientists found the cure for the disease. They found the disparity through punctilious work and sleepless nights. So next time someone is meticulous, diligent and shows great attention to detail, why not use the word punctilious instead? Anodyne. Anodyne. Anodyne means deliberately inoffensive or neutral, innocuous, blonde. For example, 
He could sense the tension between the sisters, so he tried to keep the conversation as anodyne as possible. The book included more anodyne discussion about the issues. Even though the senator made anodyne comments to the press, behind closed doors, he was quite offensive. So next time someone is deliberately inoffensive, why not use the word anodyne instead? Exasperated. Exasperated. Exasperated means frustrated, irritated, or infuriated. For example, Vernon Dudley was exasperated when Harry Potter used magic in the muggle world. My 12-year-old sister was exasperated by my baby brother's cries. My cousin's erratic behavior exasperated my aunt. So next time someone is frustrated or irritated about something, why not use the word exasperated instead? Coercion. Coercion. A coercion is a force or threat made to persuade someone to do something. Or oppression, duress. For example, the bank manager gave the thieves a bag of money under coercion and intimidation. The group used coercion to overthrow the government in 1987. There was no evidence of coercion used in the negotiation. So next time you refer to force, threats, oppression or duress used to persuade someone to do something, why not use the word coercion instead? Pellucid. Pellucid. Pellucid means transparent, clear, or easily understood. For example, we looked down from the boat and saw the coral reef through the pellucid waters. His pellucid statements provided great clarity to his listeners. The pellucid air was crisp and refreshing. So next time something is transparent, clear, or easily understood, why not use the word pellucid instead? Sparse. Sparse. Sparse means scarce, meager, or thinly distributed. For example, the single father's sparse income was too little to support his family and friends. We drove from the city to the village and passed by sparse vegetation and mountains. We reached ahead of schedule because traffic was sparse on the highway. So next time something is meager or scarce, why not use the word sparse instead? Torpid. Torpid. Torpid means sluggish, inactive, stagnant, or lethargic. For example, we felt torpid after we ate the heavy lunch. The iguanas lay torpid in the sun on the rock. Months after the death of his son, he continued to feel torpid, so he visited a therapist. So next time you feel sluggish or lethargic, why not use the word torpid instead? Torpid. Torpid. Torpid means sluggish, inactive, stagnant, or lethargic. For example, we felt torpid after we ate the heavy lunch. The iguanas lay torpid in the sun on the rock. Months after the death of his son, he continued to feel torpid, so he visited a therapist. So next time you feel sluggish or lethargic, 
Why not use the word torpid instead? Infamous. Infamous. Infamous means well known for something bad, or disreputable, ill-famed, notorious. For example, the man was infamous for stealing from the neighborhood. She was a member of the infamous gang. The region was infamous for violence, drugs, and gangs. So next time someone is well known for something bad, why not use the word infamous instead? Summon. Summon. Summon means to order someone to come to a particular place, or to call upon for a specified action. For example, you only need to say our pet dog's name, Fluffy, to summon him. She was summoned to Washington D.C. for financial consultation. The Avenger summoned the mutant to the portal. So next time you need to call upon someone. Why not use the word "summon" instead? Milia. Milia. Milia is a person's social environment or setting, background. For example, he grew up in an agricultural milia. The book discussed issues about the social and political milia of. Europe in the 19th century. Nathan lives and works in an academic milieu. So next time you refer to someone's social environment, why not use the word milieu instead? Hit the like. Innovate. Innovate. To innovate means to introduce or create something new, such as ideas, methods, techniques. For example, the company's ability to innovate and offer products to customers quickly and effectively contributed to its success. Last year, I worked with the team to innovate some new designs. The company put aside millions of dollars to research and innovate each year. So next time you introduce or create something new, such as ideas, methods, or techniques, why not use the word "innovate" instead? Officious. Officious. Officious means domineering, intrusive, or meddlesome. For example, the officious workers pushed us around the office. He didn't have many friends because he was considered to be an officious man. She was embarrassed and ashamed after the officials' treatment she received from the group. So next time someone or something is domineering and intrusive, why not use the word "officious" instead? Hit the like and subscribe. Discursive. Discursive. Discursive means digressing from one topic to another, or long-winded, indirect. For example, the student's speech was discursive. The discursive style of writing made the novel lose its impact. Mom said my essay was discursive, and she felt she read one point after the next. Without much flow between each point. So next time you digress from one topic to another, why not use the word discursive instead? Inductee. Inductee. An inductee is a recruit, or someone admitted into an organization. For example. She was one of the first inductees in the institution. 
the inductee spoke at the lunch today. The inductees introduced themselves to the team. So next time you talk about a recruit, why not use the word inductee instead? Malign. Malign. Malign means evil in nature, spiteful, or harmful, malevolent. For example, the group had a malign influence on the child. The government investigated the malign organization. Behind his kind facade were malign intentions to take over the company. So next time someone or something is evil in nature or malevolent, why not use the word malign instead? Hit the like. Protean. Protean. Protean means changeable or shifting. For example, she was a valuable asset to the company because of her protean skills and talents. The man used protean tactics to avoid an argument. The doctor explained the protean nature of the disorder. So next time someone or something is changeable, why not use the word protean instead? Diffuse. Diffuse. To diffuse means to spread out or to scatter or disperse. For example, to diffuse the tension in the meeting, we took a lunch break. The mayor strategized on how to diffuse electricity throughout the village. The nutrients diffused into the soil. So next time something spreads out or scatters, why not use the word diffuse instead? Hit the like. Inquest. Inquest. An inquest is a judicial inquiry to find the facts about something. Or investigation probe. For example, they had an inquest into the crimes that were committed. An inquest was held on the workers' poor performance. The inquest puts a stop to all of the rumors. So next time you refer to a judicial inquiry to find the facts about something, why not use the word inquest instead? Perdition. Perdition. Perdition means eternal, punishment, damnation, or spiritual destruction. For example, they felt their actions were leading them on the path to perdition. He trembled when he heard the word perdition. He committed countless acts of kindness and selfless community service in the hopes of avoiding perdition. So next time you refer to eternal punishment, damnation, or spiritual destruction, why not use the word perdition instead? Substantiate. Substantiate. To substantiate means to prove, give supporting evidence, or support, justify. For example, the detectives found evidence to substantiate the leader of the gang. These were based on unsubstantiated rumors. These were the reasons put forward to substantiate the claim. So next time someone proves or justifies something, why not use the word substantiate instead? Eloquent. Eloquent. Eloquent means persuasive and fluent 
in speech or articulate. For example, my brother's eloquent explanation cajoled my father into letting us go to the concert with our friends. Her eloquent speech caused everyone at the dinner to donate towards the organization. The article made an eloquent appeal to save the forest and wildlife in the small town. So next time something is persuasive and fluent in speech, why not use the word eloquence instead? Hit the like. Caustic. Caustic. Caustic means burning, corrosive, or harsh. For example, Ken used a caustic cleaner in the washroom. We ignored her caustic comment. The article was a caustic attack on the couple. So next time something is burning, corrosive, or harsh, why not use the word caustic instead? Hit the like. Scale. Scale. To scale means to climb, go up, or to ascend. For example, the climbers scaled to the top of the mountain half a day. She scaled the corporate ladder in less than 10 years. We looked on as the lizard scaled the tree. So next time someone or something climbs or goes up, why not use the word scale instead? Compliant. Compliant. Compliant means obedient or submissive, easy to control. For example, sheep are known to be compliant animals. Most of the team members were compliant in nature. You were surprised that the toddler was compliant. So next time someone is inclined to obey rules, why not use the word compliant instead? Toady. Toady. A toady is a person who is excessively obedient or attentive to an important person. Or flatterer, doormat. For example, I am not a toady and I will not behave in a deceptive manner. We were amazed at the number of toadies in the industry. I squirmed as I saw him master the art of being a toady. So next time you refer to a flatterer, why not use the word toady instead? Disdain. Disdain. Disdain means scorn, contempt, or condescension, disrespect. For example, they looked at her with disdain when he made the remark. Tom was hurt to see that the manager treated his father with disdain. She raised her eyebrows and turned her lips in disdain when the old lady passed by. So next time you refer to scorn, condescension, or disrespect, why not use the word disdain instead? Derogatory. Derogatory. Derogatory means belittling, disparaging, or demeaning. For example, Tom gasped after hearing the derogatory remarks she made about him. This is a derogatory term and we must avoid using it. The manager called him into the office 
after the derogatory comment he made in the meeting. So next time something is belittling, disparaging, or demeaning, why not use the word derogatory instead? Restorative. Restorative. Restorative means something like a medicine or drink that has the ability to restore health or a tonic. For example, this can be used as a restorative. I'm looking forward to my vacation as it will be a perfect restorative. I took the restorative and was back to work the next day. So next time you refer to a tonic or something that has the ability to restore health, why not use the word restorative instead? Hit them. Assuage. Assuage. To assuage means to calm, alleviate, or to relieve. For example, the police did what they could to assuage my grandmother's fears about the neighbor's dog. The father tried to assuage his crying toddler. The speech was an attempt to assuage her critics. So next time you try to calm, alleviate, or relieve something or someone, why not use the word assuage instead? Quiescence. Quiescence. A quiescence is a period of inactivity or dormancy. For example, during the pandemic, there was a long period of quiescence on the streets. The country experienced 20 years of quiescence when it came to riots. We enjoyed the quiescence this past month. So next time you refer to a period of inactivity or dormancy, why not use the word quiescence instead? Succinct. Succinct. Succinct means brief, clear, or concise, laconic. For example, she replied confidently with a succinct statement. The succinct announcement did not provide an explanation for what was happening. He provided succinct responses during the interview. So next time something is brief and clear, why not use the word succinct instead? Verbose. Verbose. Verbose means wordy or long-winded, loquacious. For example, I was verbose, but my sister was succinct. Henry's essay was too verbose, so his teacher asked him to rewrite it. The newspaper had too many verbose articles. So next time someone is wordy or long-winded, why not use the word verbose instead? Inveterate. Inveterate. Inveterate means habitual, addicted, or committed, deep-seated. For example, Ken was an inveterate traveler who was a great person from which to get advice regarding exciting tourist attractions. The inveterate bird watchers knew the names of all the types of birds in the neighborhood. Her inveterate pride led to a deadlock. So next time something is habitual, addicted, or deep-seated, why not use the word inveterate instead? Unfettered. Unfettered. Unfettered means free, unrestrained, 
or unconstrained. For example, everyone had an unfettered opportunity to access the library. The children looked at the unfettered balloon drifting in the air. The group encouraged unfettered communication among themselves. So next time something is unrestrained or free, why not use the word unfettered instead? Rotund. Rotund. Rotund means plump, chubby, or round. For example, the pixies brought out a rotund cauldron from the room. His rotund physique was apparent in the picture as he stood next to his slim brothers. I looked in the mirror and saw my rotund body. So next time someone or something is plump, chubby and round, why not use the word rotund instead? Dross 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 means something regarded as worthless or debris, rubbish. For example, before she wrote a magnificent piece, she wrote many pieces she regarded as dross. The real estate broker suggested that the cream of the crop sells within a week, but the dross takes months to be sold. The critic thought that 98% of the applications were dross and only 2% were worth looking into. So next time something is regarded as worthless, why not use the word dross instead? Pundit. Pundit. A pundit is an expert of a particular field or a specialist. For example, the political pundits anticipated a win for this party. Today's discussion among pundits did not result in a conclusion or strategy to move forward. If the economics pundits are correct, there will be a slump in the real estate market. So next time you refer to an expert of a particular field, why not use the word pundit instead? Legend Legend. A legend is the key to a map, or myth, saga, or story. For example, the ancient legend says that he is the strongest minotaur that existed. We looked for the legend below the map. The filmmaker is focusing on important details in the Greek legend. So next time you refer to the key to a map or a myth, why not use the word legend instead? Traverse. Traverse. To traverse means to move across or pass over. For example, we traversed the cities of Dubai and Sharjah. Many trains traversed the town. We were fascinated by how my father traversed the network of highways in one day. So next time you move across or pass over something, why not use the word traverse instead? Arable. Arable. Arable means fertile, productive, or farmable. For example, the farmer owned 10 acres of arable land. 
the arable land was used to grow corn. The government invested in ways to increase the arable land in the country. So next time something is fertile or farmable, why not use the word arable instead? Mallet. Mallet. A mallet is a wooden hammer. For example, the carpenter used the mallet when he made the box. They found a mallet on the floor of the basement. The archaeologists found a mallet and other ancient tools buried deep inside the rocks. So next time you refer to a wooden hammer, why not use the word mallet instead? Hit the like. Discern. Discern. To discern means to distinguish something from something else. Or to recognize, perceive, or differentiate. For example, the police found difficulty in discerning the truth. Parents attempt to teach their children how to discern between right and wrong. Even though I found it difficult to discern initially, I was finally able to see it clearly after some time. So next time you distinguish between one thing and another, why not use the word discern instead? Assiduous. Assiduous. Assiduous means showing great perseverance or thorough, diligent. For example, the assiduous student aced the test. The assiduous employees worked long hours over the past few days. The analysts were assiduous in identifying all the factors that affected the change. So next time someone shows great perseverance, is thorough or diligent, why not use the word assiduous instead? Hit the like and subscribe. Ribald. Ribald. Ribald means indecent or referring to sensual matters in an amusing or coarse way. For example, they laughed at the ribald remarks. We overheard the many ribald jokes they made at the other table in the club. The professor urged that no ribald comments be written on the discussion forum. So next time you refer to something indecent or reference to sensual matters in an amusing or coarse way, why not use the word ribald instead? Braggart. Braggart. A braggart is a person who boasts or a bragger, boaster, show off. For example, no one took him seriously because he was a talkative braggart. We were amazed at the braggart because every response was self-centered, even if the question asked about someone else. Don't be a braggart. So next time you meet a boaster or bragger, why not use the word braggart instead? Expatriate. Expatriate. An expatriate is a person who does not live in their native country. Or refugee, emigrant. For example, we conversed with the expatriate who was born in Ukraine. Head
Henry lived as an expatriate in Japan and then returned to his home country in France. The expatriate lived in the house next to the church. So next time you refer to a person who does not live in their native country, why not use the word expatriate instead? Unwitting. Unwitting. Unwitting means unintentional or unaware. For example, the child apologized for the unwitting mistake made at the playground. Evidence showed that Mark was an unwitting accomplice. Grandma made many unwitting interruptions during our conversation. So next time something or someone is unintentional or unaware, why not use the word unwitting instead? Urge. Urge. Urge means to strongly advise someone to do something or to try to persuade someone to do something. For example, the teachers urged the students to wash their hands before eating. Professor Dumbledore urged Cornelius to see reason when assessing Harry Potter's case. Mom urged us to wear sunscreen before going outside to play. So next time you need to strongly advise someone to do something, why not use the word urge instead? Economical. Economical. Economical means reasonable or giving good value or service in relation to the amount of money, time, or effort spent. For example, we thought it was more economical to book the vacation package because it included the hotel, food, and activities for the same price. This car is more economical because of its fuel usage. She was economical with her money because she bought in bulk instead of shopping in smaller quantities. So next time you think something is reasonable in relation to the amount of money, time, or effort spent, why not use the word economical instead? Archaic. Archaic. Archaic means old-fashioned, ancient, or obsolete, outdated. For example, the museum displayed archaic machines used in the 19th century. The archaic methods used in the prison shocked us. One example of an archaic word is thou, which means you. So next time when something is old-fashioned or outdated, why not use the word archaic instead? Truculent. Truculent. Truculent means quick to argue or fight, or argumentative, feisty, combative. For example, she didn't have much friends because she was truculent and sometimes violent. We stayed away from the truculent group. They expected such behavior from such a truculent person. So next time someone is quick to argue or fight, why not use the word truculent instead? Burgeon. Burgeon. To burgeon means to prosper or flourish. For example, the flowers burgeoned in the garden. 
technological companies burgeoned in the city because of the attractive policies. We smiled as we talked about how the couple's love burgeoned over time. So next time something prospers or flourishes, why not use the word burgeon instead? Hit the like. Stayed. Stayed. Stayed means quiet, serious-minded, or sedate, conventional. For example, the staid couple were generous and warm-hearted. The staid group listened attentively. The promoter aims to change the staid image of the lecturer into a more glamorous image. So next time someone is quiet or serious-minded, why not use the word staid instead? Hit the like. Attenuate. Attenuate. To attenuate means to weaken or reduce in force or amplitude. For example, the software allowed the engineer to attenuate the surrounding noise. The medicine was expected to attenuate the growth of the disease. The Grinch's negativity was attenuated when he was embraced with warmth and kindness. So next time something weakens or reduces the force of something else, why not use the word attenuate instead? Divest. Divest. To divest means to remove, take off, or deprive or strip. For example, they considered carefully how they would divest their responsibilities. The mobsters divested him of his jacket. The ruler's power was divested after the war. So next time someone removes something, why not use the word divest instead? Salient. Salient. Salient means important, noticeable, or outstanding, noteworthy. For example, the summary include three salient points. He gave me a tour of the museum, pointing out salient items. Time was short, so he took note of the salient features of the machine. So next time you refer to someone that is important or noteworthy, why not use the word salient instead? Hit the like. Cloture. Cloture. Cloture means terminating a debate by voting or closure. For example, the majority of the members of parliament voted for cloture. Yesterday marked the cloture of the third annual anniversary of the act. They are speculating about how many senators would favor the cloture. So next time you refer to terminating a debate by voting, why not use the word cloture instead? Hit the like. Umbridge. Umbridge. Umbridge means offense or annoyance. For example, he took umbrage at the remarks about his weight. She seemed to take umbrage about everything. Many took umbrage at the statements she made in her address. So next time someone takes offense at something, why not use the word umbrage instead?
buttress. Buttress. To buttress means to strengthen, support, or reinforce. For example, the data buttressed the hypotheses. The minister included strategies to buttress her influence in the area. The contractor buttressed the wall as it began to lean forward. So next time you strengthen or support something, why not use the word buttress instead? Edify. Edify. To edify means to instruct or enlighten someone intellectually or morally. Or to educate, instruct. For example, the books edified us in classical poetry. Tim was responsible for edifying us on the topic over a four-week period. Sarah said that her travels edified her in cultures around the world she would have otherwise not understood by solely reading books. So next time someone or something educates or enlightens you about something else, why not use the word edify instead? Clamor. Clamor. To clamor means to shout loudly, scream, or yell. For example, the protesters clamored for safer working conditions. A crowd of teenagers at the front of the stage clamored for attention. The children clamored in the park as the ice cream truck passed by. So next time someone shouts loudly or screams, why not use the word clamor instead? Lofty. Lofty. Lofty means high or tall. For example, the head office was surrounded by lofty walls. They aimed to climb the lofty mountain. She was known to have lofty ideals. So next time something is high or tall, why not use the word lofty instead? Hit the like. Vivacity. Vivacity. Vivacity means liveliness, sparkle, or effervescence. For example, they admired each other's vivacity and beauty. She felt as if her brother got all of her mother's vivacity while she was left with none. The character's intelligence, bravery, and vivacity won the hearts of many readers. So next time you refer to someone's liveliness, sparkle or effervescence, why not use the word vivacity instead? Nexus. Nexus. Nexus means connection or union link. For example, we analyzed the nexus between the healthy industry and the government. The author discussed the nexus between media and politics. There was a clear nexus between education and income. So next time you refer to a connection or link, why not use the word nexus instead? Hit the like button. Idol. Idol. Idol means... A moment, incident, or story of a peaceful and ideal setting. Or a perfect time, ideal time, or moment of bliss. For example, whenever he felt hopeless, he thought back at his idol and regained hope. 
she always considered that place as an idol. But when she returned years later, it was not the idol she thought about. Our idol was broken into pieces when we heard a loud bang outside our door. So next time you think about a perfect time or moment of bliss, why not use the word idol instead? Cherry 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 means cautious, wary, or reluctant. For example, people were cherry of traveling during the pandemic. We saw the dog cherry of touching the water. She was cherry of giving her opinion. So next time someone is cautious or wary about something, why not use the word cherry instead? Hit the like. Feasible. Feasible. Feasible means possible or practical. For example, she gave three feasible solutions from which to choose. It was not feasible to go by car because the road was blocked. While this may be feasible, it does not match the goals of the company. So next time something is possible or practical, why not use the word feasible instead? Hit the like. Bristle. Bristle. To bristle means to get angry or to show irritation. For example, Aunt Mina bristled at the naughtiness of the children. Many bristled at the policies they passed. John bristled at the criticism he received about his work. So next time someone gets angry at something or someone else, why not use the word bristle instead? Hit the like. Gall. Gall. Gall means bold and disrespectful behavior or audacity insolence. For example, we were infuriated because she had the gall to say she was my friend after she deceived me. After all that the company provided to them, they had the gall to complain. We were shocked that he had the gall to ask for money. So next time you refer to audacity or insolence, why not use the word gall instead? Disparity. Disparity. Disparity means discrepancy, inconsistency, or inequality. For example, the analyst tried to find the reason for the disparity between the two numbers. We noted the blatant disparity that existed in the education system. The protest outside the building focused on reducing income disparity. So next time there is a discrepancy, inconsistency or inequality between two things, why not use the word disparity instead? Phalanx. Phalanx. A phalanx is a group of officers standing closely or moving closely together. For example, we saw a phalanx of armed guards outside the bank. The thieves unexpectedly ran into a phalanx of police officers. A phalanx of soldiers rescued the people on the island. 
So next time you refer to a group of officers standing closely or moving closely together, why not use the word phalanx instead? Hit the like. Archetype. Archetype. An archetype is a classical or typical example of a person or thing. Or prototype. For example, he is the archetype of a celebrity author. The song is a perfect archetype of the genre. Use this archetype as a guide to writing your paper. So next time you refer to a prototype or a classical example of something, why not use the word archetype instead? Circuitous. Circuitous. Circuitous means indirect or winding. For example, my sister felt nauseated during the circuitous route up the mountain. There was no outcome at the end of the meeting because of the circuitous discussion. We took a circuitous route to avoid traffic. So next time something is indirect or winding, why not use the word circuitous instead? Trinket. Trinket. A trinket is an ornament of little value or knick-knack. For example, we went to the mall to shop for trinkets. The decorators placed different trinkets around the tree. I bought a few trinkets from the island. So next time you refer to an ornament of little value or knick-knack, why not use the word trinket instead? Horn. Horn. To horn means to sharpen or wet. For example, she studied three hours daily to hone her skills in the subject. The farmer honed the blade of the knife to cut the plants. Let's speak in English for half an hour a day to hone our conversation skills. So next time someone sharpens something else, why not use the word hone instead? Beguile. Beguile. To beguile means to mislead with charm, lure, or to enchant. For example, she was beguiled by her charming smile. The old man was beguiled by the seemingly innocent laughter of the child. The children's stories were perfect for the teachers to beguile their students into learning about morals and values. So next time someone misleads, enchants, or charms someone else, why not use the word beguile instead? Oust. Oust. To oust means to remove or push out from a position, or to expel or get rid of. For example, the citizens wanted to oust the dictator, but they fared for their lives, so they did nothing about it. They needed more votes to oust the leader of the political party. The activists wanted to oust the highest selling product from shelves because of the negative environmental impact. So next time someone is removed from a position, why not use the word oust instead? Ignoble. Ignoble. Ignoble means dishonorable, unworthy, 
or shameful, contemptible. For example, they were incentivized by an ignoble cause. He tried to control his ignoble feelings of greed and jealousy. Many soldiers regarded the fear of death as ignoble. So next time you refer to something as dishonorable or shameful, why not use the word ignoble instead? Expedite. Expedite. To expedite means to make faster, speed up, or to accelerate. For example, the contractors expedited the work to complete the project on time. The software will expedite the process. Tom called a meeting to discuss ways we can expedite the matters. So next time you want to speed up or accelerate something, why not use the word expedite instead? Articulate. Articulate. Articulate means able to speak fluently, coherently, and clearly. Or lucid, eloquent, understandable. For example, she replied confidently with an articulate statement. The announcement did not provide an articulate explanation of what was happening. He provided articulate responses during the interview. So next time someone is able to speak fluently, coherently, and clearly, why not use the word articulate instead? Vociferous. Vociferous. Vociferous means outspoken, vocal, or forthright. For example, she was vociferous in her demands. They engaged in a vociferous debate. He was a vociferous supporter of the strategy. So next time someone is outspoken, vocal, or forthright, why not use the word vociferous instead? Capitulate. Capitulate. To capitulate means to surrender, give into, or back down. For example, the emperor was asked to capitulate to the terms or face an attack. She refused to capitulate to the unpleasant and violent behavior. Tom capitulated to the demands of the thieves. So next time someone surrenders or gives in to something, why not use the word capitulate instead? Upbraid. Upbraid. To upbraid means to scold, tell off, or reprimand. For example, the teacher upbraided the students for skipping school yesterday. We overheard him upbraid his sons for stealing money from the jar. I expected to be upbraided for my unpunctual behavior. So next time someone scolds or tells someone off, why not use the word upbraid instead? Decathlon. Decathlon. A decathlon is an athletic competition with 10 events. For example, he was the first person from his city to win the decathlon. Jane trained intensively for years to participate in the decathlon. The decathlon included 10 different events which took place within two days. So next time you refer to an athletic competition with 10 events, 
why not use the word decathlon instead? Malediction. Malediction. Malediction means a curse or a spell or damnation to bring about evil or destruction. For example, the old lady mumbled maledictions as she looked at the thieves. The tale detailed the effect of the maledictions. In the tale, Beauty and the Beast, an enchantress put a malediction on the prince that he would be a beast until he learned to love another and received love in return. So next time you refer to a curse or a spell or damnation to bring about evil or destruction, why not use the word malediction instead? Belie. Belie. Belie means to contradict or be at odds with, disapprove. For example, the smile he wore belied the sorrow he felt. Her appearance may have belied reality for a few days, but her attitude and responses reveal her true treacherous intentions. My uncle's active movements and daily exercise routine belied his age. So next time you contradict something else, why not use the word belie instead? Collusion. Collusion. A collusion is a secret and illegal conspiracy usually to deceive others. Or plotting, scheming. For example... There was evidence of collusion between the large oil companies. The press accused the government of collusion with the manufacturers. They created laws and policies to make it impossible for collusion to take place. So next time you refer to a secret and illegal conspiracy plotting, or scheming usually to deceive others, why not use the word collusion instead? Hit the like. Quotidian. Quotidian. Quotidian means day-to-day -day routine or daily average. For example, I bought quotidian kitchen utensils today. The internet has become part of our quotidian existence. The surprise brightened up our quotidian train ride. So next time something is day to day, why not use the word quotidian instead? Congeal. Congeal. To congeal means to coagulate, thicken or solidify. For example, it took a few days for the blood to congeal around the cut. When the chef added the two ingredients and mixed it thoroughly, it congealed into a sticky substance. The congealed fat on the plate was easily removed with dishwashing soap and hot water. So next time something coagulates, thickens, or solidifies, why not use the word congeal instead? Sensuous. Sensuous. Sensuous means pleasing to the senses, aesthetically pleasing, or seductive. For example, her sensuous lips was covered with a matte red lipstick. The sensuous qualities of the artwork drew the attention of many bidders. Professor Lockhart gave a sensuous smile and the audience giggled. So next time something is pleasing to the senses or seductive, 
why not use the word sensuous instead? Rancor. Rancor. Rancor means resentment, animosity, or bitterness. For example, the manager walked out frantically in a fit of rancor. His response was driven by rancor. I didn't approach her because her rancor for the matter would bias the discussion. So next time you refer to resentment, bitterness or animosity, why not use the word rancor instead? Hit the like. Oblique. Oblique. Oblique means indirect or not straightforward. For example, he always gave oblique answers to our questions, so we lost trust in him. My sister made an oblique reference to my pair of sneakers by purchasing a new one for me. My brother gave me an oblique look to signal it was time to leave. So next time something is done in an indirect manner, why not use the word oblique instead? Bolster. Bolster. Bolster means to support or strengthen. For example, I hoped to bolster my opinion with a recent research-based data. The workers bolstered the seats with a metal brace. The leader's presence bolstered the team's determination. So next time when something supports or strengthens something else, why not use the word bolster instead? Hit the like. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. Unprecedented means never done before. For example, when the COVID-19 pandemic began, there was an unprecedented demand for hand sanitizers. He took an unprecedented step in history when he ran 100 meters in so few seconds. The forest fires resulted in unprecedented damage to the town and surrounding wildlife. So next time something has never been done or has happened before, why not use the word unprecedented instead? Pristine. Pristine. Pristine means spotless, flawless, or perfect. For example, this banquet hall was pristine compared to the one we rented. She cares for her piano so well that it was in pristine condition. Littering caused the pristine coral reef to become a messy area with few animal life. So next time when something is spotless or flawless, why not use the word pristine instead? Hit the like. Inevitable. Inevitable. Inevitable means certain to happen or unavoidable. For example, it was inevitable that the pandemic would cause businesses to close. When it stops raining for months, it is inevitable that the land will become dry. The street was so dimly lit that it was inevitable I would bump into something. So next time something is unavoidable, why not use the word inevitable instead? Elaborate. Elaborate. Elaborate means detailed or involving many carefully arranged parts. For example, Jimmy wore an elaborate costume for the school's play. Grandma prepared an elaborate Thanksgiving dinner for the family. The city is connected through an elaborate system of train paths. So next time something is detailed, 
Why not use the word elaborate instead? Advocate. Advocate. Advocate means to publicly recommend or support. For example, Jason was the president of the club and advocated use of green energy. Emma Watson advocates fair trade. He advocated reduction of plastic usage. So next time you support or recommend something, why not use the word advocate instead? Hit the like. Anomaly. Anomaly. An anomaly is something that is unusual or an irregularity or an outlier. For example, Sarah's case is an anomaly in our health records. This anomaly is the result of the weather changes. My experience was an anomaly, but something to be noted. So next time there is something that's irregular, why not use the word anomaly instead? Robust. Robust. Robust means sturdy or strong. For example, James was chosen because he looked robust and healthy to take on the challenge. The team made a robust presence in the foreign country, which influenced the country to take on the project. The building's robust construction help it to remain standing after the storm. So next time something is sturdy or strong, why not use the word robust instead? Thwart. Thwart. Thwart means to block, to stop something from happening, or to prevent. For example, my doctor told me today that regular exercise and a healthy diet will help thwart future disease. The fence was high enough to thwart the dogs from entering the property. Even though the rainstorm was expected to last for hours, they were determined that it would not thwart their ability to arrive on time. So next time you want to use the word to block or to prevent, why not use the word thwart instead? Hit the like. Mundane. Mundane. Mundane means routine or unexciting. For example, the mundane aspects of daily life led her to explore the town. We decided not to settle for a mundane weekend, but instead go bungee jumping. The meteorologists expect to have mundane weather patterns this coming week. So next time when something is routine, why not use the word mundane instead? Amiable. Amiable. Amiable means friendly or pleasant. For example, his amiable personality led him to be much loved by the crowd. Her conduct at the public gathering did not present her in an amiable light. I loved going to the office because the staff was amiable and productive. So next time when someone is friendly, why not use the word amiable instead? Hit the Paragon. Paragon. Paragon means the best of its kind or a perfect example. For example, the firefighters saved the family from the horrific house fire and they were viewed as a paragon of courage. Since I regularly arrived late to meetings, I was not regarded as a paragon of punctuality. James, the character in the book, was a paragon of patience. So next time when something or someone is a perfect example, why not use the word paragon instead? Arbitrary. Arbitrary. 
Arbitrary means random or by chance. For example, we made an arbitrary decision to use the red boat for our trip. A good judge does not make arbitrary decisions. The rule of law and arrests made in the last century appeared arbitrary. So next time when something is random, why not use the word arbitrary instead? Deliberate. Deliberate. Deliberate means intentional or done with full consideration. For example, she made a deliberate choice to wear those shoes. The gymnast made deliberate movements across the floor. We wondered whether her actions were deliberate or accidental. So next time when something is done intentionally, why not use the word deliberate instead? Indifferent. Indifferent. Indifferent means unconcerned or apathetic about. For example, the teacher was indifferent to the children playing in the garden. Jason's indifferent expression made it difficult to understand his feelings. I am indifferent to the computers, so it's up to you to choose. So next time when you are unconcerned about something, why not use the word indifferent instead? Exemplar. Exemplar. An exemplar is a person or thing that serves as a typical example or excellent model. For example, she became the leading exemplar of mastery baking in the shop. The Prime Minister praised the soldier as an exemplar of courage. His essay was an exemplar of writing for the class. So next time something or someone is an excellent model, why not use the word exemplar instead? Detrimental. Detrimental. Detrimental means harmful or dangerous. For example, Pollution has a detrimental effect on the fishes and animal life in the ocean. Even though I love to eat sweets, my doctor said that eating sweets every day will be detrimental to my health. My laziness is detrimental to my success. So next time something is harmful, why not use the word detrimental instead? Laborious Laborious. Laborious means requiring considerable effort and time, or demanding. For example, she knew that to pass her exams, she needed many hours of laborious study. Sarah said that babysitting her toddler required laborious work. They decided to hire a carpenter because repairing the bathroom by themselves was too laborious. So next time something is demanding or requires considerable effort and time, why not use the word laborious instead? Catalyst Catalyst A catalyst is a person or thing that causes an event or process. For example, mom's speech was a catalyst for my change in behavior. Her education was a catalyst for their income level increase. An expectation of the business's growth is a catalyst to stock price changes. So next time there is something that causes an event or process, why not use the word catalyst instead? Lucid, lucid, lucid means easy to understand or clear. For example, even though he was under pressure, his language was lucid and argument logical. 
everyone had a crisp image of the event because of her lucid writing. After presenting to the executive team early in the morning, then running a marathon, I was not lucid. So next time when something is easy to understand and clear, try using the word lucid in a sentence. Hit the like. Malleable. Malleable. Malleable means easily pressed into shape without breaking, soft or easily influenced. For example, the kids yelled, I love playing with the clay. It is so malleable that I can shape it into any animal I want it to be. Special artists melt glass because they are malleable to shape into beautiful glass figurines. Their lack of knowledge made them malleable to the seller's proposal. So next time, when something is soft and can be easily shaped, why not try using the word malleable? Hit the like button. Cerebral or cerebral. Cerebral or cerebral. Cerebral means relating to the brain or intellect. For example, they've looked at the issue from an emotional perspective so far and now tried a cerebral approach. The doctor informed us that my uncle had a cerebral tumor. Exercising and increased physical activity is important for increased blood flow throughout the body, including increased cerebral blood flow. So next time, when you want to describe something relating to the brain or something intellectual, try using the word cerebral. Hit the like button. Debacle. Debacle. Debacle means a failure of an event mainly because of a lack of organization. For example, due to the healthcare debacle, immunization was made mandatory. Her addiction to gambling led to a financial debacle. The company took years to recover after the technology debacle. So next time an event failed, mainly because of a lack of organization, then why not use the word debacle instead? Tenacious Tenacious. Tenacious means not giving in easily or having a strong grip. For example, we knew that with her tenacious personality, she would achieve her goal of losing 80 pounds. His tenacious grip on the bat gave him a base for full control and he scored the highest in the game series. They tried multiple medicines and treatments but the disease seemed tenacious. So next time you want to describe something or someone holding on or clinging tightly, try using tenacious in a sentence. Corroborate. Corroborate. Corroborate means to give support to or to confirm. For example, I pressed on that I did not eat the cookies from the cookie jar, and my sister corroborated my claim. The evidence we gathered today was certainly able to corroborate the theory. Let's do some research and analysis to see if what we find will corroborate our predictions. So next time you support or confirm something, try use the word corroborate instead. Disheartened. Disheartened. Disheartened means losing confidence or dispirited. For example, the audience's silence led me to feel cold and disheartened. Even though I was disappointed, I was not disheartened 
so I learned the lessons and continued to work hard. James was disheartened and he gave up his role in the committee. So next time when you or someone is losing confidence or feeling dispirited, why not use the word disheartened? In Colossal. Colossal. Colossal means huge or gigantic. For example, we were able to see the colossal building from a distance away. The game took place in a colossal stadium which held over 50,000 people. We needed strong machinery to carry the colossal equipment from one area to the next. So next time something is huge, why not use the word colossal instead? Auspicious. Auspicious. Auspicious means favorable, promising, or opportune, propitious. For example, they chose an auspicious day for the event. There were many auspicious symbols in the novel. Some animals are considered auspicious in some cultures. So next time something is favorable, promising, or opportune, why not use the word auspicious instead? Hit the like and subscribe buttons for more videos like this.